Okay, good morning, good morning. So I have been sitting backstage trying to wait till some motion gets going. And it looks like um, Nature Boy just walked in. His attorney just walked in. So hopefully there is um, some action. All right, we need to put a few things on the record before we get started. I understand there was a plea offer that was presented by the state. Um, Mr. Coveney, will you put the details of that off on the record, please? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, count one rape would be reduced to the charge of aggravated assault, and count two false imprisonment would be offered for null cross. The defendant would plead guilty to counts three through five of the indictment to three counts of revenge form. Uh, the total sentence would be 30 years, so the 20 years on aggravated assault would run consecutive, or the, the revenge form charges would run consecutive to the 20 years on aggravated assault for a total of 30 years. There would be between 10 and 20 years to serve in confinement. That number would be left up to your honor after argument from the parties. Uh, there are several special conditions um, that are attached to the sentence. Those include no contact with the victim, as well as the defendant may not profit off of this case or the facts giving rise to the case, and the defendant would be banished from the state of Georgia except for Clayton County. He could only stay in Clayton County, is that what you said? Yes, but primarily he could utilize the airport without oh, being in violation of the gotcha. terms of the but for Clayton County, okay. All right. Mr. Booker. Yes, sir. Have you discussed the terms of this offer with your client? I think he has further questions, Judge. Okay. Uh, essentially, the, the terms of the state that I uh, talked about this morning, uh, my client was concerned about having to register as a sex offender. Uh, the way that the state has crafted the uh, plea, he would not be a part of the rest of the sex offender. Um, and so that was a large portion of what he was seeking. Um, again, there would be parole uh, offenses versus or restriction now, which would be a mandatory minimum life or split sentence uh, on rape. So uh, assuming that you're coming for um, Do you need further time to discuss what the state has proposed? Okay. okay. All right, I'll give you um, a few more minutes to talk, but then if we need to move forward if we're not going to do it, so. And if the state can uh, just for my client's education, if he can state on the record that he doesn't accept the plea uh, when it is deemed as withdrawn, so we can deal no. It would be deemed as withdrawn at the time that Ms. Newell, which is the first state's witness, takes the stand and is sworn. All right, so the next few minutes. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so basically what just happened was they offered him a plea deal. And I don't know what happened with my other uh, stream. I have to work out the details of this um, thing. So I have to switch over my stream. But anyways... So basically what they just did was offer him a plea deal and the plea deal terms are available only until the trial starts and um, the first witness, which is the woman making the complaints, is um, sworn in. So he only has a little bit of time to accept this deal or else they are going to go forward with trial. Now, I have another stream open, so... Let me let me fix this really quickly. So right now he's talking over with his client to basically figure out um to figure out what's going on. So that's what we're basically waiting on. Hold on one second.
All right, so they're not really saying anything right now. Um, they're trying to figure out if he wants to take that deal or not. It sounds like he would have to register as a SA offender. And I don't think that he wants to do that. Okay, so I just have to fix my stream. Hey, y'all. Hey, what's going on? What's up? What's up? What's up? They are talking with counsel right now to see if he wants to take the deal or not. And basically put that up on the table. So let me... I don't know what... So the main witness is ready to talk right now. Now, per the news um, and the court, we're not able to, like, say any of the victims' names based on um, the court orders. So even if I know the person's name... I'm not able to, like, disclose certain things per the court order unless they they disclose it here. But those of you who have been watching, you know who's who. Miss Newell, you know who's who. So let's uh, continue watching. I'm trying to share this stream with my community wall because somehow, some way, the wrong stream... The wrong stream started streaming, so that's irritating. But we're in basically a brief recess with the court to find out if he's going to take this deal or not. And if he takes the deal, then there will be no trial. If he does not take the deal, then we will have to sit through the trial and see what happens. But... They offered him 30 years with 10 to 20 years in jail. I think it was either 10 years in jail or 10 to 20 years in jail. So that's what he's looking at. And he's also looking to um, have to register as a SA offender. So that is what they are deliberating right now and talking about. And he would also not be able to profit off of the case in any way. So if he was to try to do like a documentary or if he was trying to like make money in any type of way, do a book, tell about his experience, he would not be able to make any type of money off of this case. So we're just waiting for them to bring back up the audio. We'll hear what is going on, and we're just going to go through the motions. I'm surprised that he is even considering a deal because we know how prideful he is. We know how he feels about the system and how very, very, very confident he is that he is right. So, And there's a lot of people who also feel like he's right as well. So I'm interested to know if he actually takes this deal that they have presented him and put forth on the table. He's already done two years. So if it was 10, I think it's, they said 10 to 12 or 10 to 20. I I have to look. We'll hear, we're here back in a second. Let me go back in my stream to to hear what the exact deal was for those of you guys who didn't get it. So, um, is they, they offered 30 years, but I think it was like 10 to 20 that 
he would have to serve in jail. But let me let me go back on my stream to hear let's let's hear the deal again. So let me let me go back on my stream so that we can hear what the uh terms were cuz I was just clicking in at the same time. So, or cuz let me find it. Primarily being to utilize the airport without uh, being in violation of gotcha. the special conditions. The, the revenge imprisonment would be offered for no cross. The defendant would plead guilty to counts three through five. The amendments of three counts of revenge form. Uh, the total sentence would be 30 years. So 20 years on aggravated assault would run consecutive. With the, the revenge porn charges would run consecutive to the 20 years on aggravated assault for a total of 30 years. There would be between 10 and 20 years to serve in confinement. That number would be left up to your honor after argument from the parties. Um, there are several special conditions um, that are attached to the sentence. Those include no contact with the victim. as well as the defendant may not profit off of this case or the facts giving rise to the case, and the defendant would be banished from the state of Georgia except for Clayton County. Okay, so they offer, like I said, 30 years, 10 to 20, based on what the judge recommends for him to serve in confinement. That's totally up to the judge. And then on top of that, he has to be banned from only area that he's able to like go to is Clayton, but every other area he's banned from in the state. And I'm just trying to figure out like if he really gonna take this deal. Like I am so shocked that he is even potentially considering a deal at all. So hey y'all, hey y'all. Beautiful reflection said and his women will still hold him down. Yeah. I mean, if he looking at 30 years and what's the maximum amount that he's looking at if he don't go to trial? I didn't, I didn't hear that. I mean, if he does take it to trial, like if he does take it to trial, <laughs> you know, he gonna milk it if he can, if he could get any dollar, anything, he gonna milk it for show. But we just got to see what he decides. Live streaming, it is a little bit like, uh, you have to wait, you have to wait, wait, wait. And then I got to talk to y'all <laughs> while I wait and figure out what's going on. I believe his ego is going to make him go to trial too. I honestly do. I think that his ego is definitely, definitely going to make him go to trial. But the fact that they're even considering this or talking over it is interesting to me. But hold on one second, one second. They have, they have the screen like off right now. I'll be right back. But this is what it's showing so far. No movement yet. No move me yet. I'll be right back. All right, so I am back. So, yeah, so we just waiting right now to basically find out if he's going to take this deal or not, okay? I'm using a different computer right now, and so it doesn't show me the chat. So I have to, like, go to, like, a whole new different window to see the chat, which is weird. 
<laughs> you said I want him to go to ch to try with my nosy behind. Okay. He know damn well they have mountains of evidence, but his ego going to send him under. Yeah, what the wife's going to do if he take this deal where the judge gets to use her discretion on whether or not he's going to get 10 years, 10, 15, 20 years in confinement. What them women's going to do without him? I don't know. Y'all don't think he don't feel confident that he could beat this? I don't know. Lifetime documentary. Man. So. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. And it's like they went through jury selection and all of that yesterday. And a lot of the um, questions that he was basic or they were basically probing to ask was. Was the person who was a juror like, have you ever been a victim of S.A.? Have you ever been um, like a, a friend or a family member to somebody who joined a group that was like a extremely a re a religious group? Have you or someone, you know, dated somebody who was very controlling? And have you or anybody, you know... Um, Worked in, I think, um, like, have knowledge of, like, the law. I think that was one of the things. It was several questions, but we got the comms back up. So let's see what is going on. Let me put my headphones on because their audio is kind of low. So I can't all the way hear like I normally If we see anybody with a cell phone, it will be immediately taken by the sheriff's deputy. Period. Pyramid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not messing around with this. So deputies, please keep your eyes open. If folks are on their phones, you have my permission and my instruction to simply take the phone from them. You know, not Mr. Griggs, because he's a member of the bar, and I know he's going to follow my rules. But for the other folks that are not members of the bar, just observing court, cell phone comes out, it's going to be confiscated. All right. We ready to proceed? Judge, I just need, I, I popped out to say something. If I can have one minute. You got one minute. We're starting at 10 15. Perfect. Okay. okay. She said they starting at 7 15. That's my time. Y'all at y'all should be at 10 right now. But it's, you know. Let's get this party started. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I mean, what's y'all prediction in the chat? Take the deal or not take the deal? I, 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 I'm going to say he's not going to take it. I'm going to be utterly shocked if he takes that deal. Like, I'm going to be completely shocked if he takes that deal. But I don't know what he's up against if he don't take it. Like, is he up against life if he don't take it? Because it seemed like 30 years would be the sentence anyways. So what is what is he um what is he up against? I I I I didn't see that part. Yes, we live, baby. Somebody said Nature Boy deserves to be under the prison. Their audio is given Charlie Brown teacher, so thank you for recapping. Yeah, it's very low. Normally, like, I could sit my headphones next to me and I'm able to, like, hear the audio just fine. But you said you think he going to take it? He going to take it and I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> right. The deal isn't that great anyways. Either way, he's going away. How many people think he going to take it? Press one. If you think he going to take it, press one. If you think that he's not going to take it, press two. <laughs> you said I'm shocked. Yes, I'm shook. I'm shook also that we are we are here and we get to this moment and now they like talking about a deal. 
Like, why why are we talking about that now? Why are we talk about that now? Hey, Jen. So the plea is that he gets a 30-year sentence and 10 to 20 years served in jail. So it's up to the judge whether he gets 10 years or 20 years behind bars based on the evidence that the they present or the arguments that they present. Let's go. And let's just make sure one more time that he is declining the offer yes. on the record. I knew it. 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 He is not going to take that deal. Come on, bro. If you know Nature Boy, you know he was going to take that deal. But the fact that they was even acting like they was considering it, it was throwing me. But I knew in my gut he was going to take that deal. <laughs> I knew in my gut he wasn't going to take that deal, boy. Come on now. We get to proceed, y'all. All this anticipation, if he would have not, look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right, Mr. Bishop, I understand you've now been given some more time to consider the state's offer from this morning. Uh, is it my understanding that you want to decline the offer and proceed with trial? Okay. And you had enough time to talk about it with your attorney before yes. making this decision? Yes. Is that a yes? Okay. And you understand that if convicted, what the maximum penalties are for each of the offenses? Yeah, life. Well, Mr. Kennedy, can you put them on the record again? Yeah. It's life for the rape charge, and okay. then the other charges have... 10 years for the false imprisonment, five years for two of the revenge porn okay. counts, and 12 months for the other. And is it life with possibility of parole, without possibility of parole, or is that not part That's of That's a discretionary thing for the court. Exactly. Right. Yes. Okay, so there is a um, possibility of life without possibility of parole. There is a chance that that could be. That is within the range within the of sentencing within the range. options for the court. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. So I just want to make sure, Mr. Bishop, you understand the maximum is actually life without the possibility of parole. Do you understand that? It's not just life. That's why I want to make sure you understand it. I'm ready to go forward, happy to have this trial. I just want to make sure you are clear on what the maximum is. It is clear on the maximum, Judge. He had not considered the life without the possibility of parole. Mr. Bishop uh, has had some time to talk to me about this this morning. Uh, the plea negotiations have been what I would call fluid. We've been working through some things. Uh, there were a couple pieces that were hang-ups regarding whether it would be an Albert plea, first offender, those kind of things. Um, that's the hang-up for purposes of right now, Judge. Okay. Uh, but we're ready to go forward. All right. Well, we're going to go forward with the trial. I just want to make sure he understands that the maximum is not just life. But it's life without the possibility of parole. Mr. Coveney? Uh, well, I, there were just two other brief matters that will take all of two minutes to go over. One, the state's prepared to demonstrate debate. It's in the courtroom behind the witness stand. I showed it to counsel this morning. It's my understanding there's no objection. I just wanted that. To... Will you take it down for now? Because I have to get swear them in and give them the preliminary instruction, and then you can put it up before the openings, please. I don't want them looking at that when I'm talking to them. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. We're doing that now. Secondly, I believe the court invoked the rule of sequestration yesterday. Correct. There are several individuals that, from my understanding, are on the defendant's witness list. I do not know whether or not they will actually be called as witnesses, but I believe they are in the present presence in the courtroom. Read off your names, please. And folks, if you hear your name being called, you need to step outside the courtroom and wait until um, you testify. You're also not to watch any of the testimony from any source of media, streaming, or anything like that. Um, if I find out you violated that rule, you'll be subject to penalties of contempt of court. Uh, I am not sure if these people are all in the courtroom. I believe some of them are. Porsche Wade, Tanisha Dulay, Kayla Buckner, Edgar Bright, 
and Juliana Diaz. Are any of those folks in the courtroom? Yes? All right, then step outside. And remember that you are not, you are prohibited from watching any testimony or any stream of the trial of this case. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's Malia. Just step outside, please. Malia, don't get contempt, girl. There's also an individual by the name of Eva Wilson on the defense witness list. I'm not familiar with who that person is. But Eva Wilson in the courtroom? She's not here. She's not even in the state. Okay. All right. And also, deputies, is, are we still doing, are we still doing the stream next door? Is that over? Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, if you notice any folks watching anything, any of the witnesses watching anything on their phones, let me know. Okay, thank you. All right. They about Can to cook Mr. Bishop, child. Not from the state, right? Okay. Mr. Bishop is asking for additional time to consider the same offer. I, I understand we've been here since just past 9 o'clock. It's now 10.20. It's um, now 10.20. I've, I've had some opportunities to speak to the back. I think the court's statement regarding life without foster parole has triggered some things in him, and he's asking for additional time. I know we have a jury waiting, uh, but it is, as he's over here, getting his life. Uh, and certainly, uh, he's a young man. He wants to have some additional time. I'm not sure what the court pleasure would have. Well, all right, Eve, I'll give you until 10.30, but we let me just put on the record. The case has been delayed initially because my understanding, Mr. Bishop refused to come out with shackles. Um, he has since fortunately changed his mind, as I have instructed his counsel that we would proceed in his absence if he refused uh, to come out with the shackles. It is a safety issue. Um, then we had we started discussing the plea issue. So it's been a little over an hour um, that we have been dealing with these matters and that has delayed the start of the trial. I understand it is your life. I will give you 10 more minutes uh, to talk about this. But at 10.30, the jury is the jur you, you know, you, you should talk to your attorney, I promise. Don't ju just talk to your attorney. Uh, at 10.30, the jurors are coming out, they're going to be sworn, and we're going to begin the trial of this case. And that's, you know, that's it. Once the witness testifies, as the state said, the deal's off the table. So we got to get moving. And you, this case has been pending for two years, so we've had lots of time. Okay, well, go ahead, go back there and talk. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Ten minutes. All right, so um, what do we think? I'm going to just be honest. I'm going to just be honest. Y'all y'all be mad when I be honest. Y'all feel like I understand why they put life on the table with the possibility of parole. Um, I don't agree that it should be without the possibility of parole. I think that he should be given a caveat of the possibility of parole. Once he does uh, 10, 20, or whatever, how many years, I feel like at that point, he should have definitely some type of change in his behavior. And if he has not had change in his behavior, then the parole board, they will have the discretion to deny his parole or not. But I don't think that he's, like, murdered anybody or did anything. Like, I mean, I know Zoka's baby is in question. um, But just my opinion, I don't think that the possibility of parole should be off the table. I don't think that that's really kind of, like, fair. Um, But, I mean, how he treated them wasn't really fair either. But they were grown adults that was willing participants now whether he basically overstepped his boundaries and 
abuse them and brainwash them and all of those things. I guess that's up to the court to decide. But and just in my opinion, I feel like life maybe should be on the table with the possibility of parole. I don't think that it should be on the table without my opinion. But um, somebody said he's not changing. I mean, another person said the elderly lady died because she believed in him. I feel like that was a very unfortunate situation that she believed she lived her life to be the um, age that she was and she believed him. You know, I feel like that's very unfortunate, but my opinion still is the same. Now, again, everybody's not going to agree, but that's just my opinion. People like that don't change. And then uh, somebody said, our people who are word should never be on the streets. They never uh, stop these P words. Um, another person says, and if he was holding people against their will by keeping their passports and IDs, um, I don't think that we can say that following willingly. Um... Uh, da, 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 da. She said 10.30. Yeah, he got four minutes. Uh, 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 uh. So he prayed on the vulnerable, and we should give him a pass because they were vulnerable. Um, I never said that he should get a pass. Where did I say that he should get a pass? If he do time, if he do life with the possibility of parole, that's not giving him a pass. He's doing... He's doing a a larger sentence than people who harm children and put their wankies in children. Like, he's being held accountable. Nobody said to give him a pass to get him off c completely. I just said the possibility of parole should not um, be off the table, in my opinion. Like, you literally have people who stick their Peters in children, and they get five years. So I think that in this situation... Life should be on the table with the possibility of parole. Without, I don't think that's fair. That's just my opinion. That's not him getting a pass. He's still being held highly accountable. Tanya Langston said he's a P-word. Um, you said, I respect your opinion, but you started talking about that old lady. I didn't start talking about the old lady. Y'all did. And I uh, gave my opinion okay. based on. Anything else you have to put on the record before we bring the jurors in? You know, I believe Mr. Thomas will be back on the All right. We can go ahead and bring the jurors in. Yeah, because the reading does reflect that. I think the defendant had an additional eight minutes or so to consult with Captain. I gave him 10. He took eight. Why couldn't the judge in the YSL case be no nonsense like this? Oh, let me make this a little bit bigger. All right, Miss Noel is the first witness. Who that is over there? He will be in jail with people who lost hope. He will try to control them and be sleeping with them, used men, and he not changing. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Now somebody said he looked fine. Girl, well. 
What you looking at? It's empty up in there. Let's see who this is. I don't know who that is either. Um. Oh, so they bringing people in. Let's see. Who are these people? I don't know any of those people. But yeah, so yeah, so that's my opinion. Everybody not gonna agree with it, but that's my opinion. Period. That's why we have them because we get to think what we want to think about what we think about. Okay, period. Um, and that's that on that. And here we are again. Now, if they just gave the offer today, I feel like he should at least have a day to think about it. Like, I don't know how it sounds like they just barely gave him the offer because they said that. The offer was put in today. So I just feel like you should have a little bit more time than that to decide life or not. Like, that's like a big decision to make and be like, make it right now, you know, under pressure. But I mean, everything ain't fair. How he treated people wasn't fair. So it is what it is. I just wish that the judge in the YSL case was like prompt, no nonsense like this. Like I be trying to like really get into the groove of the YSL case with Young Thug and I watch quite a bit of it still, even though I don't report on it, I watch a lot of it and I just be so irritated with all the comfort breaks, all of the, the BS that the judge be doing. Like this lady seemed like she prompt, she on time. And she's no nonsense. She's ready to get the ball rolling. So I'm interested to see how this uh, goes. Goddess says we don't uh, care about his feelings or to give him options. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're entitled to feel like that. <laughs> You said he said he's God, so let him play his role. I mean, shoot, maybe he knows something. The first witness is the reason why we are here, Miss Noel. Okay? The person who made the claim against him is the first witness. And once she's sworn in, once she gives her testimony, then that is the end of the plea. Um, let me read my email from the court because we got to stay in the the uh you know because i filed a request to have access to the stream and everything like that so this is what they wrote me you should be aware that per the judge's instruction no names of suspected sa victims should be used and we will not be showing them so i'm only using what they have used so far as they use the terminology in court i'll use it so far, they only said Miss Newell is getting sworn in. I know who Miss Newell is. That is the person who brought on this case. But um, per the judge's instructions, and I don't, I don't file paperwork with the code now. Um, I'm gonna follow the rules. Came up that we need to secure outside of your presence, and there will be sometimes periodically where that may happen during the trial. So I just ask that you be patient with us uh, during that time. All right. We are now um, ready to begin the trial of this case. A couple preliminary matters. If you've been given those purple tags, you're to wear those uh, throughout the duration of the trial so that they will like, identify you as jurors in this case and hopefully lessen the possibility of anybody talking about the case um, in your presence or uh, attempting to talk to you about the case. So that's why we have those for you. It's especially important when you're outside during the lunch break. Um, also, the lawyers and parties aren't going to talk to you. They're not being rude. They just know we always have to avoid any appearance of impropriety. So please know that that's the reason. If they see you out there and they look away or do not acknowledge you, um, they're not they're not being rude. It's just my instruction. All right. Um, prior to 
me giving you the preliminary information, I need to give you your final juror oath. So if you would please stand one last time and raise your right hands, and I will swear you in as the official trial jurors in this case. Somebody we said, where are you watching this? I'm watching this on Nick at night. issue formed upon this bill of indictment between the state of Georgia and Eligio Bishop, who is charged with the offenses of rape, false imprisonment, prohibition on nude or sexually explicit electronic transmissions, three counts of that, one count of rape, one count of false imprisonment, uh, and a true verdict gave according to the evidence, so help you God. Okay, thank you, you all can be seated. Now before we start the trial, I'm going to go over some basic principles of criminal law with you. I will explain my role, your role, and the lawyer's role. And finally, I'll tell you how the trial will proceed. Many of you have not served on a jury before, so this should help you understand how a trial works and what is expected of you throughout the trial. You have been selected and now sworn to try the criminal case of the state of Georgia versus Eligio Bishop. The DeKalb County Grand Jury has indicted the defendant for the following crimes, which I will read to you now. Um, count one. Grand jurors, of course, said in the name of and on behalf of the citizens of the state of Georgia, charge and accuse Alicia Bishop with the offense of rape in violation of OCGA 16-6-1A for the said accused person in the county of DeKalb and state of Georgia on or about the 24th day of March 2022, did unlawfully have carnal knowledge of Janae Newell, a female, forcibly and against her will, contrary to the laws of said state, good order, peace, and dignity. There. All right. So now that they said now Janae's the name, I could say it. The grand jurors of four said in the name of and on behalf of the citizens of the state of Georgia, charge and accuse Felicia Bishop with the offense of false imprisonment in violation of OCGA 16-5-41. For the said accused person in the county of DeKalb and state of Georgia, on or about the 24th day of March 2022, in violation of the personal liberty of Janae Newell, did unlawfully confine said person without legal authority. Count three, prohibition on nude or sexually explicit electronic transmissions. Grand jurors of course set further charge and accuse Alicia Bishop with the offense of prohibition on nude or sexually explicit electronic transmissions in violation of OCGA 16-11-90B for the said accused person in the county of DeKalb and state of Georgia on or about the 27th day of March, 2022, without the consent of Janae Newell, the depicted person did unlawfully cause the electronic posting of a certain video with a length of 56 seconds with the knowledge that it depicted sexually explicit conduct of Janae Newell, an adult, for the purpose of harassment, and such videos serve no legitimate person purpose to the person depicted. Count four, prohibition on nude or sexually explicit electronic transmissions. The grand jurors four said further charge and accuse Alicia Bishop with the offense of prohibition on nude or sexually explicit electronic transmissions in violation of OCGA 16-11-90B. For the said accused person in the county to cabin in the state of Georgia on or about the 27th day of March, 2022, without the consent of Jane Newell, the depicted person, did unlawfully cause the electronic posting of a certain video with a length of 28 seconds, with the knowledge that it depicted sexually explicit conduct of Janae Newell, an adult, for the purpose of harassment. And such videos serve no legitimate purpose to the person depicted uh, this offense constituting a second or subsequent violation of this law. And count five, grand jurors further uh, charge and accuse Eligio Bishop with the offense of prohibition on mute or sexually explicit electronic transmissions in violation of OCGA 16-9, excuse me, 16-11-90B, for the said accused person in the county of DeKalb and state of Georgia, on or about the 27th day of March 2022, without the consent of Janae Newell, the depicted person, did unlawfully cause the electronic posting of a certain video with a length of one minute and eight seconds, with the knowledge that it depicted sexually explicit conduct of Janae Newell, an adult, and for the purpose of harassment, and such videos serve no legitimate purpose to the person depicted. This offense constituting a second or subsequent violation of this law. Contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof, signed District Attorney Sherry Boston. The defendant has pled not guilty to this indictment and he denies every charge in it. The indictment and the defendant's plea of not guilty present the issue that you have been sworn to decide. 
The indictment is the way the defendant is charged with committing crimes that violate the laws of Georgia. The charges in the indictment and the plea of not guilty are not evidence of guilt, and you may not consider, or excuse me, you may not conclude that the defendant is guilty based upon the charges or the not guilty plea. The defendant is presumed to be innocent until he's proven guilty. The defendant begins the trial with a presumption of innocence in his favor, and this presumption stays with him until it is overcome by the state with evidence that convinces they are definitely going to use um, all of the videos. They already showed, like, in the evidentiary hearing and some of the other proceedings, they showed videos of when he had them smacking each other and stuff like that. So those things will be used to show his character and to describe him. No burden of proof at all, and the burden never shifts to the defendant to prove his innocence. However, the state is not required to prove the guilt of the defendant beyond all doubt or to a mathematical certainty. A reasonable doubt means just what it says. It is a doubt of a fair-minded, impartial juror who is honestly speaking the truth. It is a doubt based upon common sense and reason. It does not mean a vague or arbitrary doubt, but it is a doubt for which you can give a reason based on consideration of the evidence or lack of evidence, a conflict in the evidence, or any combination of these. After considering all the facts and circumstances of this case, if your minds are wavering, unsettled, or unsatisfied, then that is a doubt of the law, and you must find the defendant not guilty. But if no reasonable doubt exists in your minds about the defendant's guilt, then you may convict the defendant. If the state does not prove the defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, your duty would be to find the defendant not guilty. My role is to determine the law that applies to this case, and I will instruct you on the law that you must apply to the facts in reaching a verdict. I'm giving you some of these instructions now, and I will give you more detailed instructions at the conclusion of the trial. You, the jury, have a very important role. You must decide the facts of the case from the evidence presented and then apply the law that I give you to those facts. Evidence is how a fact is proved or disproved. Evidence can be either testimony or exhibits. Testimony is what you hear from people who take the witness stand and swear to tell the truth. However, the questions the lawyers ask the witnesses are not evidence. Exhibits are documents, photographs, and other physical items that may be admitted during the trial. Now, the object of the trial is to discover the truth. During the trial, I will either admit or exclude evidence according to the rules of evidence. These rules are designed to aid in discovering the truth by making sure you consider only the best and highest evidence. The lawyers are advocates for their clients, and they have a duty to represent moderators if you in the chat block people who asking who's streaming it because if you see in here why are you worried about where else it's being streamed if you want to know where it's being streamed elsewhere look it up yourself but further um is there is there any stevie we're gonna give her a pass this time but anybody else um they could find it themselves if you want to find it find it the hell you need to keep asking in the chat for it's a simple google search i have the direct stream from the actual court present their clients to the best of their exhibits that are admitted you should not assume or infer anything about evidence which i may have excluded if you happen to hear or see evidence that i end up excluding from the trial you must disregard it entirely in your deliberations and in arriving at your verdict None of my decisions and nothing that I say or do during this trial is evidence. My decisions and remarks do not mean that I favor or lean to one side or another in this case. I'm only interested in seeing that this case is tried fairly based on the laws and the Constitution of the state of Georgia and the Constitution of the United States. Sometimes I may need to deal with the lawyer's motions or objections without you being here in the courtroom, and if so, I will excuse you to the jury room. We will try to limit such interruptions and we ask you to please be patient when they do happen. So the trial will proceed as follows. First, the attorneys can give what is called an opening statement. No attorney is required to make an opening statement and the opening statements are not evidence. They are simply an introduction to the evidence, a preview or outline of the expected evidence. The state goes first because they have the burden of proof. The second uh, phase is the presentation of the evidence. And the third phase is the closing argument or summation. The attorneys may give closing arguments or summations where they discuss the law that applies to the case and how they believe you should consider the law in light of the evidence. They may also point out evidence that they believe supports their position. Remember, what the lawyers say in closing arguments is not evidence. The goal of a closing argument is to persuade you to decide the case in their favor. And the fourth phase is 
the jury charge, and that is me explaining to you the specific law that applies to this case. We will then send you to the jury room to begin your deliberations and to reach a verdict. It is important that you pay close attention during this trial. If at any time you cannot hear or see any evidence, or if you are suffering from any discomfort that may distract you, please raise your hand to get my attention and let me know. And we will do everything we can um, to make sure you can hear and see the evidence and give it your undivided attention. If you need a break at any time, also raise your hand and let me know. Also, one of the jurors, I recall, has an eye issue. Um, difficult. Is she? Okay. If, you, if, if it would help you to sit in the front row near the TV displays, because the evidence will be projected on the screen, then um, I would just ask that one of the jurors switch seats with you so you could be able to see as, as best as possible. Okay? All right. Um, now, if you can see it okay from where you are, then we're fine. But if it helps you to be closer, you can see that. Okay, very good. All right, jurors are not allowed to question witnesses. If you have a question that comes up in your mind while the evidence is being presented, please keep in mind that you have not heard all the evidence, and your question may very well be answered by the time the rest of the evidence is presented. You should consider the evidence with an open mind, and you should not reach any final conclusions until the trial is over. Do not jump to any conclusions before all the evidence is presented. Now, to maintain the integrity of the jury system, I remind you that you must decide this case based only on the evidence submitted during the trial and the law I will explain to you. You may not conduct any research on your own about this case or about any people or places mentioned during the trial. You may not visit any places mentioned in the evidence. You may not refer to any books or documents that were not admitted during the trial. You may not use dictionaries or other reference materials to look anything up. You may not use Google, YouTube, um, or any other internet, I don't even know what the word would be, um, internet access, websites, blogs, or anything else, or any electronic devices, or any electronic media to get any information about this case. Nor should you use any of these sources to get information about legal terms or about the law. And finally, you may not read or listen to any accounts of this trial that may appear in the news, on TV, on the radio, online, in print, or in any other fashion. Um, and again, you'll be subject to penalties for contempt of court if you violate these instructions. Remember, you are the ones who have been qualified as fair and impartial jurors to decide this case. No other influence should affect your decision. For that reason, you may not discuss this case with anyone, including family and friends, or let anyone discuss this case with you or around you. This includes discussing or sharing information by email, texting, blogging, or any form of social media. Until actual deliberations begin, that is, and after you've heard all the evidence, the lawyers, closing arguments, and the law that applies to this case, you may not discuss this case even among yourselves. Um, in the jury room during any breaks, recesses, or anywhere else. Now, we've given you notepads and pens, so you can take notes if you would like. You're not required to, but you are certainly welcome to. Um, if you do take notes, please remember to not let your note-taking distract you from paying full attention to the evidence and to the witnesses. And also, you may not share or discuss your notes with anyone until you start deliberating at the conclusion of the trial. Notes are evidence. Oh, excuse me, notes are not evidence. They are simply memory aids. They are not more important than your own impression or memory of what the evidence may have been. While you may consider, during deliberations, another juror's notes to refresh your memory, you should rely on your own memory of the proceedings. Do not be influenced by the notes of other jurors unless their notes help you in determining your own independent memory. You must leave your notes in the jury room except when you're in the courtroom and they will be secured in chambers overnight um, and so nobody will have access to them. And they will be shredded at the end of the deliberations. Um, oh, this is really important. You will not get a transcript of witnesses' testimony. So you're gonna have to remember in whatever way works best for you what the witnesses said on the stand. So, during deliberations, if you have a question comes up, well, what did the witness say about such and such? And you ask, I'm gonna tell you, you have to remember the testimony based on your collective recollection. There is no transcript available to you. 
All right. Um, I think those are all the preliminary instructions I have. So we are ready now to proceed with the opening statements, and the state gets to go first. Thank you. Let's hear these opening statements, y'all. Y'all think y'all think he gonna hit a home run? Good morning. The thread that runs through this entire story, really from the very beginning, is a desire, a thirst for knowledge. Something on the spiritual level. Something that transcends eras, cultures distance. Young people experiencing and coming out into the world on their own for the first time, longing for a kind of knowledge, spirituality, of belonging. The Legio Bishop promised that. He promised that he had all of the answers to all of their questions, the answers to their prayers, and that he could fill their spiritual voice. He alone could speak the truth. He alone showed them what they could be, in tune with nature, living off the land, a communal sort of paradise. Janine Newell first saw Alivio Bishop and his group in a restaurant where she worked. She was 22. It was about 2018. She was intrigued the way they dressed, the way they talk, they seem so genuine. She kept in touch with the defendant online, and she was planning a trip overseas to Bali. Instead, she left home and joined the defendant's group. At first, it was everything Janae had hoped. The sense of community and the idyllic tropical locations masked the trouble brewing. His word was law. Some of the rules didn't make sense. They couldn't use the bathroom inside. They only ate when he was hungry. He chose who they could date or with whom they could sleep. When somebody disobeyed a rule or was having a bad day or did anything to upset the defendant, they became the enemy, the scapegoat, the focus of his ire. They were the problem. And the group followed the defendant. As they traveled around from Decatur to Mexico, Hawaii, California, Belize, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, and finally back to Decatur, things only got worse. It became power for power's sake. And he held all of the power. Janae left. She flew back to Georgia, but she was still longing for something, for belonging, and things at home really weren't going all that great. And her, for a time, she resorted to selling her body. And after a while, after watching the group from afar online, Janae went back. This time, they were in Puerto Rico. Janae noticed that things were more volatile, more violent. She stayed for a while and then she left again for a second time. Janae went back for the last time in 2021. The group was in Decatur at a home on Arbor Chase. There were about 20 members staying there at the time. Now one thing about the group, when a person joined this group, they were given a new name. And so during trial, you will hear folks referred to by their legal name, and you will also hear them referred to by the name they were given in the group. And this is confusing, I know. Um, we have created a demonstrative aid, basically just a, a big whiteboard, um, that lists several of the people you will probably hear about this week. Um, and you may want to take notes as well, if that's easier for you, so you're not glancing over there. But Janae Newell, um, she was known by Natiri. So you may hear Janae referred to as Janae. You may hear her referred to as Natiri. Kendra Carter, 
whom you will hear from this week, Hagar went by Sheba. Brianna was Syrian. Velvet was Nana. Aaron Dixon, he went by True or Ace. And you will hear from all of them this week. Courtney Townsend went by Solar. You may also hear about some other members. Corshe Wade goes by Aya. Tanisha DeLay is Malia. Kayla Buckner is Ephraim. And so on. Another thread that runs <laughs> that runs through this case is power. This defendant's desire to maintain power over the people in his group. How he accomplished that? And what he did with that power and control. By 2021, when Janae was back in the group, she will tell you the defendant would get angry over the smallest thing. He would order one member to hit another member. He lashed out at Miss Dule, Malia, one time when she tried to leave. What you will hear from all of the former members who testified this week, from Aaron, from Kendra, from Janae, Brianna, and Velvet, from all of them, you will hear that there was this atmosphere of fear and violence within the group, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Who was going to be next? Power, accomplished through the ever-looming threat of physical violence. The second part of that preface, though, what the defendant did with that power. The answer to that, the evidence will show, is sex. You will hear, again from the former members, that this defendant had his choice of the women in the group. It was understood. Nobody said no to the king. To God. To him. You will hear from Janae, from Kendra, from Brianna, what he did, and how he did it. And all this time, from 2018 to 2021, as it turns to 2022, all of this time he is fostering an us-against-them attitude. The outside is hell, he said. They don't understand. They are out to get us. So separate from all loved ones, family and friends, Reliant on him for every meal, shelter, affection, community, not surprisingly at work. When the defendant's anger was focused on one, the others piled on. When he ordered one to hit another member, they complied. When he demanded sex from Janae, or demanded that she allow him to film it, she went along. Now I want to be clear. Janae went back to the group multiple times. There were times that there was consensual sex between Janae and this defendant. And obviously, it will be obvious to you, obviously she cared very deeply about him for a period of time. His name was tattooed on her body. And she did allow him to film her. That all happened. But it happened in this broader context. That matters. And I think it will matter to you in this case. In late March of 2022, Janae had become a little disillusioned, a little unsure about the group. It was nighttime, March 24th, 2022, and it was another of his long, long talks. They were sitting downstairs, and Janae just wasn't feeling it. And her face showed it. He told Zoka, Jayon, that she should keep Janae in line. It was understood what that meant. And a little while later, something happened. Janae made another face or something. And Jayon smacked Janae. He didn't stop it. It was Janae's fault. Her turn to be the scapegoat. The them in this ever-present <laughs> us against them. At his urging, implicit or explicit, Jayon smacked Janae again and again. He ordered Janae on, his, on her knees, and Jayon smacked her again. Janae had enough. She was leaving again, 
And she said as much. And nobody stopped her, at least at first. She got her bag, started to pack a few things, retrieved some of her art that was stored in a shed outside, and she said some goodbyes. The Uber was waiting outside. There was some dispute about a phone charger as she's walking out the door. Then someone said, the king is calling. Will you answer the king's call? And Janae did. She asked the Uber to wait. This would only take a second. She walked upstairs to say her final goodbye. When Janae reached his room, he grabbed her in his arms and literally would not let her go. She was crying, and she told him she had to leave, that he would not let her go. He asked for sex one last time. She told him no. She had to leave but he would not let her go. He asked again and again. She said no, again and again. He put her on the bed. She told him no. She had to leave, but he would not let her leave. He asked again, one last time. And finally, after countless times of saying no, realizing she wasn't leaving that room unless she gave in, she said, okay. They started having sex, and she pushed him off. But even then, he would not let her leave. He flipped her over and penetrated her from behind as she was crying. Janae escaped the next morning before anyone woke up. She went to her friend Kelly's art studio, then to a shelter, and on from there. She never went back. In the meantime, on March 28th, Janae received messages online asking if she was back in the group. She was confused. She realized they thought she was back in the group because four videos had been posted to the defendant's Twitter account showing him, having, showing him and Janae having sex. He posted these videos on March 27th, after Janae had escaped. The evidence will show he posted these videos without Janae's consent for the purpose of harassing her. Yes, the videos depict consensual sex well before Janae left. And yes, Janae probably knew that the defendant was reporting the sex. And they may have been online before. But they were posted on March 27th without Janae's consent for the purpose of harassing Janae. So go back to power, that thread that runs throughout this case. The evidence will show his attempt to maintain that power, to demonstrate that power, even after Janae escaped. The final overarching thread that runs through this case is the online presence and life that many of these young people live. Much of the day-to-day -day lives of this group were streamed online, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Bebo. And many of the former members that will testify this week still maintain large online presences today. I'm going to pause him real quick. Um, we'll, we'll catch back up in a second. So I just want to say this. Um, I, I see some of the, the chatter in the chat and people are saying like he wants to be a meme so bad and all this stuff. But honestly, um, right after this incident happened, Janae, she did an interview and she said the details of how everything went down. Now, it's been a while since I heard the interview that she did, but some of the details that he's saying to the jury sounds a little different than how um, she described them. Now, yes, she was, you know, calling an Uber, got smacked up, the Uber left. Those details are consistent, but as far as, like, when she walked in the room and how that started... Those details, from what I remember, do sound a little bit, like, enhanced, but maybe she withheld stuff in the interview, but it's been a while since I heard it. But So I can understand why he's kind of like, you know, because it just, uh, you know. But anyways, let's, let's continue. As the former members will tell you, what happened in the group actually happened. This wasn't acting for the cameras or the clips. The violence was real. The emotional manipulation was real and the tense threat of looming violence was real. In addition to Janae, you will hear the stories of Kendra Carter, who joined the group in late 2018, of Brianna Jacobs, Aaron Dixon, and you will hear from Velvet Marquette, 
For a while, Velvet was married to the defendant. They have a daughter together. She was in the group for a while, up until about 2020. And you'll get to hear her story. At the end of this case, after you've heard all of the evidence, the judge will tell, instruct you on the law that applies to this case, including the law that sexual intercourse obtained through fear or intimidation is not consensual. After you've heard all of the evidence, which includes the testimony of witnesses, we will once again address you and ask that you return a verdict which speaks the truth. The guilty verdict. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. In March of 2022, the, that is the date that this alleged incident happened. The state just spent a lot of time uh, talking to you about a lot of things, but they didn't talk to you about March 24, 2022. That's what you're decided on. Not what happened in 2021, 2020, or any time before that. They are, they're going to avoid March 24, 2022. March 24, 2022. I sped it up just to get caught up. Um, me talking kind of took us back 20 seconds. So I sped it up. Once we're caught up with the live, then it'll go back normal. 2022, Janae Newell, who is the alleged victim in this case, alleges that this young man here, Elijah Yo Bishop, raped her. The judge is going to tell you what rape means, but that he penetrated her against her will and with force. That's what she said happened on March 24, 2022. That she also was falsely imprisoned by Elijah Yo Bishop, meaning that she was not allowed to leave. Okay? That's what the state has proved. Not about anything that happened anywhere else, not about other people, but it's what happened between him and her on March 24, 2022. And I'm going to ask that you go through this trial, that you listen and focus on that day. Because right now, this is going to be a, a can't see forest for the trees type of case that the state is presenting to you. Additionally, there are charges for revenge porn, for posting something on the internet in order to essentially embarrass her or harass her. So let's go back and look at March 24, 2022. Um, this defendant, along with some other people, were living in a house. This essentially was a polygamous relationship. This defendant had a woman that was considered to be his queen, and then there were other women that were there as well. We're not here to hide that from you. That's not what he's charged with, okay? Now, on March 24, 2022, uh, Janae Newell indicated, based on what she told law enforcement, that she wanted to, to leave the house. And so she wrote uh, text messages on that day that will be evidence. But other things that are going to be extraordinarily relevant about March 24, 2022 is her interview with law enforcement and the different things that she did. So on March 24, 2022, she ended up leaving the house the next morning, which was the 25th, okay? But on that day, between the time she talks to law enforcement, which is not until April of the next month, essentially, two weeks later, she gives an interview to law enforcement. Uh, she never actually tells law enforcement that Mr. Bishop raped her. What she did was she came down to the DeKalb County Courthouse, and she attempted to get a misdemeanor warrant against Mr. Bishop. And in that misdemeanor warrant, she didn't say anything about being raped. She said that he had posted some videos online that she wanted him to take down. That was it. She never said anything about being false on prison. Because she had to make a sworn application in front of a judge in order to get a warrant taken out. So they scheduled a hearing. In that, there was never a single word about rape. She also gave an online interview with a YouTube um, interviewer, another, another person. In that interview, she described making love is what she described. She used the words making love. I can't turn up their audio any more than what it is. My audio levels are all the way up, and this is as loud as I, it goes. I know these are difficult terms to hear. We're adults, so we don't have to have adult conversations. Rape, obviously, is a act that there is no love in. There is two people, um, and an act happens, and one of them obviously doesn't want it. The other one forcibly does it. You cannot get further from that when you use the words making love. So in her interview that was recorded with YouTube, where she was interviewed by another person, she described going back into the house and that she and Mr. Bishop made love. Those were the words that she used. She additionally said that she believed Mr. Bishop was faking it, that he didn't really love her, but that he was faking being excited to have intercourse with her. Not a single word about rape. Not a single word about false imprisonment. After that, she gives another interview, this time to police. And when she, in the first five minutes of the interview to the police, she describes that they are making love. That's the words that she used. She does not use anything about rape. It's not until much further in the interview where the police ask her, well, was this consensual? And her words were, I don't know. She never says rape. She also speaks to Eva Wilson right after, uh, on the, the night of the 24th, by text message and phone call. That was her substitute mother. And Eva Wilson asked her, hey, you know, what's going on? She never says anything about being raped. She never describes being forced.
forced to do anything. Uh, simply put, she asked her if she can come and pick her up. This case is one where the, the, the goal of the state is to be able to show you a lot of other things, but you're to decide on March 24, 2022, whether a rape took place. Now, addressing false imprisonment. The state's gonna say, and they're gonna put in evidence, or try to, that Mr. Bishop falsely imprisoned her. And you just heard the state at, through his words, and his words and my words are not evidence, but you just heard the state say that she left the house, she had called an Uber. I can't imagine how you would be falsely imprisoned if you have the ability to call an Uber. But she alleged that she was being beaten by another person. And so because she was being beaten by this other person, she decided to leave. That's what he just said. She packed her bags. Nobody stopped her from packing her bags somehow. She was able to get her um, paintings out of the storage. Nobody stopped her from doing that. They don't even describe, according to what he just said, uh, Mr. Bishop stopping her from doing anything. She gets outside to an Uber that she's somehow able to call. And yet she's been beaten so bad, according to her. When she gets out to the Uber, she decides that she wants to go back in and say goodbye to a person who allegedly has treated her so bad for so long. That's not false imprisonment. You don't want to go back inside and say hello to a person that has been a person that has beaten you and mistreated you. So I ask that you pay attention to all those things. Additionally, the state just indicated in their opening statement that the videos that they are alleging that he posted subsequent to her leaving uh, to harass her is what they're alleging, that those videos were actually posted before she left. It wasn't the first time these same videos were posted. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a complicated case, but it becomes extraordinarily complicated when we tie in a bunch of other stuff that doesn't have to do with March 24, 2022. This case is about March 24, 2022. And as you hear the questions that are asked of Ms. Newell from myself, from the state, and anybody else that's involved in it, focus on March 24, 2022. And the statements that she gave to law enforcement, the statements that she made to her friends and family, the statements that she made by text message, the statements that she made to the magistrate court here in DeKalb County, Think about all those statements where she never says the word rape. She never says that she was forced to have sex. She never gives a description of what Mr. Coveney just described to you at any given time before that. And I would, I would venture to say that the state during this trial will never, before you put that in evidence, that at the end of the trial, all those things that I just told you, they won't put in evidence anything that controversies that because that evidence doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. She described making love. And we're all, 14 of you guys are adults. You know there's a wide discrepancy from someone making love versus someone being raped. Now, the state asked you during the for dire process, was it an issue with things being delayed? This is not about a delay. This is a totally different statement than rape. So please, as you listen to the evidence in this case, don't get lost on online persona. Don't get lost on multiple women being with Mr. Bishop. Don't get lost on what other people say. On this particular date, March 24th, 2022, at the end of this case, your minds will be unsettled and wavering, which the law requires those to be satisfied in order for Mr. Yip, Mr. Bishop to be found guilty. And we're going to ask that you return the verdict of not guilty on behalf of each count uh, for Mr. Mr. Bishop. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Call your all right, so they're going to call Janae first. Now, my honest opinion, I don't think that the prosecution had a very strong opening statement. I feel like um, like some of you guys have pointed out in the chat, he could have been a lot more confident, a lot more assertive, and a lot more captivating. Um, being that I know and I'm familiar with the details, it was kind of like, I was kind of like snoozing off. Now, whether the the attorney for Eligio Bishop, a.k.a. Nature Boy, was making great points or not, his 
his opening statement was a lot more captivating to me. It was more like it held my attention a lot more. Like I was more in tune to listen to exactly what he says. So they have two states prosecution up there. They have the black lady. They have him. And sometimes the lead prosecutor is not always the strongest in arguments. This is something that I noticed with um, Tory Lane's case. There was... 29. Oh, um, What do you do uh, on a day to day basis these days? I work. <laughs> I uh, serve at a Chili's in North Carolina and I take care of my daughter. And how old is your daughter? Seven months. Um, do you know Olivia Bishop? Yes. How do you know him? I met him online. <laughs> years ago and I've been in his group for some time. When did you first come to learn about Mr. Bishop? Around 2017 when I saw him online. Um, let me pause this again too. Um, when it comes to the victims, they're not going to show them. So we're not going to be able to see her. We're just only going to be able to hear her. So any person that they deem a victim in this case, they're not going to show them on the witness stand just so that before y'all get to asking and thinking that you're missing something, you're not. They're not showing any of the victims. With his group of people um, just parading in nature. And how old would you have been at that time? I would say maybe tw my early 20s, 23. Okay. And sort of what was going on in your life at that point? Around that time, I was um, embarking on my own spiritual journey. I kind of um, lost touch with myself around that time. I was going through a depression as well. Um, I left the church because of uh, things going on in the church that I deemed to be, you know, uh, wasn't right for me. And I was looking for God. So. When I found God, it was in nature, and it was through his teachings of going into nature, Elihio Bishop's teaching, going into nature. So what was appealing to you at that point in your life about Mr. Bishop and what he could offer? Um, a lifestyle. Um, it was about living in tune with self and the community, and about love, and speaking righteously, and being righteous, and also living with integrity and honesty. And when did you leave home to go stay with Mr. Bishop? I left home in 2020. And at that point, where was the group? The group was in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. And how old would you have been then? Man. Uh, I would say around 25, 26. When you first got to the group, were, were they in a house, an apartment, something else? Yes, they were in a house. Okay, approximately how many folks were there? Like 20 people, around 20 people, 25. Okay, and how was it? Like when you first got there, what were your sort of first impressions? This was the people that I watched for years. So I was very excited and everybody was very welcoming. Um, I initially met the group um, before then, before I got into the home. Um, How, tell us about that. When did you meet them? So I met them at a party because I was invited. Um, but also before then, they walked into my job. I was working at a raw vegan restaurant uh, in Atlanta called Tassili's Raw Reality. And since then, you know, they told me to hit them up whenever we So, would. hold on, I don't mean to interrupt, but all right, so you're working at a, a vegan restaurant, mm -hmm. and what happens? Um, when I'm working at that vegan restaurant, they happen to walk in the men. It was him, Elihio Bishop, and the men. And uh, they recognized me, and I went up and hugged some of the men, and uh, Alihio Bishop also recognized me and tried to flirt with me and told me to call him while he was leaving. But I never did really call. But um, his members actually, you know, encouraged me to come visit more. And, you know, I, I even gave my phone to one of them because they needed phones. 
and I had extra. Okay, so you said they recognized you. Do you know where they recognized you from? Absolutely, online. I was a part of the online base of people that, you know, agreed with their teachings. Uh, I would say I was a part of their group online uh, for quite some time, and I traveled to Thailand and just to live the knowledge that they spoke. So they noticed me from online. And so from the time that you met in person in the restaurant to the time that you joined the group in Atlanta, about how much time passed in between those two? Excuse me? About how long was it between when you met with Mr. Bishop and the other men in the restaurant before you moved in with them? I would say two to three weeks, maybe. And did you have any other plans going on in your life at that time? Yes, I, I, I was going to quit my job, uh, which I did, and moved to Bali, Indonesia to become a yoga teacher. I had um, the ticket booked and everything. And what caused you to forego the trip to Bali to go with the defendant? The, the members of the tribe was um, encouraging me to become a member of their tribe um, and just forget about my trip to Indonesia. Um, just to become part of the family, they said it was part of my purpose. So. And just so we're clear, when you say the tribe, what are you referring to? Oh, the Yobish's cult. When you, do you remember, you said it was 2020, when you first moved in with them, what happened to, like, any personal belongings of yours? Uh, usually you share anything with the cult. You share anything with the tribe. You, everything goes to... Um, a closet or sometimes the men would take away your belongings. Um, I remember that they search. First they search your, your belongings just to make sure you didn't bring anything that they didn't like or agree with. You know, they would throw away things if they don't agree with it or like some types of soaps or, you know, certain things. But yeah, it will be searched and put away. And when you came, did you have any like personal documents with you? Like you or credit cards or things of that nature? Uh, yes, I did. And um, what happened to those items when you entered the group? Well, per se, for me, I, uh, for some reason, I was able to keep mine. But h however, uh, I was told to give all my money to one of the members, which was a man. So I cash out everything that I had. Were you given a new name when you entered the group? So I'm going to object to what this has to do with March 24, 2022. I don't think it has relevance to it. I would ask that we get to that age. Mr. Cutting? The context is key, right? And I believe that intrinsic evidence is intrinsic and is what is necessary to complete the telling of the story. All of this is intrinsic. All right. Overrule the objection. You may continue. Janae, were you given a new name when you joined the group? Um, the first time, no. The first time I joined the group, no. I kept my name, which was Natiri. Okay, how did you get the name Natiri? I named myself. Okay. And when did you, was that before or after you joined the group? Before. Okay. How would you, when you first joined the group, how, did, how would you describe Mr. Bishop? When I first joined, he was very kind and uh, he was very charismatic. The, also, the tribe, the, the cult, the tribe, they were also that way. Um, I believe that he was very, you know, caring at one point. And were there rules in the group? Yes, there were a lot of rules in the group. Um, for one, the men weren't allowed to talk to the women and vice versa. And when I came in, it was very hard for me um, because it didn't make sense. So I made a complaint to Alethea Bishop, and he then went ahead and changed the rule around. But then after some time, possibly um, a week to a month, uh, three weeks to a month, he changed uh, it right back to women not being able to talk to the men. Okay. What were the sleeping arrangements? Everyone sleeps everywhere. Um, there were people sleeping in the dining room, in the living room, 
Only Eligio was allowed to sleep in the master bedroom, though it wasn't his house. Um, and all the other members were, uh, had, even a couple, there was the times when we did have couples, the couples slept together, um, but Eligio had a set of women sleep with him only in that room. And where did these rules come from? Eligio Bishop. Were you able to, was anyone able to say no to the rules? No. What would happen if he did? Um, you, when you, dis, when you disrespect Eligio, you would be either go in the corner or around this time, this is what, around this time, what I saw, you would either go in the corner or do squats or be recommended or shunned. This was the first time I was there. Were there rules related to romantic relationships? Yes. What were those rules? Um, at the time, the first time I was around, he um, would put people together. He would say that they have a choice, um, not necessarily in my, in my particular situation, that I had a choice because my choice wasn't uh, accepted. What do you mean by that? Um, there was a male that I wanted to be with that was a part of the tribe, and uh, he, the tribe was polygamous, so he was already with a woman, so I believed that I could be able to be with him, but he wouldn't allow that. Um, he would just say that he's the only one that's supposed to be polygamous in the group. So I just want to be clear, because you're using the word he. The man that you wanted to be with, what was his name? Uh, his name is Courtney. Pete Townsend, okay. but uh, in, the tr in the tribe, the cult, his name is Solar. And so you wanted to be with Courtney, and who was it that was not allowing that to happen? Eligio. And why was that? Uh, Response. Do you, I, if I could rephrase the question. Okay. Um, do you know why? Uh, personally, no, but okay. he would, you know, always tell us that he's the king. Oh, I can move on here. All right, sustain. Go ahead. What did members of the group call Mr. Bishop? He had many names. There's our DNA you know, object for purposes of relevance. It has nothing to do with March 24, 2022. What people call him in the group? It is absolutely relevant. It's intrinsic evidence. It goes to consent. It goes to all of that. All right. Over, overrule the objection. Come in. What were some of the names that Mr. Bishop was known by within the group? He was named Baba G, Poppy, King, Chief, um, Father Tahuti, and that's all I know. Okay. Three God. How did the defendant refer to the world outside of the group? Hell. It was hell for us. Did you say why it was? Very down on objective. It has nothing to do with March 24, 2022. Um, what, how, his description of what happened in the world outside. Same response. It, it, it does. Um, I, I'm going to allow the testimony, and if, if you want to have to see any objections, I would ask the court to make it a thing. Of course. All right. Go ahead. But the intrinsic um, evidence and testimony is allowed. Why did the defendant in this case refer to the outside world as hell? I'm going to object as a question that's based on speculation. Why did he do this? I'll sustain that objection. Did, Rephrase the question. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Did the defendant explain why the outside world was hell? Yes, he did. He uh, basically told us that the outside world was Babylon and it was going to crash down and Mother Nature is going to wipe it all out. But the Chosen were able to stay with him and the Chosen are his disciples. So we considered ourselves his disciples and uh, to follow him. He was the Christ. Did he allow you to maintain communication with your family and friends outside of the group? No. When people left the group, how did he respond? Uh, 
When, when people left the group, how did the defendant respond to that? He, um, when someone wanted to leave, we, as the tribe, would, excuse me, when someone wanted to leave the tribe, they would be reprimanded by him and by the, the cult members. The members would tell them how they were. That would be years later based on the people who got those fights. All right, I'll su sustain the objection. You can't talk about what other people may have said other than Mr. Bishop. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, how did Mr. Bishop respond when people left the cult? Not like what was said, but like what was his response? He didn't like it, of course. Um, sometimes he would play off like we could leave. Um, other times he would just tell us mean things and call us names and tell us how wrong we are for leaving. At some point, did you leave the group? Yes, I left the group. Three so, times. Okay, let's talk about the first time that you left the group. About how long had you been in the group when you decided to leave? The first time I decided to leave, I believe I was in the group for five months or so, three to five months. And what happened, or did something happen that led to you wanting to leave? Well, the first time uh, I left is because I was voted out. Okay. And um, he told me, we had a meeting, and he was trying to tell me that me having feelings for another man was weak. And um, he should basically be the only one I should be wanting. So the tribe, uh, the cult, uh, went ahead and agreed with him to cast me out. And um, it was basically a test, like he likes to say. Um, whenever we're told to leave, they, he expects us to fight for our right to be a part of his discipleship and a part of the chosen. So he um, would basically tell us, go ahead and go, you leave, go leave. And um, that's what happened the first time. I, I didn't take that as a test though, I thought I was literally supposed to leave, so I made my arrangements and I left. Where did you go when you left? Uh, I went back to my home in Atlanta. Okay. About how long did you stay away from the group? About 10 to 11 months. When you were away, were you communicating with anybody within the group? Yes. Who Who was that? Solar. What drew you back to the group? Solar. And when, do you remember when you went back to the group, the, when you went there the second time? Um, no, I don't per se remember, but I remember the year. I believe it was in 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where were they at that point? They were in Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, and also, it wasn't just Solar that brought me back to the group. Um, it was also a Lehio Bishop. Okay, tell us about that. Um, one night at 5 o'clock a.m., I saw a message from a Lehio Bishop. He told me that he uh, had a dream and he said that I was supposed to be with Solar. Now around this time, me and Solar have been privately communicating. Um, however, for some days I haven't heard from him. So Elihio decides to text me and says, come back home. You were supposed to be with this man. I had a dream. So uh, the next day we had a call and he made arrangements for me to go back to Puerto Rico. He bought the flight and everything. So um, I went, I made my way back to Puerto Rico in hopes and in expectations of being with the other man that I loved. Had anything changed about the group while you were gone? Uh, yes, the location, of course, um, but the group got a bit more violent from the first time I've seen. What do you mean by that? Um, I, I would say that I saw. I heard. Judge, I object. I don't know the relevance of that. March 24, 2022. Mr. Cousin? I believe that there's a standing objection on that ground. This is absolutely intrinsic. It is also covered by the court's pretrial ruling on 
one of the court's pre-trial rules. Well, I think she could testify to what she actually witnessed, but I think if she's going to testify to what she heard someone else say, that's probably true. Yeah, that's a different objection. Okay. So, again, you can testify as to what you saw, you observed, you experienced, but not what someone else told you happened. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Did you yourself observe, as in see or hear anything in Puerto Rico that led you to believe that there was violence in the group? Absolutely, yes. Can you tell us about that? Okay, I can account for four times that I remember. For one, we was traveling around the islands of Puerto Rico, and we ended up being in some kind of Airbnb. What happened is that I seen him. When you say him. Eligio Bishop. I seen Eligio Bishop basically abuse one of the women that he calls his wives. This one was Aya. But what happened was he placed his head on top of her head and mushed her back to where she fell back. Then I saw him drag her into another room, and after that I heard a lot of banging and certain things. And he left the room very angry. He was very angry because she was upset with him, and he was speaking to her, say you're going to leave me, say you're going to leave me. And when I went into the room after the banging, just to check on her, she was on the floor crying and had cuts and bruises on her, open cuts and wounds. So I went to her, and I grabbed the aloe off of the dresser, and I covered her cuts. In addition to that incident, were there any other incidents of violence that you observed in Puerto Rico? No. After that, I... Was there anything else different about the group in Puerto Rico? Yes. The group had an outside, the group had a downstairs, and there was an upstairs. And there was a home that only he was allowed to be in. The others had to be downstairs in tents or huts or whatever. And was that different than the sleeping arrangements in Atlanta? Yes. In Atlanta, we were in tents. Were you allowed to be in a relationship with Solar when you went back? No. He kept me away from Solar a lot. He basically told me that he only lured me back there for content, and it was all a hoax, that he was never going to let me be with him. And he was going to initiate a fight between me and the other woman that he wanted me to be against, which was his, Solar's first wife. Who is that? Her name, her code name is Zilka, but her name is Jayon Marie Hamilton. Had the teaching changed, like the defendant's teachings? Yes, absolutely. How so? It went from being a part of nature and being one with the all, and we are all gods and goddesses that walk the earth. Then it just went to him becoming the almighty God, Jesus Christ, God figurehead. And we were his, all part of his mind. And we did not exist. And the only thing that existed was him. How long did you stay that second time? The second time I stayed a month. Why did you leave? I left for two reasons. For one, I was sick and tired of being stuck in the upstairs. He kept me away from the commune. And he went to Atlanta to party and do all these other things while he had me and another woman stuck up in the house doing nothing, just wasting away there. And I was growing tired of it. I remember once asking to go downstairs just to be with the community of people that I came to live with, and I wasn't allowed to. So I got upset with that, and I left. And I started to feel 
horrible because I couldn't be with the person I wanted to be with in the first place. The second reason is because um, of the abuse that I heard the day that I was leaving made me push to go. He wasn't there, but one of his um, members uh, abused one of his wives there. And I heard the whole thing, the screaming, the traumatic, everything. Okay, um, so that was when Mr. Bishop was, was not there, that was two other members fighting? Yes. Okay. Um, also, I remember while I was in Puerto Rico, I remember another account that he's abused um, one of his women. Um, I heard her screaming from the top of her lungs uh, one night. And, Who is that? Uh, this particular one, her name is Malia. Uh, her cult name is Malia. Um, Malia was screaming from the top of her lungs saying, I'm sorry. And it woke up everyone in the home. And um, all you can hear is him beating on her really, really bad. Um, no one did anything. I, I froze. I couldn't. I didn't know what to do. I... And when you left that second time, was the group still in Puerto Rico at that point? Yes, they were still in Puerto Rico when I left, and then they traveled somewhere else after I left. And how long were you away from the group? Um, after that, I would say some months. Some months? Yeah. Uh, okay. um, when did, do you remember when you went back the last time? I went back the last time, for the third time, December 26, 2022, or 21. 21? Oh, yes. Yeah. Where was your group at that point? The group was in Atlanta. In Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, and how, had anything changed about the group from the last time that you were there? Yes, um, I believe that I thought they got better. Um, the house was different, of course. There were no tents, but um, they were much nice, very much nice to me when I came the third time. About how many people were living there at that point? It was just him and his women, so I would say one, two, three, four, five, five women um, and me. Where were the guys? The guys were in the Pennsylvania location. He has separated the women from the men again. How long did that last? That lasted some months. Now that we sort of had the timeline set out, I want to talk about your personal relationship with the defendant. Yes. When you first joined the group, how would you describe your relationship with the defendant? Um, friends. We were friends, but also he was the head in charge, so I was basically his disciple. Um, and then he would make me his lover and, and take me and become his wife, his one of his wives. Did anything happen, or when was the first time that something happened that made you believe the defendant had a sexual interest in you? Yes, um, it was weird, um, cause I never really, I never looked at him that way. Um, but when he told me, he said, I, I went to him and hugged him. That's what happened. I went to him and hugged him because I love to give hugs. So let's put this on the timeline. Was mm -hmm. this? All right, I've been silent for so long. I'm going to just pause her testimony real quick. I know that they can't show her, but a lot of times, like, people filming the case, like, they'll show the defendant. And I wish that we could see Nature Boy's reaction to her testimony and things like that. Like, if I mean, I understand we can't see her. She's a victim or whatever. Those of us who have been following the trial, we all know what she looks like in any, anyways. But um, I just wish we could have seen his facial expressions throughout this. Without the facial expressions, it's kind of like, you know, but whatever. This is the first time you were in the group? Yes. Okay, the about how long, do you know, like, was it right when you got there? A couple months, a couple weeks? It was some weeks. It wasn't when I, right when I got there. Right when I got there, he was just... 
You know, everybody was already coupled. He already had um, his chiefess there, and everybody was, you know, in their relationships. Yeah. Okay, so you said couple, some number of weeks after you got there, tell mm-hmm. us what happened. He, I went up to him and I hugged him, um, and he said to me, I, you might be ready to have sex with me soon. And, and what happened next? After that, I... I didn't know how to take that, um, it, but when I um, went ahead and asked any other member, it was looked at as, as a high honor to sleep with him, so, but I just, I didn't take anything of it, I just brushed it off, I guess. Did you eventually develop a relationship with the defendant? I don't want to answer that question. Um, at some point, did the defendant and you have sex? Yes. And was that that first time when he hugged you, or was it sometime after that? Sometime after that. Okay. And? I went upstairs, and sometime after that, that was the first hug. And then sometime after that, um, I went upstairs to hug him again after the good, good night. Like I said, I'm a hugger. And um, he... Uh, held me in his arms after that. And the women that was in there closed the door. Um, and he basically ordered me to take a shower. And um, he set up his closet with lights and candles and incense and music. And um, around that time, I told him, well, I wanted to be with Solar. And um, I made that known to him that I wanted to be with another man and he tried to convince me over and over how that wasn't going to work and he's this big chief and he's this guy I should be with um, uh, long story short he basically um, was trying to convince me to have sex with him that whole time and I was kind of scared um, because that was one of my biggest fears at one point I didn't want to sleep with him at all um, it was scary, and um, he just told me, at one point I couldn't open up to him as he was trying to come in front of me, and he told me it's because you're scared, you have to relax, and I breathed, and that's how that happened. And did you share his desire for a sexual relationship? No, I, I never wanted any sexual relationship with him. And over the course of your time in the group, did you and the defendant have a sexual relationship? Yeah. And did you care about him? Is that a yeah? Yes. During the course of your time in the group, did the defendant ever ask you to allow him to film the two of you engaged in sexual activities? Yes. And was that something that you were initially wanting to do? Uh, no, absolutely not. I, I actually told him sometimes that I was uncomfortable with being recorded. Uh, but How did he respond to that? He doesn't, he just brushes off, like he just tries to convince you how it's it's good and he likes it and it's for a bigger purpose and you know how it will grant attention and all this stuff. Um, Did he explain why he wanted to film it? Uh, yes, the third time I, when I was in a cult he described it as sexual education. So he wanted to post um, these videos for the community to know how it is to have sex, I guess. And was there ever any sort of like agreement that he could do whatever he wanted with these videos? Yes, he always would have his phone. He had always had the access to do whatever he wanted. It was never a question or a doubt anyone should have with him. 
but did you consent to allowing him to distribute these videos forever or just in the moment? In the moment, when I was there, I was definitely, I would say, brainwashed. And uh, he would definitely convince me that it was for a bigger purpose, which we all wanted to be there for the bigger purpose. So for me personally, I thought I was doing something good. The last time you went back and when you were in a group late 2021, <coughs> early 2022, did you observe violence within the group at that point? Not like the last time? Yeah. Absolutely, yes. And did you ever observe the defendant be physically violent with any of the women in the group? Yes. Um, I'm going to tell you about two of them that I remember. One of them be the most gruesome would be with who he deems to be his queen, which is Malia. She got an attitude or was just feeling down one day um, while we all were together. It was just me and the women and him, Elihio Bishop, in the bathroom. Um, she, Malia was naked, as we all, you know, we don't have a problem with nudity in the, in the cult. So she was oh, like, hold on, hold on one second. Can you guys approach for a minute, please? I'm sorry. All right, all right, all right. So what are your thoughts so far on her testimony? Um, some of the stuff that he's asking her, I agree with some of you in the chat. Like it does sound like leading questions. And the reason why there isn't so many objections is because um, they made a standing objection. So basically there is an objection that kind of goes as a blanket to him not feeling like some of these things are relevant. Now, an objection of leading is a different objection, so he can object to when he feels like something is leading. He's not doing that, but, um, you know, so far, I think that the jury is listening. They're getting a feel of it, but I think that there is a lot of contradictions in her interview that she did with the tea and statements that she made on live and different things that you can kind of tell that she kind of was guided in her decision on where she came. Like she had to be convinced to do certain things. So I think that the jury will hear those things eventually and those things will not favor well. But I think that once they show his character, they show how he um, had control over them, how he had them smacking each other, I think they'll sway back. Ultimately, I feel like he'll be found guilty. But I, it will be interesting to see how well his attorney kind of rebuts some of these things and keeps the jury on what actually happened that night. Hearing from like one of his most solid soldiers which is true aka Aaron that's going to be interesting because he was real ride or die and now he's flipped so I think the jury will have a lot of swaying back and forth and let's just continue to hear how it plays out let me speed it up a little bit just to get caught up take a look at it Yes, Aaron is uh, testifying. I mean, true, yeah, true, true, Aaron, Aaron, true. He's testifying. And true is very, very intelligent, concise. He really, like, uh, 
is thoughtful, so I think that they'll be captivated by his testimony. Velvet, I really don't know how her testimony will go, um, but. I'm most interested in seeing um, Janae's testimony complete. I'm most interested in seeing True testify. And I'm interested to see how delusional his wives will be when they get up on the stand. They're already, Malia was already in the courtroom being combative, saying that the detectives lied about this and that. So I expect to have a ish show once they start getting on the stand because I don't think that they'll follow the court's rules. I don't, I think that they're going to be answering and trying to give extra information that they were not asked. I, I, I'm ready to get them them on, to be honest. That's where the show going to start. Um, let me see. Uh, is it possible for you to put up a picture of each of the people testifying? We could also Google their image. Um, no, I'm not going to put up her picture just because, like I said, I filed a document with the court. And the court order for us who are accessing the stream through the court they said, uh, you should be aware that per the judge's instructions, no name of suspected XA assault victims should be used and we will not be showing them. So that is the rules. I'm not going to go against the rule because I filed paperwork to get access to the stream. So if you know who they are and you hear their name, you're just going to have to Google them and ask people in the chat who's who so that you're able to Google who's who. But I'm not going to put up anything that they don't put up. I'm not going to say nobody's name that they don't say. I'm just going to um, refer to what they refer to and leave it up to the chat to do anything else. Just because I wanted direct access to the to the link and I filed paperwork, so... I'm going to abide by that. Now, if I was streaming and I didn't file no paperwork and I was um, just going off of one of the other streams that was streaming, then I would have been putting up names, telling y'all who's who, you know, doing all that. But since I have been instructed, I'm going to follow the instructions. Um, Zoka and Aya got arrested. So Aya is released from jail. Zoka is still in jail. So Zoka and Aya got arrested. Let me actually pull up the arrest for you guys so that I can, um, you said, yeah, Zoka, from my understanding is in jail. They were trying to take in contraband to the court. And I'm sure that that will be revealed here as well. And that will not look good for Mr. Uh, Mr. Baba G. <laughs> okay. So um, while they're on a brief recess, as soon as they come back, we'll, we'll be, you know, right back. But in the meantime, let me show you guys the, um, what do you call it? Um, da, 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 da. Hold on. Let me show y'all the article. All right, so let me pull this up for y'all right here. So this is the article, and it shows them being arrested. So it says, uh, two women charged with trying to sneak contraband into the cab uh, jail sheriff's office. So the woman on the left is Aya, and the woman on the right is Zoka. 
And on the article, it says that uh, two women have been charged with allegedly trying to sneak drugs and other contraband to inmates in DeKalb County Jail. Deputies surveilling the jail perimeter around 8.15 p.m. Saturday noticed a suspicious van parked in a visitor's spot. According to the DeKalb Sheriff's Office, deputies detained two women in the van and searched the vehicle. According to the Sheriff's Office, deputies found the following. They found cell phone chargers and charging cords, Two pairs of binoculars, rolling papers, earphones, multiple cigarette lighters, a straight razor, three Husky T4 Star tools, a Swell Pro drone, and a remote controller, a battery pack, a bullhorn, 48 grams of a green leafy suspect, a substance suspected to be Mary Jane. Okay, and these are the items that they got from the vehicle in their search. Okay, and so it says the women were arrested on multiple charges. The driver, 27-year-old Kirinda Carter, faces felony charges of possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute and conspiracy to commit a felony, the sheriff's office said she also reportedly faces misdemeanor charges of criminal trespass, unlawful purpose, driving without a valid license, and giving a false name, address, and birth date to law enforcement. Okay, so these are some of the other items that they obtained from them. That's the bullhorn, the drone, the... What is these other items? I guess the cell phone, I think the yellow cord is the cell phone charging cords. Then it looks like um, next to the baggie is the cell phone. And then uh, the rolling papers and then the other things. It says that the sheriff's office said that the passenger, 36-year-old Porsche Wade, which is Aya, faces felony charges of possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute and conspiracy to commit and felony and misdemeanor charge, criminal trespass, and unlawful purpose. Okay, so let me see if there is another article on them to basically trying to uh, smuggle in some some stuff in one zero oh wait the court is back yes your honor okay so uh, you agree well yeah that was my next question was because i don't know that use your mic i'm sorry has the court issued an order um has there been an order pertaining to the court ruling on the 415 four four i don't not that I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, no, you didn't submit an order? No. Miss, we submitted briefs, and Caroline had indicated that there would be an order forthcoming. Okay. I can submit an order. I wasn't asked for one. But okay. I, well, I'm kind of in between staff attorneys, so that probably got lost in the shuffle. My apologies for that. Um, okay. If you could submit a, a proposed order, um, I'm allowing them in. Um, yes. I think I said that at the hearing too. Did I? You okay. said it in the email. I did. Yes. Okay. It was communicated. Oh, all right. Yes. It's just not a file. Order. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's get that order in place. Somebody's alarm. No. My wife's not alarm. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. That's okay. Yeah, mine did that too. I think there's something called theater mode. Okay. You could, is it an um, Apple Watch? Oh, uh, well, I can't help with that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, in order to prove its case, in which counts pertaining to 1.3, do you have 1.34.10 in front of you? I can, yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry, I didn't know. Okay, so in order to prove its case in... It will be counts one and two. Agreed. You agree? Okay. Counts one and two. Actually, is Mary make me a quick copy, please? Of I think I just need yeah twenty one, twenty two, and pages twenty one, twenty two, and twenty three. 
reason I was asking, the reason I was asking about a order is the court had not, I guess, indicated what purpose it was in for, right. what scope, and so okay. that's kind of what I was hoping that we would see. Before. Yes, no, that's fair. So. Okay. All right, Mr. Coveney, can you provide that information, please? So um, what is your purpose? See if I agree with what your purpose is. Right, the state's purposes were intent and uh, motive. Primarily motive, but it was intent and motive were what were on the motion that we filed. Okay. All right, so they turned off the audio. I figured it would be better for me to pull down my green screen because we going back, forth, forth, and back. Back, forth, forth, and back. <laughs> All right, so two types of good lawyers. One lets you talk and hangs you later or object objections every time to preserve the record. Uh, this N word is just slow. Um, what's going on? Is she giving the verdict? No, the, we, the trial just started. She's not giving a verdict yet. Literally just started. And Janae is not finished testifying. So she's not, uh, finished testifying. Again, anybody asking where this is streaming at will be blocked. I'm gonna put you on timeout for now. Because clearly you see a stream in here. So that's really what matters. If you want to see it somewhere else, then Google it. Stop asking my chat about where stuff is streaming when you can find out for yourself. It's streaming here, which is why you're here. Okay? So that's just a warning, Buki. If you want to see it here, I mean, if you want to see it other places where the chat is turned off, you can't even chat, you can't even comment, go look it up. Okay? Over there, it is not going to uh, be as entertaining, child. You're going to be just looking at, at silence for a lot of times, okay? And you ain't going to be able to look in no chat. So, again, use your Googles, baby. Use your Googles. You look, you, you, you see it here. <laughs> okay? Anyways, in the meantime, what what are y'all predictions as far as his sentence now those of you guys who have came in late he is facing a life sentence so there was two um there was an offer that they presented before trial and they gave him the offer to take a 30-year sentence with him serving 10 to 20 years in jail and that is based on the judge's discretion. If he get 10, if he get 15, if he get 20, the judge will decide. And then the remainder of the 30 years would have been, I'm assuming, served on probation and uh, like on a suspended sentence type of thing. And he would have to register as a SA or, okay? Um, he would have to register as an SA or he wanted to think about it. And then once he started to think about it, they told him that he was also facing the possibility of life without the possibility of parole. So 
there was um, mention of life with the possibility of parole, but he's also facing life without the possibility of parole. And that's based on if the jury finds him guilty on the charge that carries the possibility without parole. So it's going to be up to the jury. He wanted to think about it a little longer. He came back, and once he came back, he basically said he wanted to go forward with the trial. They had to kick out Malia out of the courtroom. She started to say the detectives did something with the evidence. They did. She was saying something about the evidence, and then they had to escort her out. So they have to sit and wait their turn. I don't think that today will get to their testimony. So they just going to be twiddling their thumbs, sitting outside, just guessing and hoping and wishing and praying on what is being said. We have to get through the cross-examination and we have to get through some more of the evidence. I'm sure they're going to present her interview that she did with the T or at least I'm sure they're going to present some of it. They're deciding whether they're going to allow something in right now. So I'm not sure what piece of evidence they're deciding on, whether or not they're going to allow in right now. But that's what they're, I think, conversing about right now. And then we're going to get on with this. It's already noon in Georgia. So I'm guessing pretty soon there is going to be a lunch break. So we're going to have to more than likely get cross-examination after lunch. And I think that she's probably going to take up the rest of today. And I also think that she'll probably even be here for tomorrow. I highly doubt they'll get through all of her testimony cross and rebuttal within one day span. She is the main witness. She is the reason why this case is here. So I suspect that she's going to be here for today. And um, I believe... In my opinion, I think that she'll be here tomorrow, too. So we're just going to, um, you know, see how that goes right now. There currently is no sound. They haven't really said anything yet. As soon as the sound comes on, we will hear what they are saying, and I'll be quiet. Okay? But, um... <laughs> yeah, um Miss V said his first offer was 7 years incarcerated and 3 years parole. He really blew it. Yeah, can, like that life hanging on the balance is really 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 a stickler and I believe that they're going to cook him based on the emotions of the jury. A lot of people have witnessed, you know, people being essayed, people feeling, um, you know, controlled or being done wrong. And I think overall the jury will more so his, his, his sentence will lay more on his character as a whole versus just solely what happened on that night. So his attorney wants them to focus on, just what happened that night, get rid of all of the fodder and all of the outside noise and just focus on that. But I think emotionally as humans, they're going to be triggered by those videos. They're going to be triggered when they start showing videos of him telling them, slap them. And question from the media that our office was getting before the jury comes in about Okay, I think we need to clarify the extent to which the audio from this witness can be published as opposed, obviously we know no video, there was a question about whether audio could, my understanding of the court's ruling on the Rule 22 was that audio could be published as long as it was not identified. Correct. I wanted to hear that yes. from the court. Audio, it is okay for you all to publish stream the audio, but you have to blurb out the names of the people that are referenced, the other victims in there. Because the no identifying information is supposed to be transmitted. (laughs) 
No, <laughs> no. I mean, I, I keep, my job isn't to make it easier for you to get your, your pictures and your video. My job is to try this case. So I'm, I'm not going to get involved in all that. But I will tell you that the names um, and the identifying information of this testifying witness and any other alleged victims that she mentions need to be blurred out. So, I, I don't know how else to handle that. Okay. I just the what? Oh, the discussing the Yes, oh yeah. You know what, while the jury's out, Mr. Booker, we did not address earlier bench conferences. Okay. Are you waiving your client's presence at all bench conferences? I am judged, but if the court wants to inquire into my client, I am waiving his presence. I will certainly explain to Mr. Bishop any conversations that we have uh, at the, the bench in order to uh, make sure that we're making best use of our time and not have to take the jury out every time. Okay. Uh, here, Ms. Mr. Bishop, if you do not waive your presence at the bench conferences where I'm talking to you counsel about legal matters, um, listen, I'm talking to you. If you Why don't they have the camera on the judge? Like, um, come only, on. Only your attorney will be up here and Mr. Coveney and Ms. Uh, Thomas will be up here. So if you choose not to waive your presence, then every time there is an issue, I have to send the jury out and bring them back in. So for expediency's sake and for... He'll waive it? Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. All right. So 1.34.00. Sometimes evidence is admitted for a limited purpose. I mean, come on, cameraman. We're not on the witness. You can show the judge. Sole purpose and only for the counts for which the evidence is limited and not for any other purpose. Then, okay. Then I'll read 1.34.1 Just so, about the, no, this is nothing bad, just the timing. I, I expect about 30 to 40 more minutes of direct examination. I know that's within the window. That then we'll work. break the lunch. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's bring the jurors back. Yeah, I feel like they could have the camera on the judge, have the camera on him. Like, we could be looking at something other than the state of Georgia. God damn.
change it up, get a different view, different perspective. Um, all right, thank you for the for your patience. Um, if you can hang with me. We probably have about 30, 45 more minutes with on direct, and then we'll break for lunch. All right, um, before we continue the testimony, I need to give you some instructions. Sometimes evidence is admitted for a limited purpose or for some counts and not others. Such evidence may be considered by the jury for the sole issue or purpose and only for the counts for which the evidence is limited and not for any other purpose. In order to prove its case in counts one and two, the state must show intent and may show motive. To do so, the state has offered evidence of other acts allegedly committed by the accused. You are permitted to consider that evidence only insofar as it may relate to those issues and not for any other purpose. You may not infer from such evidence that the defendant is of a character that would commit such crimes. The evidence may be considered only to the extent that it may show the intent or motive elements or issues that the state is required or, or authorized to prove in the crimes charged in the case now on trial. Such evidence, if any, may not be considered by you for any other purpose. The defendant is on trial for the offenses charged in this bill of indictment only and not for any other acts. Before you may consider any other alleged acts for the limited purposes stated, you must first determine whether it is more likely than not that the accused committed the other alleged acts. If so, you must then determine whether the acts shed any light on the elements of the offense or the issues uh, for which the act was admitted in the crimes charged in the indictment in this trial. Remember, keep in mind the limited use and the prohibited use of this evidence about other acts of the defendant. By giving this instruction, the court in no way suggests to you that the defendant has or has not committed any other acts, nor whether such acts, if committed, prove anything. This is solely a matter for your determination. All right, with that, you may continue with the witness's testimony. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I believe I had asked you if you had, the last time you were in the group, had you observed violence between the defendant and any of the women in the group? Why do we got to look at that emblem? It will, and the objection is overruled. Go ahead. You may go ahead and answer the question. Okay. So I witnessed Elihio Bishop whipping, whipping a woman with a belt over 50 to 100 times. And who is that woman? That woman is Malia. Okay. And what had happened that led up to this? Well, we were all in the bathroom, um, which all of us was the six women, including myself, that he called his wives and Elihio Bishop, and we were all having a conversation. Um, he noticed Malia acting funny or weird or trying to call her out on something, and she basically was telling him there was nothing wrong with her. And he said to her, all right, I know what to do with that. As soon as he said that, Judge, she held up. My, my objection. This, this actually was not in the court's pre-trial ruling. Uh, this is not one of the witnesses that testified. This would be separate uh, and, and distinct from those witnesses. It's not one of the witnesses who testified, but it's one of the witnesses. One of the the witnesses who did testify testified about this. And so, I was, all right. Let's, okay, let's do this. Let me go ahead. We're going to stop right now. I'm going to send them. I think we need to put all this on the record. I'm going to go ahead and send you guys to lunch now so that we can deal with this and not waste your time back there in the jury room doing nothing. Um, same instructions remain in effect. Don't talk about it. Don't research anything. Don't Google anything. It's 20, uh, 25 after. So we'll start back at 1.30. All right, so we are on break. Should I take calls in the meantime or should we all break together? Um, I think we'll probably all break together. We got, what, an hour? And then I'll probably just come back. <sighs> I've been up since 5 a.m. my time because I wanted to like literally 
catch the up, up, opening statements and catch everything like right when it happened. Um, y'all want calls? Okay. All right, so I'll take a couple calls, and then me, myself, I need, like, 30 minutes to myself just so that I can eat something. Okay? I need to eat something. I have not eaten, ate nothing. And I'm normally, I normally don't have to have, like, um, oh, I could put my screen back up. Um, I normally don't have to have breakfast, but lately I've been trying to. Well, Judge, essentially, you want to hear where it is, man. Just use your mic. I don't care where it is. Okay. All right. Um, this witness is attempting to testify uh, regarding what she said was an incident regarding Malia. Uh, Malia was not one of the three people in the court uh, pre-trial hearing. We had a 404, 413 hearing. Uh, and in that, the three witnesses that were there, none of them were named Malia. Uh, we've heard nothing about Malia prior to now. Uh, this invokes the defendant's character in the case. Uh, and because of that, I would have to make a motion for a mistrial because the state has introduced evidence. Uh, and Rango Bailey cannot be unwrong. Uh, simply put, this is his character that there's been no testimony whatsoever uh, pertaining to uh, 50 to 100 times beating of a woman. There's been no testimony regarding that. And so simply put, his character has been put in issue uh, by this particular witness. The state asked this question, uh, knowing that we have had no pre-trial ruling. There, the, the court can get a transcript from the 404 and 413 hearings. This testimony has never been said by her or by any other witness that has testified uh, in this particular case. Uh, so then we would ask the court to declare a mistrial as a result of that. And I don't think a curative instruction will work. Mr. Kevney? First of all, it's in the state's notice of intent to introduce 404B evidence that battery, aggravated battery against Tanisha Dulé, who is Malia, is listed in there. And there was evidence, not of this specific incident, but of other incidents involving violence against Ms. Dulé that was introduced. Wait, why'd they cut the sound? Uh, hello, this is on the record. As motive to control women with violence, but more practically, it's invisible as intrinsic evidence because this happened close in time to when the alleged rape happened, and this was fresh in Miss Mill's mind as that evening is happening as she's leaving. So it goes to the issue of consent. It's intrinsic to that because it is in her mind at the time that the defendant is not allowing her to leave the room and is asking her to have sex. That's- Are you saying it goes to why she didn't think she could leave? Is that yes. What, okay. And why she acted in the way that she did in that bedroom that night. Okay. And Judge, respectfully, that, that's not what she testified to. And we, we, she had to testify- All right, time. hold on. There's no clapping, folks. All right, if, if it happens again, you're gonna be out. There's no clapping. Go ahead. Respectfully, Judge, that's not what she testified to. She didn't even give a time frame that this was happening. Um, and so she's introduced and invoked, uh, again, character. She, did, she didn't qualify, the state didn't qualify with their question. Essentially their question, if I recall, was something along the lines that you were telling me about an incident that you witnessed. It wasn't that it was in 2022 or 2021. So it's still a problematic thing. It's still character evidence, and it, it, it's not intrinsic. And it, it, again, I think everything goes back to we make it intrinsic so it gets in. It's character evidence. There's been no pre-trial on it. Uh, and it has put us in a position where there's character evidence that dramatic in my mind uh, that can't be on problem. Do you agree that the this information was included in their what four hundred four B four thirteen notice? I have to see the notice. So look at that. If it was in the notice and if it was addressed at the hearing, it wasn't addressed at the hearing. Judge. Well, Mr. So. All right. So Mr. Coveney mentioned that someone testified about all this. I don't recall the specific testimony at the hearing. So let's 
find out about that first. What y'all think? Y'all think it's going to be a mistrial? Nature Boy's lawyer is requesting a mistrial based on Janae saying that Malia was beat. No, this is not a re um, a replay. This is currently going on. Once I thought they were going for break, they are addressing a motion. He put in a motion for a mistrial, and this is happening right now. So they're discussing whether or not um, what she just testified to is something that is able to come in. And the people that you guys see reflected on the screen are not the jurors. These are people in the what audience. about this, at Mr. Hoveney, at that hearing? About this particular act? Correct. There was, there was none, but I understood the court's general ruling to be that the violence against the other women was admissible as, as evidence to show the defendant's intent to control the women. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I... That, it, Using under that theory, the fact that Ms. Dule didn't testify, it's still someone who observed that, and it is Ms. Newell who the state is alleging was controlled through that violence. Okay. I seen somebody in the comments say that, um, oh, I saw the jurors from the reflection. The jurors are not in the courtroom right now to hear this testimony. The jurors were released to go on to lunch while they addressed this issue and figured out what they're going to do as far as that the people that you see in the reflection and anytime you see this going forward these people are people that are in the gallery there these are not jurors that you see the jurors are not there but, all right yeah go ahead. but wouldn't the state have to put in some i mean at, at this point the state is basically saying that uh we put you on notice by sending you a, a, a notice of it uh but we had no pre-trial hearing on it We've had no pretrial ruling on it, and that she could essentially say for any woman that she reportedly witnessed this happen, that she could testify about it. And that's not what 404 or 413 are about. All right, let me, I want to, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and break for lunch. I want to look at the transcript from the, what my, from my order at the conclusion of that hearing to refresh my recollection. Yes, sir. And, um, and then I'll decide what to do. Right. But, is there anything else either side needs to add for my consideration? I, mean, I, I, I still
still think regardless of the outcome on the 404 that it really is intrinsic evidence because it goes to a crucial element of consent on the part of Ms. Newell. There's no pretrial filing requirement for that. The state argued somewhat in our brief that all of the evidence about violence against women was... Okay, what is the legal... When you're alleging that the prior act is intrinsic, does that obviate, or that might not be the right word, does that eliminate the need for the pretrial hearing? Yes, there's no statutory pretrial hearing for intrinsic evidence. They could raise an objection or a motion when they exclude the evidence, but 404B's requirement for pretrial hearing is statutory. It comes from the rule itself, not from anything else. All right. I disagree with that, Judge. I'm sure you guys talk about that. But I do. Despite the intelligence of my opposing counsel over here, I think he's far off the left field on that. It would be... 404B would be the purpose of the brief to just go in and just introduce acts in a domestic violence-based case of another person being beaten 50 to 100 times, allegedly, with a belt. That requires a pretrial hearing, and that evidence would be vetted. It is not. All right. I'm going to take a look at the law and intrinsic evidence and character evidence and look at the ruling from the transcript from that hearing during lunch, and I'll make a decision when we return. Great. Okay. Thank you, guys. We need to see his expressions the whole time. We don't need to see that little emblem of Georgia. We need to see all while they're testifying, we need to see his expressions. Like, we don't have to see the victim. We need to see Nature Boy, Three God, Elysio Bishop expressions, okay, all while all of that stuff is going on. So they just broke for lunch. She's going to refer to her transcripts to figure out what exactly the ruling was that they um, agreed to, and that's going to be that. And um, I'm going to open up the stream for a little bit so that I can get some of you guys' opinion about what is going on, what do you think is going to happen, and things of that nature. Let me log into a stream yard really quickly so that we can get the party started as far as you guys' opinion. And then I'm going to take a quick break myself just so that I can get some food. Um, oh, let me get this. Also, at this time, I want to let you guys know that I do have a website, www.neekatnight.com. Over on my website, I am having a blowout sale where a lot of things are online for dirt cheap. And everything must go. I am trying to get rid of a lot of inventory because I'm trying to go into a new direction. And going into the new direction, I want to get rid of all of the stuff that I have now. Okay. And um, that way we can uh, start with something fresh and spicy. All right. So let me go into the uh stream and let me share oh here we go let me share the stream yard link let's share the stream yard link in the chat All right, so the link is in the chat. Anybody who wants to uh, click the link and let me know what you guys think, definitely hit the StreamYard link and let's hear your thoughts. Let's roll it, roll it, roll it. Don't be shy. Also, hit the like button. Also, 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 share, share, share um, the video because you have major news companies who come in after the story kind of like makes headlines but like the people who have been covering it like share us okay that's why it's so offensive when y'all be like who else is streaming it who else is streaming it bitch 
That shit's annoying. Um, so yeah, because baby, we before the news even thought about talking about this, baby, sh- we've been in the trenches following him from Bigo to here to there to anywhere. So who else in it? Like, girl, I be wanting to do like 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 this and this and this and this. Okay. Um, but anyways, let's see if there's anybody coming up. T, what's your thoughts? Hey, so I've been following this case for a while, and I feel like right now, Janae, she's doing a good job. I just feel like the prosecution, they need to just focus on not confusing the jury with the dates. Like, I feel like they need to stay on track about the actual charges that he's being accused of, because I do feel like the defense is doing good at um, just trying to keep the jury on track, if that makes sense. Right, right. No, I understand what you're saying. Like, trying to, like, not conflate feelings. Because what, what their job is at the prosecution is to get the jury feelings riled up. Like, the more emotionally invested into his character that they can get, the more that their views on what happened that night will kind of be a little bit more heavy and have more gravity to them. So they Mm -hmm. want them to feel like he's just a despicable person. And like you said, the defense is, they're really doing a good job into trying to, and just kind of back up from the mic a little bit. You're kind of like blowing into it. But um, yeah, I I agree with you that, that he's doing a good job as far as like trying to keep it about that. But his character is his character, so I feel like the judge will allow a lot of character reference into it. So basically, the prosecution, they're trying to build it up until it gets to the actual night that the incident happened. Correct. Mm-hmm. And do you think they're going to play any video that he was putting out online, like if that has any relevance to the case at hand? Abs- yeah, absolutely. Um they're going to play videos and you're going to see videos based on each witness. So each witness will have certain videos that gets introduced. Like for example, the one video where they had them standing up against the wall and then, um, he was like up, down, up, down. And then he has Sheba go and smack the other one at that Mm -hmm. point. Like that'll become like relevant for her testimony. You know, like when she testifies and she tells her accounting of how she came to the cult of virgin and and how they they give her testimony, certain videos are going to become relevant based on which witness is presented. So, yeah, that we will definitely see video. We saw we've been seeing video throughout the hearings that they've been having before the trial. So I see no reason why the actual trial would be any different. They're going to definitely show video. Yeah, I feel the same, but that's really all I had to say. I think Janae's doing a good job. I just don't like the personal attacks on her. I mean, but I guess it just depends on which side that you're on. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I just Carrie. Carrie, you got to cut it off in the back. Uh, Nunu. Hey. Hey, boo. Um, I just want to say that it's about time. It is about time. I got my snacks. I'm off today. I'm for all the foolishness. It's about time he get what's coming to him. He is mean. He's very disrespectful. I just don't like nothing about it. As soon as you expose me to what was going on, because I did not know this man at all. It, it seems like trash. Um, he's just disgusted. I don't like how he had the people, the man taking his shoes off. I mean, this been going on for what, two years now? Maybe? I don't know. Um... I'm just glad to see that he's going to get what's coming he's, to him. He's all been, the hurt. He's been locked up for two years, but he was running the cult for like six or seven. Are you there? Hello? 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 All right. I don't know what happened. Um, Carrie? Hey. Hey. So I've been following Nature Boy through you all these years. For some reason, Janae's, her her testimony so far is not grabbing me. There's too many inconsistencies with that interview and from what we saw. You know, the members of Carbon Nation are so flip-floppy. Do you kind of think she's going to sabotage her own testimony? 
Um, I don't know if she's going to per se sabotage her testimony, but I do think that they will uh, trip her up with some things yeah. across. And um, while she was giving her testimony, you could hear there were certain times where she was starting to be like emotional. So it mm -hmm. just depends on like how hard they go at her. And I mean, she is the victim of the case. So they can't really like the defense can't really like go at her like, too too hard to where you know but i feel right. like they will try to trip her up and i feel like she will get emotional at that point so i don't know what about the interview do you think that interview is going to play against her because she was very emotional in the interview when she she would say stuff like they made love or he was just pretty much in an interlude in the interview she was pretty much saying like he used her in so many words it's kind of like a woman scar you know what i mean yeah, the interview, she definitely sound like a woman scorn. And um, yeah. it, it, to me, when I first heard the interview, it sounded like she was only mad because she wasn't able to be queen. That's really what the interview yeah, the impression. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, like if, if and I'm not sure if they're going to play the entire interview or if they're going to like play it even at all. But if they play it in its um, entirety or up until like the meat and potatoes of it, there was a lot of, times in the interview that we heard online where uh -huh. she sounded like she was more mad that she was not able to be queen than anything and that's kind of what i go yeah. yeah but that doesn't oh. that doesn't mean that she wasn't you know scared that doesn't mean that she wasn't in fear that doesn't mean that um you know that he didn't have a fear over them because those things will also weigh true as well or those things will also have weight but just going off of me being objective and having the ability to not be as emotionally triggered as some people um with this i can see both sides and i can see when i heard it i'm like she sounds like she she like if he would have said hey you know you could be queen today she would have been there. She would have been cool. You know? I believe so. Yeah, right, right. I, I just like everything I know. I've been following him through you. Everything I know about this whole carbonation, I found through you. So, because you're you're objective when it comes to him, but I just feel like she she also never stated rape. She never once said rape in her interview, and that's the part that I think is gonna kind of mess her up. She said made love to. She never said took it. You know what I mean? Nothing was never like he he just took her body she said made love and the whole thing is going to be he was faking it I, they're gonna have to i think they should have gotten her more together yeah and I based think, it really around her interview I think, I think the defense is really hanging on the fact that she never said right. that it was right but at if you look at the definition of it um mm -hmm. it, it does fall under coercion so whether she because even like some people are raped and they don't even know that they are you know what i'm saying so, exactly right so just because she didn't say that she was raped doesn't mean that she was not, you know, because there are some people who feel like, oh, well, I kissed him, you know, and even though that they didn't want to do it and they said no, they feel like they don't even know, realize that they were because they feel like they initiated some form of it and not realizing that once they say no, it's no. So, I mean, yeah, the defense is definitely going to hang on that fact that she said that it was um, love making. And they're going to hang on the fact that she did not call it rape. But that doesn't mean that it was not rape. I hang on to she was pretty much like Stockholm Syndrome. Mm -hmm. And if you watch his videos, you could tell um, actually a shoe, probably all of them was actually raped, to be honest with you. I don't think any sometimes they was just so submissive and beaten down and scared because, you know, they're going to get ganged up on if they did otherwise. So a lot of them was actually raped. I just, you know, have a feeling that's what they're going to hang on that whole interview. But I guess, like they, someone else said, if you go through the videos, like the videos I've seen, it, he is a monster. Mm -hmm. A monster. I'm just interested to finish the whole case, see how it's going to go. Yeah, That's it's, all. It's gonna end That's with him. Uh, he's he's going to definitely have a, a guilty verdict. But we'll see if it's guilty on all charges or some. But thank you, Carrie. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Right, bye, -bye. Uh, MJ? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So I started uh, tapping in to Nature Boy around 2020, around the, like 2019 when the pandemic started and he would go live on Beagle every day. Mm -hmm. So I was one of those streamers who would watch the ins and outs daily of this man's antics. And I can say that 
the two women, the wives have been going live a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And they keep saying, interview us, interview us, because we were there. But the defense is going, that's why the, the Rick Ross is going to be very important to this case, because the witnesses are cult leaders taking the stand, not really individual people. And they still think that Eligio Bishop is their God. And I think that's why the attorney was asking the question about, and he tried to object, right? Booker tried to object, was about what the outside world was to them and to describe what hell was. So that he's laying the foundation of a thought process and how he brainwashed these people into believing that them go doing anything outside, any going to any authoritative figure outside of them was them being a demon and going against God. Now, what's very important during her interview that we're talking about that she did, she said in that interview multiple times that she believed it's even in that moment during that interview, she still was still believing that he was some type of being that was a good person. And it took it when you leave cults, you have to go through a deprogramming process. And at that time, I think she was still going through it. And I was also they also want to bring up those videos, which is important because there will be times where he's been found correcting the language of made love which is going to be important because there's and even in the series she was talking to him on a sofa he was like yeah tonight we were fucking and he said no made love mm -hmm. he corrects them he teaches them to say made love so her mentioning that in her interview it's it's going to be countered by this is cult language this is what they were programmed to say and the very a very important testimony is going to be Kendra's because she was in the house during the posting while it happened. So her testimony is going to be very important. Yeah, you made some very good points. They they're definitely going to have a battle. I just wish that you know the prosecution was just a little bit more captivating. I can't wait to see what the black uh, prosecutor. Like, cause you know, sometimes they take turns with witnesses. Like he'll do her because he's, he, he seems like, you know, the one who leads with the opening statement is like the lead prosecutor. So he's the lead prosecutor. She's like his co-counsel. But mm -hmm. um, sometimes the co-counsel is more captivating than the lead. That's kind of what I witnessed in the Tory Lanez trial. Like there was the lead prosecutor and then there was the co-counsel. And a lot of times the co-counsel was just a little bit better at like, hammering her points and like really getting it driven home. So I'm mm -hmm. interested to see like which witnesses the co-counsel will be in charge of. Hopefully she'll be in charge of Kendra and we'll see basically what points they point out and how they drive certain points home. But you made really good uh, points as far as it being cult language and them being able to rebut the fact that that's just what, she was programmed to say, and that will be mm -hmm. a very, very good analysis that, you know, gets back and forth and people get to make their judgment on it. But that was a really good point. And I just wanted to say, lastly, and then I'm going to let somebody else do, of course. Um, people, I think that even Booker is looking at Eligio, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of people looking from the outside, right? Mm -hmm. Is looking at uh, Eligio Bishop, sorry, Eligio Bishop, the man. They are building a case against Eligio Bishop, the cult leader. Mm -hmm. That's that's the difference here, and they're and they're laying the groundwork for it. And that's what Booker. That's why he keeps objecting to certain things because he, they are trying to assert the mind control that he has had over these people. And again, the date of it is going to be a lot of hearsay. So the def so even though the defense is trying to keep you concentrated on that day because it is hearsay they're going to, it's going to be who are you going to believe the jury who are you going to believe are you mm -hmm. going to believe miss newell who has been who who has been who is being supported by other people who have had similar experiences or are you going to believe this maniac who was sitting here going woo ha i'm god up down mm -hmm. in all these videos that they're showing you so that's going to be the determining factor here 
Right. And those those videos are are definitely um, damaging videos once they play them. And I believe they will because they played them in the other hearings when they were trying to. Um, what was it? It was it wasn't the evidentiary hearing, but it was the. Uh, the initial when they were trying to figure out when they were going to pick up the case. What hearing was that? I don't know. But anyways, let's move on. Uh, Bug. Hello. Hi. Hey. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Yeah, so I wanted to just kind of piggyback a lot uh, um what a lot of the other people were saying um and speak more about the uh what the defense is trying to do. Um you guys were or I heard someone say like the they're trying to play on like the emotions of the jury with um building the case against him or whatever. But I don't even think it's so much the emotions. Like it's very important for him to get these video or get the the case built against him and get all the facts out there about what he was so that they can prove that it was co origin and to prove that she really was afraid. Like if you don't know the backstory and you just hear what she's saying, you're going to be like, okay, how is that rape? But if you understand everything that he is and everything, like we all watched it on the outside. So we know, but if you're a jury member who has never heard of this guy and you just hear her story, you're just like, okay, but like, if you really hear everything that he he did, like, you would know that, like, this man, like, she really could have been scared. Like, we, it's so important for us and the jury, if we were just on the outside looking in, not knowing anything, for us to know everything that, you know, led up to this day. And that's why the defense attorney keeps trying to block all that out, because he knows, he's, he's, he's seen the video, so he knows that that's going to incriminate his uh client right and we even heard janae herself say that she she wanted to be queen too like she wanted to be until he told her like you're gonna be serving malia you're gonna serve her you're gonna try to make her kiss her feet so of course after that i would have been mad too like I, you know what i mean like i just don't cut it off in the back carrie I don't think that um that was bad for her to say. Like, and whether it got her out the cult or she would have still been there or not, that that's that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. The fact that the fact of the matter is, she didn't realize she was even raped. Even if somebody brought it to her attention, that doesn't matter either. I've been sexually abused before, and I didn't realize I was coerced at the time because if if people know anything about the R word. Um, people can have orgasms, all types of stuff, and it feel good to them. So it makes them feel guilty. They feel like they did something wrong because it felt good. That don't mean nothing. You still, you still got our word, you know, mm -hmm. like, and people don't know that. And so just because she sounds like she enjoyed it or she was jealous or whatever, none of that matters. None right, of that matters. Right. Yeah, that's, that's true. Carrie chimed in when you were, um, Speaking, so I don't know if she had a rebuttal to what you said. So let me bring her up, and then we're gonna go uh, to Jay after that. Uh, Carrie, did you want to reply to what Bug said? Cause you chimed in again. Carrie, are you there? Okay, I don't know why she clicked back on. I thought she had something to chime in and say. But anyways, um, and yeah, so yeah, like I was saying, it's it, just because you don't say that you were doesn't mean that you were not, you know. So that's definitely up to the jury. Like the jury is going to be able to hear what they feel is relevant. Like things that we feel is relevant, pertinent, you know, they're gonna listen to it and they're going to balance the scales and come to a conclusion but ultimately once they start showing those videos it's really a wrap to be honest yeah. you know not only it, it is going to help with the emotional part for sure like for sure but that's not anybody's fault but his own <laughs> but mm -hmm. those are more than it being emotional it is important to build on the character to show like yeah this fool could have did that like for real <laughs> yeah but then you know you also have to account for like the defense doesn't seem like he is um, inadequate. Like, he seems yeah. like he is a good attorney so far. I mean, just his opening statements was, you know, it was decent to me. So you have to account for, like, there are some times that you will feel one way and you'll feel like, nah, he wrong, you know, or, or this was wrong because I seen it this way. 
And then you can hear an argument that can totally change your mind. So we have yeah. to see what argument, like we already know have our mind made up, like he was, you know, mm. out of line. But there could be an argument that can penetrate to one of the juries to feel like, well, you know, I kind of, you know, believe the defense or, you know. So it's going to be really interesting how well he does at cross um, yeah. and how well he's able to keep things out. Because a lot of the the a lot of the true lawyering is what gets allowed in you know there's a lot that the prosecution wants to show there's a lot that the prosecution wants to present and if you watch the ynw melly case then you've seen that there was a lot that that they got thrown out that should have been in that showed like guilt or presumption of of guilt and it's the true lawyering is like what you keep out of there too you know Yes, so, and your true lawyer, lawyer, and I'm having trouble saying the word, but that statement is so real because I was getting mad, like at the at the defense, like, oh my God, he's thinking like a man, he's thinking like a man, but he's like, no matter what we think about him, he's actually a defense attorney. So whether he thinks the client is guilty or whatever, his job is to defend him. So mm -hmm. if he has to sound stupid or if he has to sound like he's against women, whatever he has to sound like and look like the bad guy, that's just his job. And we got to respect that a defense attorney, he's going to uh, defend you, whether you're guilty, whether he's defending a child molester, whether he's defending whoever he's defending, he's going to defend them because that's his job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you yeah. so much, Bug. Uh, Jay, what's your thoughts? Thank you Hi, Meek. Thank hey. you for um, bringing me up. Um, and thank you for streaming this. Everybody go like this video, please, please, please. This is an exclusive right here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and also thank you for bringing the Zoka and Aya piece because I did not, I was not hip to that, but I knew that Efru got arrested. So is she out? Efru is out. Yeah. They've been making videos every single day. <laughs> Efru's, okay, so Efru, it's Aya, Efru, and who else? Malia. Malia. Those are the yeah. only ones that are left out. That are out, yes. Zoka is okay. currently, from my understanding, still arrested. Okay, so you brought up a good point about having a co-counsel because I think the prosecution is doing a decent job, but I also think he needs support as well because Booker, even though, like, again, like the last caller said, you know, nobody's happy about who he's defending, but I think he's doing a good job defending mm -hmm. Ali Hill so much to the point that he's finding any way to find Janae slipping up to motion for a retrial or a mistrial rather. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little overzealous of him, but he's definitely trying to do his job, especially now realizing since the plea is denied that the sentence is now life. So now he's just like, okay, now the goal is to try to get a mistrial, I would think. Yeah. So I think Janae seems a little nervous, but I think she's doing good. And like I said, I think Booker is preying on her nerves. So I think these witnesses are also going to be very crucial. I came around the scene around like 2021, 2022. So I wouldn't call myself an OG. Like I'm not familiar with um, Brianna, a.k.a. Sarion, I'm not even sure how to pronounce her name. Even some yeah. of the boys who somebody said got arrested, like Loyal Jax. Ju well, I think rest in peace, Loyal. Um, Jax, Juju got arrested. I wasn't even privy to that as well. So um, I think everybody who's coming to take the stand to testify is very crucial. I don't, I think, I think the most unpredictable and witness. You better, you better believe that. The prosecution is going to bring those facts up as well. <laughs> They're oh, going to bring course. up the fact that even while he is incarcerated, he still has control over them and making them do silly decisions mm. as far as bringing in contraband. And that's going to weigh on his character as well. They're going to bring those up, but it just depends on which witness. Because, you know, they, have, they can only bring in evidence with certain witnesses. So they're going to wait till Malia is on the stand. So well, I didn't. Hear, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I didn't hear Malia. I don't remember her name. Is she Kayla? Malia is. Um, hold on, let me see. Perche. I think if, she's Perche. Okay. Wait, wait, no. Is she? No, no Zoka's Perche. That's Aya, isn't? No, no Zoka's Jayon. I didn't. Wait. I don't think I heard Malia's name as far as like 
the people that's going to be listed, and I think that's in everybody's favor. I don't Hold think on, the um, defense it. would right. want Malia to take the stand. My question is, being that, right, Tanisha, I thought Malia, the chat I think... says, no, Malia is Tanisha. That's correct. Yeah, she I is Tanisha. Not hear t- but I, I believe she is on the witness list. Hold on, let me let me get let me get the witness list real quick. Girl, if you got the receipts, <laughs> bring them out. Sorry. Yeah, let me get a joke, the... but no tea, no shade. If you got the receipts, bring them out. Okay, while you're doing that. I didn't hear her name being listed, and I think that would be in... I'm just playing devil's advocate if I was a lawyer. I get mixed I up think... with their names, but once I read them, I'm, I'm I'm. But familiar, also, but I didn't hear her get name the... be mentioned, so maybe for yeah, yours, so like, Chanisha, protection, she's maybe the first, you can even bring her She's up, the first. Uh, she's the first witness, yeah. So it says... Uh, let, me, let, oh. me, let me screenshot it so I could bring it on the screen. Well, Tanisha well, it, DeLay, uh-huh. Porsche Way, Kayla Buck- Buckner... Uh, okay, Jayon, Kayla is at Faru. Okay, Edgar so Jayla is taking the stand, even and, though she's in jail. Uh, Juliana Diaz. She probably was put on the witness list before she probably went to jail. Do you think that she'll be able to take it, even though she she'll be able to take the stand, even though she's in jail? Because I really want to hear Zoka on the stand. I'm sorry, I really do. Um, I I mean, there's a way to to get her on there. So, okay, and I'm not sure about the gentleman that you list. Okay, let me go back to my notes. I'm so sorry, I got distracted. Hold on, let me put up the witness list because they only said we can't mention the victims. Sorry, they, I have they ADHD. not I'm so they sorry. not consider <laughs> victims. So I don't feel like I'm like breaking the court's order by showing this because they said that we can't t- we can't show the witness i mean the victims and they are not they are not alleged victims here so um Mm -hmm. this is the witness list right here it's on the screen okay oh well yeah juliana so velvet will not be taking this no this is the defendant's witness list Oh, okay. The the prosecution's witness list is different. This is this is um just solely Alicio's defendants. These are people that he has testifying. Now, the people that the prosecution has, I can't um you know, they're considered victims, so I can't show them, but these are the people that are not considered victims. So Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, somebody said that Velvet is on the prosecution side. I hope she does right by that. You know, I feel like she sways with the wind sometimes. But I feel like I've said enough for now. All um, right. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, concerned citizen? How you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm pretty good. Been following this tribe, the cult, for probably the entire time. And... What I feel um, right now is that he's being railroaded because they know that she was a person that came and left. She was more like unstable in life and she was part of other cults. So what I wanted to point out is that she accused two other cult members of abuse and she specifically said that Dr. York's son also committed the same act, but she didn't prosecute him. She mentioned that she was afraid of him because he also had a big following. So it shows bias that she would go after one person for this crime, but not another. And then the way that it went down, it's not like he kept her tied up he didn't kidnap her she was basically coming there for a meal and a roof over her head that's pretty much what i wanted to say but i also wanted to commend you on uh the coverage i like it i I just don't like sometimes when you pause it (laughs) because i'll be going with it but i know that's your style so i'm just you know throwing it out there but i appreciate i've been limited to pausing okay i've been saying a lot I be wanting, I be wanting to say a whole lot, but go ahead. I appreciate you uh, covering this because I couldn't find it, you know, on a channel, and I'm already subscribed to you anyway. So, um, well, I'm glad you. Yeah, couldn't that's find what it I wanted you. to say is that I'm glad you couldn't find it and you landed here. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that 
the, the if the lawyer is good, the defense lawyer, he seems educated. He seems like he knows what he's doing. I think he's going to poke holes in it enough to where the jury is going to see that she just a scorned woman. And you can't take away someone's life just because somebody's scorned. I know he didn't treat people right and all of that, but when you look at the word um, consent, it means permission. You have permission for something to happen, right? So she was there. She said that they was nice. She obviously consented to be there. She came back up after the Uber was called. You know what she I mean? Also just said too many that, things. She also said that there was violence and the violence escalated. Okay, but here's here's one thing. We have to remember that it's it, these are not children. So when you have like a mental disorder, then you are childlike. But that's what consciousness is. You are aware through observation. That's literally the definition. To know is to be aware through observation, inquiry, or information. So she was aware because sometimes she'll say in her answers, I don't know if I can send it, but you know, unless you have a mental problem and we can't really protect every grown adult. We don't go out and protect. So the if on the she street. had a mental problem and he took advantage of the mental problem, then what say you on that? Well, I'm saying that's not being alleged. She's a working person she's a mother if she has a mental problem she shouldn't be raising a kid she shouldn't even be having kids because i have a sister who's 51 50 soon as she have a kid they take it this but is you know that there's degrees like just like there's like degrees of people like on a spectrum there's also degrees of whether their their mental uh capacity is as well if that's what you're alleging it doesn't just because you have some type of mental discrepancy doesn't mean that it's the same degree as your sister well no i'm not saying that well i'm, I'm using a real life experience to compare to what i'm watching online this is a virtual experience so what i'm seeing and what i've seen in janae is that she goes from place to place whether it be back with her twin or it go back with another coat. Um, she hasn't done it since she has this baby, but she you see how she manages her relationship with Solar. It's not the best. She doesn't have that um, um, stability in her life. And I think that's what she wanted to be in the cult or the tribe for because they were stable and it also gave her some sort of fame and I think that's what she always clinged to. And her not being queen at that time left her as a scorned woman. We all know that. And I'm not saying that Nature Boy was right. It was just entertainment to me because you see some grown folks just getting treated any type of way because they want to be here. And, and, and all of us that work, we feel like we support our lives so that we don't get mistreated by people out here that's just like, oh, here's a meal. No, I'll take it back. So you have to have some type of wherewithal to go live somewhere where you're being mistreated and then say, they did this to me when you had every opportunity to leave. So what about the people that are vulnerable and they are not as mentally strong? Should they be well, taken advantage of? we have institutions where people can be committed if their family feels that way we're not talking about a people large that sum need of to money be mentally in, mentally um mentally like taken away we're talking about people who are vulnerable and not as strong-minded those people I get just, what you're saying that doesn't mean that they need saying, to be in an the, institution the law is not well granular granular to take care of those type of people it's not granularized to where it takes care of those people. That's what like social security is for. Most of those people, they get a crazy check, right? I mean, but that's not true. Like I was literally watching a Netflix special on, um, it was this case where there was, um, what, what was the case? It was a case on Netflix and they were basically trying to find the perp. <clears throat> and the lead, the lead investigator was autistic, okay? 
and he was autistic police officer and he he was um a fbi agent and he was autistic and he was able to develop a code where he was able to find um the uh ad the ip address of the woman who was using a VPN. It was, um, basically the story was, there was this girl, she was stalking this man. She was trying to, she was like dating this man and she was stalking him. And basically they were trying to figure out who was stalking him because the lady who they alleged to have been stalking him, nobody had heard from her. her. Like she literally disappeared off the face of the earth two weeks after she had gotten a relationship with him. So he got in a relationship with her and then two weeks after he got in a relationship with her, she disappeared. I can't even think of the Netflix name, but it was I recently watched it on Netflix. But um, she disappeared off the face of the off of the face of the earth, and then she started stalking the guy that she was just dating. And like they were trying to figure out, like, dang, like how she started stalking him. So then he got on dating apps, and then he started dating this other woman, and come to find out. The autistic FBI agent found out with an algorithm that he created to pinpoint that the woman who they alleged to be stalking him was killed by the second woman that he started dating. And the second woman that he was dating was the stalker all along. And it was all found out by an autistic agent. So just because you have some type of mental disability does not mean you're incapable of being a productive citizen of society. No, I do not disagree with you on that. I believe that all people should be given, you know, a chance to be productive members of society. Nature Boy was running a, what, what most people in uh, old times would call a grift. He saw a niche in the, the world where he could get on here, clown around, do stuff that he did in the hood, and get money for it and say that he was God, you know, be controversial. And some of the people that fell for that grip may have been of an auti a lower autistic nature. They may have been mentally challenged, but they were also free to where they could have a passport, to where they could go buy a firearm, to where they could apply for a loan, they could apply for uh, all of those uh, benefit government benefits they was getting. So. When you are a person that can do all of those things, you have to have some level of um, uh, responsibility for the things that you get into. And in this case, the victim was someone that I saw as like a, if she was a gang member, she would have been a hood hopper. If she was a, 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 a let's just say a woman of the night, she would have been uh, a woman of the night that, that have a new pimp every other every week. So she was kind of confused in what she was doing, but she was still mentally there. You can't just take away someone's life because you don't like them. And that's what I hear a lot of the people in the so chat. So what did, what did he what so in your opinion, he didn't do anything uh wrong? That not to receive this charge. The, the 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 revenge porn that might be a valid charge however that might also get thrown out just on the technicality because they mentioned that it was posted before and that she had consented to um those videos being recorded when you consent to video being recorded whoever records it is the copyright owner so uh, she, somebody in the chat wanted me to ask you if you're a dr york follower <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm just a, a, a person that's well-versed in looking at, you know, a lot of things from a different angle. As an adult, I'm 45. I used to study with witnesses and I used to be a Baptist. Um, and I, I, I crossed over to, you know, more spiritual. But what I'm, what I'm trying to point out is just logical. I'm just pointing out the logical. We could all have hurt feelings about somebody, but it's not logically that you would take away someone's life. And I'm glad he went to trial because it looked like he was gonna cave in and go for the, the deal. But I'm glad he went to trial because once he's proven innocent and there's P, you do another show on people that's hurt. So your prediction out, so your prediction is he'll be innocent once they I, show I'm, all I'm the predicting evidence? That right now because the witness has already 
flawed her testimony. She said she liked the man. You know what I mean? So if you're a, a person who, who has to look at jury instructions and they say beyond a reasonable so oh, you know that yeah. there's a possibility that so that you know that there's a possibility that you can like somebody but not want to sleep with them. Oh, Lord. I understand that, but we're okay. talking Ooh. about things that she did. Jesus. She she did these things multiple times. She talks about a person that she came to the cult because she liked someone else, but he was the leader. How do you go to a gang and say I want to be a blood, but I like the Crips? Oh my Jesus. No, that's not, mean, like, that's not a good analogy. That's not a good analogy. Okay, so, well, I'm, look, men and women think differently. I'm not going to take up no more time in your show, but All I right, do want to come stay back. Stay on, because I think Tanel wants to rebut you, because she's just all good. On. I do want to um, come back with uh, the men but before, and before that's okay. all I want to say. Okay, but stay on. Don't run. Don't be I'll ducking. Stay on. Don't, don't, duck, on. don't duck no fades now. All oh, right. I ain't ducking. I'm from the hood. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm from LA, South Central. All right, don't duck no face. Um, Tanel, just give me a second because uh, Cislo was here before you, so I'm gonna let her speak and then I'm gonna let you go, Tanel. Uh, go ahead, Thank uh, you, Cislo. Hi, Nick. Thanks hey. for um allowing me to come up on your panel. I love you. I care for you a whole lot. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say um now, I'm not. For people that know me, I'm not I'm not a major boy fan. Um, I've been in that group that was like down for him being taken from five six years ago. Um, but speaking from the perspective of the law and looking at this, uh, unfortunately, from this perspective of the law. Um, Can you turn down whatever you have playing in the background? Not sure if that's you uh, or Tanel. No, no, it might be. Uh, hold on. I just is, closed is the a... door to the loudness in my background. So in case that was me, I just closed the door to that. I'm so sorry, Miss. Okay, go ahead. Okay, yeah, maybe that's what it was because I don't have anything open. Okay, go but, ahead. Um, um, as far as the prosecutor, the prosecution is going to play on the emotions of people, which is why they're going way back in the past because just as the defense when in his opening argument said that you have to focus on what happened on the night of March 24, 2022. Not the things that happened before and or not anything that has happened since then because all of those things that happened historically will play on the emotions of people. The whole purpose of having Velvet um the young lady, um, I can't think of her name that 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 got injured rectally, and all the and, and and Kendra on there is for the emotional content because if you think about it, they don't have anything to do with what happened on the night of the twenty fourth. It is just about well, all you know, about there's a thing called a uh, character reference, so you're able to speak as far as what exactly. type of character somebody has. But it's right, exactly, which is the which is the emotional part of it. Because they're gonna see the, the things that he did to them physically, the abuse that that they encounter at his hand. So it's gonna be the defensive part to rebut everything that they said and they bring apart and to pick apart the testimony. Now the the one testimony has to be most concerned about picking apart is the victim's testimony. My thing is, is that the prosecutor needs to be very, very careful about the leading questions that he gives her because it can allow her to reveal a little bit more than what they really want to reveal. Just as when he asked her about if she ever wanted to have sex with him or not, and she said no. Now, if you go back at some of those videos in the past, she got into it with some of the girls because one of the girls in particular, Malia, because Malia was getting more sex than any of them. And there's a video footage of that. So if they're going to use any of that, then all of that could, you know, damage her credibility. And then they could say, okay, she lied about this. She can lie about everything. So if I were the prosecution, I would not ask certain questions 
that could be leading in an area where it could trick her up to perjure herself. That's going to be the most, her testimony is the most important testimony at this point in the whole trial because she is the one bringing the charges as far as um, the essay or anything like that. So that's my thing. I, I think that the prosecution, if they want to get a conviction, that they got to be very uh, careful with their line of questioning to make sure that they don't lead their witnesses into perjuring themselves. You know what I'm saying? So it won't look like they're just, you know, right, conspiring just to, get a, just to get a solid uh, conviction. But that's all I really want to say right now. I got to get back to my own situation. But I appreciate you. Thank mm -hmm. you for the opportunity. And Miss Tanil, I can't wait to see what you got to say because I hear you over there. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. All right. All right. Tanil, go ahead. Uh, hi, Neek. First of all, I will try not to be long because one of your moderators said earlier, you need to go eat. You were up late. You were up early. Thank you for this stream. I appreciate yeah. it so much. I was not going to tune in because I feel like I don't follow this story enough. There are lots of stories. I don't know about them until I hear you talk about them because I wouldn't care about them as much except to just, I just like to hear what you have to say about it. And I want to be slightly inform informed but not completely annoyed. So mm -hmm. I will follow as much as I can. So I wasn't gonna speak up until some of the things that have to do around SA, around why victims don't speak up, about why it's so difficult to get convic convictions when victims do speak up. I, I just, mm -hmm. and I want to be respectful. Um, as an elder, I'm almost 50, so um, concerned citizen, I will say I'm concerned because you are a man. And this energy around the idea that once a person, not just a woman, but once a person says yes, that they can then never say no, this is false. And the idea that- All right, I'm gonna pause you, I'm gonna pause you real quick, real quick. I'm going to let you have the floor, Tanel. When the trial starts back up, the audio will start back up, so then you'll know, like, to be quiet or whatever. But I will. I you will. can you can address concerns, citizen. Y'all could go back and forth, but I am gonna go grab me something really, really quickly. But I want y'all yes, to still carry, yes. still carry the stream, so y'all have y'all back and forth banter. Okay. And I'll be okay. I'll be right back. But and I promise you, I'm not trying no fades. I like I I like no disrespect, but just honestly, if we would like our community, if we would like us to be better, <clears throat> ideas like this that once first of all, um, I will say in cult dynamics, in order for a cult to thrive, the abusers, the abusers turn the abused into abusers. So whatever whatever you see carrying on, however they act with each other when they're in the midst of that state, trying to vie for his attention um, under the delusion that he is God um, and they want to please their God, whatever they do under that delusion, that, that's, that's the first thing. They are turning themselves into the abusers to become, to curry favor with that boy. Now, I'm also going to say that, uh, no, no, again, no disrespect um, to your religious affiliations, but one of them that you mentioned is rather cult adjacent. So uh, there is an element of conditioning, I think, in how you view this women. I think there's conditioning in how we view black women in general about how we're talking about her, about what she can and what she can't say, about what she did and what she didn't want, who she did and who she didn't want to please. I think that all goes to the misogynoir that is just the black woman's condition. So um, I, I don't want to sigh all over everybody's point. I don't want to talk too long because I'm not paying attention to the chat. Y'all might be done with me. But I just want to say to anybody who's listening, who to anybody who's no, didn't count, you're no, it counts. Don't let nobody tell you. It's a wait, wait, ma'am. Can you please stay no up here? Please count. stay up here. Don't leave. Yes. Okay. Hi, hi. I'm so sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just want to say, hey, Neek. She went uh -huh. to eat. She had to go eat. Uh -oh. um, she like did. I don't know if you caught her last night, but she was on talking about some madness last night. And then she said she woke up at five this morning. Um, so yeah, oh, she went that's to go grab terrible. Something. Yeah, no, she's doing. Um, she's doing a thing. No, it's fine. And hey, concerned citizen, my sister. Uh, I want to 
I'm a brother. Oh, brother. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were somebody else. I want to say to you, ma'am, Miss Chanel. Chanel? Chanel. Did yes, I say Chanel. Chanel. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you so much for saying that. That's what I was coming up here to say. Uh, I have been a, a follow, not a follower, but watching Nature Boy for about six years. And mm. I'm on the opposition. I got a mm. whole crew. Right? A whole crew. We watched the damage. We watched him fighting them like pit bulls against each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We we called the police. We've done a lot of things to set correct whatever it is that he thought he was doing. Mm -hmm. I absolutely a thousand percent agree with what everything you said, ma'am. And I want to say thank you because I was angry listening to other women blaming victims. Mm -hmm. Yes, words were used incorrectly. But mm -hmm. you also have to think we are free thinkers on this yes. planet, right? Yes. Unless yes. you get uh, pulled into a cult, quote unquote, I have to use quote unquote, yes. allegedly. Right. Mm -hmm. um, unless we get pulled into other group, like a group thing kind of situation, then you are not thinking clearly. You're not thinking for yourself either. So when somebody say the R word or mm -hmm. F word, and you're being checked in slaps and say, uh, uh, the word is making love. Yes. They so they you can how you can see that. Exactly. So your your perception is your mm -hmm. perception, but you learn how to not say that, right? Because you might get slapped again or punched again. Yes. I understand it. I understand it. I have a lot of experience in this field. So what I'm saying is do not feel bad for speaking how you feel, ma'am. I am really happy that you are one of the few that is not under this stupid spell of the black man is God, right? And all this kind of fairy thought process. Mm -hmm. We have to look at the world of what it is, honey. Listen, if we connect, we connect. But love don't hurt. No. It's no. not supposed to. Goodness don't hurt. Spirituality doesn't hurt. It's not supposed to. It's alien to what it's supposed to be. That's this right. man is nasty, disgusting. He made people poop outside on trees. He's beaten these women. We've seen this on live. And I'm going to say, not alleged. Yes, ma'am. I apologize. It. So, no, yes, ma'am. A couple Six of things. years. Okay. Yes, ma'am. A couple of things from what you said. The, the depths to which he took them is the depths to which he knows his spirit, his soul, his self. That's yes. what he is. Yes. And as much as he tries to elevate himself over them, that shows how little and how bereft he knows that he is inside. So, that's what the true yes, abuser does. They convince you that your lack of worth. That is truly how they feel about themselves. So that's what they want to put on you. So I just want to say that first. I also want to say that not all yes. abuse is physical. Mental abuse, that's why yeah. when, when Bob Marley says emancipate yourself from mental slavery, that's why that's Ooh. the biggest slavery. That's why the, that's, the, that's the last slavery. You can get out of every you other say thing. It. But if you don't get out of the mental slavery, you feel wherever the hell you were at. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, I yes, do believe that the black man is king because I believe the black woman is queen. However, I believe more importantly yes. than all of that is the kingdom. So if you're actually yes. a leader, you care about the future. You care about the kingdom. Yes. You care about it. So your personal wants, your individual needs, your ego, fuck that. Yes, ma'am. Forget that because what's most important is the whole. So if you don't feel that way, you're not genuinely a king and you're not genuinely a queen. If you don't feel about the kingdom moving on, 
in the best way possible. That's why men get so mad when women have children and then they don't get as much attention as they think that they should get because the woman is actually mm. invested in the kingdom, in the next generation. And yes. that's why when women get a little bit too involved in their children and a little bit too catering and a little bit too um, invested in the babyhood and not the adulthood that the abuse come, come in. that's where both on both sides because you can either yes. baby your child too much and not raise them to adulthood and get mad at the man when they do in a reasonable actually loving yes. way want to impart discipline because discipline is also freedom. Yes. If you are if you are able right. to have your life in check without nobody coming to tell you and ask you about nothing, if you have it done before they come ask you about it, that's the biggest freedom in the world. So, Neek, I see you back. I'm going to quit talking. Um, hey, I just Neek. wanted to say... No, no, no. Miss no. Tenille, Miss Tenille, may I just say... Hey, Miss Neek, I, I watch you all the time. I just want to tell you I love you. I love your uh, perception of things. Um, I might not agree all the time, but I respect it. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Miss Tenille, <laughs> Miss Tenille, I really enjoy what you said because what you said resonates. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. The sad thing I'm seeing from my perspective, ma'am, is uh, very respectfully, is the black women, really particularly black women, that are saying everything negative against the victims. I there's like per sound going personally. In and out. Somebody has like it's going. Uh oh. Is it is. me? I don't know who's it. Who it is? But it's... I don't know. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. So what I'm saying is myself particularly. I have been yeah, it, involved. It is, it is you. Are you are you talking on like a? It headphone? is me. Yeah, it is you. Are you talking? I have an earbud. Yeah, can you take it out? Yeah, sure. Hold on one second. While she fixing the sound, I just wanted to say, out of chaos comes order. Uh, you don't know what love feels like if you've never been hurt. Um, so, what I'm trying to get at is that because men and women have differences of opinions, that brings what we call balance. And if you follow any man in your life as your man, then he's gonna keep you balanced. I know that Nature Boy didn't particularly balance the tribe, but he balanced it in his eyes because he felt that some of these people were using him and he wanted to get something back just like there's some animals that won't take without leaving something in place. They understand balance on that level of nature. So when all of these people were taken and not giving something back, he abused them. And they stayed around because they had more attention than they were used to. That's how I see it, just as an adult. Not as someone that has okay. my feelings tied into it like a movie, or like I'm part of them. Because when you watch TV, sometimes you, you pour yourself into it and you start crying for the characters. And they even mention, hey, we're just characters. So unless we're there, just like in any court of law, unless you was there, it's hearsay. We wasn't there. We are secondhand observers. And only the actual observers know what it was all about, whether they were playing sometimes or whether it was real life, you know? It, it's, I'm not me, sure sorry. if this is true. Can, can you guys, yeah. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Is this, okay. So um, I'm sorry, ma'am, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, and sir, I want to say to you, I have been observing this cult and that's what it is. For over six years, sir, and I've seen. I've probably been watching the, the same amount of time. Okay, and your wonderful. your perception is going to be different from hers. So she's sharing it's, with you what she's observed in her years of watching. Understand. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So what I'm saying to you, sir, and I mean still, no disrespect. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm still hearing that. First, oh wait, I they're back. We did have. 
Okay, well, I'll, I'll drop off and I'll come back. All right. You might need to just, just turn down your background, Eli. Yeah, just I, don't have, I don't have nothing in my background. I promise you, I don't. So, so okay, I'll, Court, I'll, court is back. I'm going to drop you guys down, but don't leave. So my apologies okay. For that. I have now signed it. Um, of course, thank you. So she, we're going to, Jocelyn's going to e file that, and I'll get you guys copies. Um, and then. I t what? Can you just, could we add a couple things? I think you're about to have a Could I add a couple things just for purposes of the record? Yeah. Okay. And having a chance over the break to look at the state's notice, a couple things, and look at the statute, obviously. Uh, 444B, they, they did provide notice in December of last year. Uh, the other acts that they mentioned are battery, aggravated assault by strangulation, and simple battery. That's nothing. That does not do with what she uh, testified to do, what she prescribed with obviously a very severe aggravated assault. Um, it also indicates uh, that the accused would also order other individuals to commit acts of battery and aggravated assault. That's not what she described. She described witnessing him do it. They're showing you that the jury is not in for this argument. I can't get the audio any higher. That's the courtroom's audio level. My audio for them is, is all the way high. So if the sound is low, it's low. That's why I literally have headphones on myself because it's not the loudest, but there's nothing I can do about it. 244404B. Now they shall not be required when the evidence of prior crimes, wrongs, or acts is offered to prove the circumstances immediately surrounding the charged crime motive or prior difficulties surrounding, all right, so the immediate is immediately surrounding the crime or the motive or the prior difficulties between the parties is how I read that. Okay. Yeah, that's not what we have. Okay, well, I don't, I, I think, Mr. Copney, I think you need to tie in the date of the incident because I, I don't think you've established that yet. No, I haven't. Okay. We didn't get to that yet. Right. But I, if I could also just very briefly point the court for a case 
That time, she tried to escape as well, but he tackled her to the floor. And how long before you left, you actually ultimately escaped, how long before that was the time that Malia tried to leave and something happened? Mm -hmm. Malia tried to leave another time, um, uh, possibly a few days before. Yeah, she tried to leave it possibly a few days before my leaving, my escaping. Any questions? No questions. Okay. All right. There is, since there is no bright line rule with respect to the timing, um, well, let me let me ask you this: Did these incidents you observed um, affect your decision to leave or not to leave or when to leave? Absolutely. Yes. How? Um, I was scared. If you try to leave, he would either try to abuse you, shun you, or have the cult members abuse you. I was definitely scared. That definitely affected my decision. Okay. I can follow up. Yep. Okay. I, and I think, like, I know we haven't gotten to it in your testimony yet, mm -hmm. but the night that you tried to leave, when you were in the room with the defendant, did these incidents of violence involving Malia, were they in your mind? Yes. And also, I was also getting abused. So, absolutely. Okay. And what role did they play in your decision making that night? Um, I would say that remembering the violence that constantly went ahead in cult, all constantly, um, made me scared to even try to move, but at the same time, I decided to go because I needed to get out. I want, I wanted to so badly get out. So yes, witnessing those things kind of made me feel like maybe I shouldn't do anything, but at the same time, it made me uh, better off want to go even more. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be around the violence. Based on everything I heard, I do think this testimony qualifies as intrinsic evidence and is not subject to the 404B notice requirement. And I also specifically find that the um, while it may be somewhat prejudicial, the um, thank you the probative value of the evidence outweighs any prejudicial effect. Okay. So. Yeah, just for purposes of the for purposes of the record, we can just mark as continuing objection to that. Absolutely. Thanks, Judge. Okay. All right. Anything else before we bring the jurors in? Just to avoid a similar issue, is there going to be a timing component to the court's consideration of this type of evidence? In other words, if there's evidence that's older than this, as it would be from this witness, is I that think something it would be appropriate to I I think it would depend on in addition to the time, what how it affected if it didn't have any bearing on the witness's decision, then no, it's not going to come in. Okay. Maybe so, if we just offered it before, so yeah. we could try to I think that's, 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 right. that's, that's a good that's idea. Well, we'll do. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's not a, there's no bright line rule, but it has to have some effect on the decision one way or the other. Okay. Um, let's bring the jurors in then. You both have copies of the order. We're, get, we're getting that evolved. So the record should be perfected. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so they're going to allow it. Basically, for those of you who are just coming in, they were considering whether or not they were going to allow the testimony of him beating Malia. So she basically testified, and she started to testify to the fact that he had whooped her with a belt, like 100 to 50 to 100, like, beats with a belt. And... They defense felt like that was um, not relevant and they felt like that that shouldn't come in and that they could not unring the bell if they took it out and they declare or they um, motion for a mistrial. 
the judge basically denied the mistrial and is going to allow it. She says she feels like it is uh, more probative than uh, prejudicial. I think that's what she said. And so they are about to bring in the jury. Janae is going to continue her testimony. The prosecution has about 30 to 40 more minutes of cross-examination of her. I mean, of direct examination of her. And then after they finish with direct, which he said would be about 30 to 40 minutes, then they're going to go into cross-examination. And so cross-examination will be Eligio's defense attorney and so on and so forth. My prediction is she stays on the remainder of the day, and I believe in my prediction, I think she'll be on tomorrow too. But we'll see how it goes. This judge seems to be very prompt. She said that they were going to come back at um, 1.30. They came back very close to it, and she seems very prompt and swift. So I'm liking the way that she's handling the courtroom so far. All right, go ahead. You may continue with the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. May I think you were describing an uh, incident that involved the defendant and one of the other women? Yes. Okay. Um, what was that? I was describing a time when I personally witnessed Mr. Olivia Bishop beating and whipping Maria, which was the queen. He... Um, used a belt, a leather belt, to whip her over 50 to 100 times. And what, what had led up to this? He accused her of having some kind of attitude or not involving herself around the group as me and Mr. Bishop was conversating around everyone. And all of a sudden, you know, um, once he said, oh, I know what to do with that, because she was basically telling him she, there was nothing wrong with her. Um, she starts springing out the door, down the stairs, naked, um, because she, she was nude, and um, he chased after her and tackled her to the floor. And... You, I'm sorry, you can go ahead. Okay, so he tackled her to the floor, and he started to um, bring her back upstairs, after she she was excuse me after she was stopped by reaching to the front door she was almost out the door she was about to go outside naked to avoid getting beaten by Mr. Bishop and um, he took her back upstairs and he told us to go off with our business and about two to ten minutes later he calls all the women back inside the the bathroom or the room his master bedroom and he ordered Maria to kiss our feet and to tell us we're sorry, to tell, tell us she's sorry. Okay. And how about how long before you ultimately left the group was that incident? That was about a, week, a, a month, a month before that. Okay. And in that month before, so after the incident you just described, but before you left, mm -hmm. were there any other instances of Malia trying to leave? Yes. Okay. Are there any that stick out in your mind? Um, yes. There was one time she was so upset um, because he was picking on her again and she started talking back to him. And this one particular time, I was the one filming this time, and she um, um, got really upset and started screaming um, to the top of her lungs when she went outside because he had ordered her to go. He said, leave and leave, and he pushed her to the ground. And then afterwards, she went outside, started screaming to the top of her lungs, smashed a mirror on the ground, and um, he ordered us to go get her. Um, I know I was one of the people that went to go get her. <coughs> However, well, who smashed the mirror? Did Malia Malia, smash the mirror? Okay. Malia smashed his favorite mirror on the ground. And then you all went and retrieved her and brought her back to the house? No. Um, she decided to make her own way, leave that, that day, because um, we were all um, ordered to go get her and beat her up. Okay. And so what happened? So uh, we went to go get her. Um, I tried to hug her and let her stay down, like, don't go anywhere, please don't go. 
Then I got angry with the rest of the women and I started to call her names and I started to tell her that you're not, you're not uh, listening and you're, um, I started to tell her that she is um, basically regurgitating what we, a Negro bishop would tell us all the time to say um, and what he always says. And when you said that you were ordered to go get her, who yes. did the ordering? A Negro bishop. We did everything he said to do. And did you, were there ever in that, that time frame shortly before you, you left the group, mm -hmm. were there any other times that you observed the defendant to order other people to use violence against somebody? Yes. Um, another time that we were in the islands um, traveling in Puerto Rico, uh, he um, initiated a fight. Was that the last time that you were, the, were you in Puerto Rico that last time? Mm -hmm. Okay. So make, make sure you say yes or no. Yes. Please. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so you were traveling in Puerto Rico. I'm sorry for interrupting. What happened? Um, he had initiated a fight between um, Maria, Efru, and I. He told me to basically scare Maria into submitting to him. Um, but he basically was going to get Efru to beat up Maria. Okay. And had he ever been violent with you personally? No. I want to take you to the night of March 24th, 2022. Do you remember that day? March 24th. What was happening on that day? On that night, um, we had, was having a party. We were having a party for, uh, 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 excuse me. We were having a party because uh, a guest came over. Her name was Fauna. And around this time, uh, Fauna was a mem not a member of the cult, but she was just a friend of a Negro bishop. Okay. And this night, I decided to, you know, make friends with Fauna. I haven't, everybody else knew her. I didn't know her per se, and I wanted to basically, you know, talk to her and um, just get to know her and just tell her about the knowledge that we talk about. And I, that's why I thought that Legal Bishop would like, you know, whenever someone comes in, and they don't know what we're teaching, we would teach them that, you know? So that's what I was doing with Fauna. And long story short, he basically um, gathered everyone in one room, and he basically told me that I was a leech. Who is he? A legal bishop. Okay, why was he upset? Because I was giving a lot of attention to this Fauna woman. Okay, so who all did he gather in a room? Everyone that was up in the cult. Okay. And he st what happened when he started that talk? Um, so basically he tried to just initiate that to the people and try to tell, show them that I was just this person that comes around and drain people's energy when that wasn't the case at all. I was definitely just trying to be friends with a woman that came in because no one else was showing her that much attention. Uh, she was, uh, but the girls was standoffish because which um, which girls? I'm sorry. The the women that he calls his wives. Okay, so other members of the group were standing on which towards her. The women, of course, but okay. the, she was more. The men were more friendly. Okay. So I, I I just decided to be from friends with her or just get to know her and everything and teach her what we was learning. Um, he told me I was a leech and basically got the whole cult to turn against me basically saying that I was just someone who came in and um, does whatever she wants or just talks to people and drains them of their energy. And then he, um, I was basically trying not to talk back to him because whenever you talk back to him, he gets really upset and is prone for you to get hit or abused. So I tried not to talk back to him, but I was trying to let him know that I didn't agree with what he was saying. 
And um, I, didn't, I remember trying to stop myself from saying something, but I made a face because I'm in my heart on my sleeve. So he sees, his, he sees my face and he basically um, initiates or tells Zoka, which is one of the women that he called and deems his wives, um, it's okay, it would basically be okay to hit me at any time. He was basically saying, well, if Zoka, now if Zoka hits you, then, you know, then, you know, basically he was saying something like those words. Okay, and, and so was everyone still in the room at this point? Yes, everyone was there. Okay, and how, okay, and so what happened next then at that point? Um, after that, after he basically told Zoka it would be okay to hit me, I basically was, I said something else as in like, I'm basically innocent of that. I don't know what he's talking about. And Zoka hits me um, on the back of my head, back of my neck. And I turned around and I told her like, like I didn't do anything. And she hits me again. Now at this point I get up because I'm hit, I'm struck, and um, the women got up when I got up. So I was basically being surrounded by the women. So that would be Zoka and who else was there? Do you, do you remember? Zoka, Malia, Efuru, Aya, and Sheba. Sheba. And so they get up, and are you still standing at this point? Um, at this point, I am, and um, then I got pushed back by Efru. She uh, pushes me back to the wall okay. and tells me to get on my knees, so I got on my knees. Okay, and what happened after you got on your knees? After I got on my knees, um, Sheba, was ref Sheba was talking whatever she was saying to me, and I smirked at her because I just thought it was, she wouldn't be able, she w me and her had a good relationship, so I knew that she was being fake and phony in that moment, just to appease to the king. Um, but so I smirked at her, and then Zoka smacked me really hard. After Zoka smacked you really hard, what happened next? After after Zoka smacked me really hard, he Malikio Bishop was basically saying that I deserved it. When you say basically saying, do you remember like, what, what was he saying that made you get that impression? <coughs> he was basically, he said, he said that they should have jumped me. He said he, that they should have jumped me from the moment I stepped through the door and how I was gonna be a slave to the, to the cult, and don't worry anybody, she's going to be kissing her feet tomorrow, and basically just down, he was just calling me names and all these other things. And after he said those things, what, what did you do next? I sat there, I sat there and took it. I had nothing else to say because he, they told me not to look at him. I tried to look at him and they told me not to look at him. So I looked at him. What made it end? Excuse me? What made it end? He decided to just go off for his party. Bon is still there. So everybody gets up and leave. And they told me to stay, sat there, to sit there and stay. And I sat there and stayed and I, and I thought, of, I, I contemplated on leaving that, that moment. And so, as you're thinking about leaving, what, what was like the next thing you did? I sat there, and he, and Alivia Bishop came in, and, and um, he told me, are you okay? He asked me if are you okay, and I said no. And he said, well, why don't you just go? Go pack up your things and let's go, and make it, nice and simple and clean. Basically, don't don't make anything dramatic. And at that moment, is I wanted to leave at that moment. I didn't want to get hit anymore. Um, 
I said, okay. And I told him, I need my white bag and I need my pink bag. And he allowed his, his uh, disciples, his male disciples, to fetch my things from the shed. I went upstairs um, and started to pack my, my clothes because I didn't know what else to do. I don't know where I'm going. I just thought wherever I would be going, I would just need clothes. My whole life was in that house. I, I don't have any, anything to my name or anything but less $6. I was gonna make it happen and make it work to where I could just, just go. Um, so there was two women in the room. Her name, their names were Sheba and Zoka. They were in there while I was trying to pack up clothes. Sheba starts saying, well, you're gonna pack up all your things? You ain't ish. Excuse my language, I'm not gonna curse. But that's what they what she said. and. Um, I didn't know what to t how to take it because yes, the women, all the women wore my clothes, every single one of them. So I didn't know what to do other than to just take something. So I just said, I'm not gonna take all of them. And I just, I didn't say this to them, of course. I said it to myself that I'm not gonna take all my clothes and I just start packing. And were you able to pack some of your things and prepare to leave? Yes, um, but, but not without a fight. Um, the women, started to in, in, initiate a fight with me again. Um, I was hit again by Zoka. And, and was that them acting on their own or was that, do you know if the defendant had anything to do with that? Well, of course they want to appease the king so they're going to basically pick on me and make sure that they know that, oh, I'm, I look at me, Babaji, I'm going to torment this woman for you just because she turned on you. And he always would tell the women, if someone turns on me, you turn on them. Okay. And at some point, were you communicating with a, a friend of yours that was outside of the group at this point? Yes, I was making my arrangements to leave with a woman named Kelly. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know who else to call or anything, so I messaged her and she said I could stay at her art studio. And between the two of y'all, how were you going to physically leave and get to the art studio? Like, what was the plan for that? Well, um, I didn't want to, you know, release the location of the cult because I felt I still felt loyal to them. So I got an Uber to go to a CVS. It was only four dollars. I had six dollars. So I got the Uber to a, a nearby CVS, so she would then get an Uber to me from that CVS to wherever she was she was staying. Okay. And did you order that Uber that night? Yes, I did. Okay. And did the Uber show up that night? Yes, he did. And by the time he showed up, did you have your things mostly together where you were ready to leave? Absolutely, yes. So what happened at that point? Well, before I left, uh, the crew, you know, everyone gathered around me, and I got on my knees to show respect to the king. And I told, um, he was telling me all these nasty things about how I'm washed up, I ran through, um, I'm stupid for leaving, I should just stay. Um, all these nasty, horrible names, callings, and just telling me how dumb I am for leaving. And I just told them, I was, I'm taking it all, like, okay, I get it, I don't want to stay here anymore. Um, then, um, after that, they went off with their business and everything of that nature. The women started to terrorize me some more by taking a charger out of my hands. Um, after they took a charger out of my hands, I tried to go talk to Baba Shi about it because I thought he would, would have gave me back my charger at least. Um, even though I was still being bullied by everyone. And um, I was sent back downstairs, uh, trying to go back upstairs to, uh, to Olivia Bishop um, by Maria. So I went back downstairs and my Uber was outside. So I went outside with no shoes on because I just thought that I just need to quickly get out and just, I can take put on my shoes in the, in the car. Um, when I got to the Uber and I was and I opened the door and I was almost inside. I got, I heard a call from the door. It was Zoka. Zoka said, 
God is calling, will you answer the call? And at this point, because I wanted to show my respect before I left, I went back inside to say goodbye. And what were you thinking at that point? I just wanted to leave on good terms. During the session of the name calling and the everything, he was telling me how much of a troll I'm going to be. He said, well, you're going to leave and talk bad about the coup, and you're going to be a troll. And I didn't want these people to see me as a bad person. And I didn't want to talk bad about them at all. So I wanted to show that I can leave without being this troll that he said I was. So I wanted to leave on good terms. And what did you tell the Uber driver? I told him, please don't leave. I'll be right back. I will make this quick. Please do not leave. And what happened next? I went up the stairs to say goodbye to Ezekiel Bishop. Because before, I was able to say goodbye in three times. And when you got upstairs, where was the defendant? He was at the at his, at his master room bed door. And did you go into that room? No. Okay, what happened? He uh, basically was saying, are you leaving now? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, I love you. And I said, I love you too. And what... And you were still out in the hallway at this point? Yes. And what happened next? We hugged, and I was making my way back downstairs. He says, Natiri, and he grabs my hand, and he takes me into the other room. And as he's taking me into the other room, I'm crying out, no. I'm telling him, no. I gotta go. My room is outside. Okay. And what is he saying? I just want to talk to you. Okay. And he goes, and we go into the other room. And what happened in the other room? He basically was trying to convince me to sleep with him. And what did you, how did you respond to that? I said, no. I said, I don't want to. I kept rejecting him, actually. And he kept telling me, let me come inside you one more time. And I asked him, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to come inside me one more time? Basically meaning to ejaculate inside of me. He said, to give me a baby. So I can come back. And at that point, you got you're both in the other room. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And how was like? Were you all still hugging, or where were your bodies compared to one another? Um, he had he had my legs around him. And did you ask him to leave? What is that sound? Did, did you try to leave at that point? Yes. I, I, I would say no. Were you able to leave? No. No. I was able to go. Um, I felt like I couldn't. I felt powerless. And Ooh, I wish I could see the jurors' faces. He was telling me that he wanted to. <laughs> he wanted to just do it one more time, just one more time, one more time, one more time. Why did you feel like you couldn't leave in that moment? Um. I felt like I couldn't leave in that moment because I felt restricted. He had his arms around me and my my legs around him. And I felt like I couldn't resist him anymore. And I said I kept telling him, no. And so after I kept telling him no, and he says he wants to just do it one more time, he lay, I lay down on the floor. He lays me on the floor. And then after that, because I'm telling him no so many times, he told he said he puts his hands up. And he told me, I'm not gonna rape you. And when he said that, I froze. He's never 
He's never said that word with me before. He's never even told me he's never gonna rape me before. So when he had said that, I froze. I didn't know what to do. And at this time, he was already kissing me on my neck. And already, like, already trying to get me aroused. So I said to myself in my head, if he's saying one last time, and I didn't want to be raped. So I needed to think about it like that. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this one more last time. Not to him. I said and to myself, I'm going to do it one more last time. And he itched in and he said, okay. I said, okay. So I said, okay. After he said, okay, and I said, all right, okay, he went ahead and proceeded to do the He started having sex at that point? Mm -hmm. and yes, yeah, I think he yes. And what happened next? My body started to shut down to him. I felt like my body started to reject him, like my vagina started to push him off. So I, after some thrust and after some time of him getting his pleasure, I pushed him off and my body started to vibrate or shake vigorously, very much, a lot. And, and after that- Man, I wish we could see his face. Said, to me, oh, that's not fair. You get your nut, and I don't get mine. So he took my, he took me shaking as an orgasm, and I couldn't tell him that it wasn't. I couldn't tell, I could, I couldn't tell him that it wasn't a thing. And so after that. He proceeded to turn me around. After he thought I had an orgasm, he said he wanted to hit it from the back. So he starts to thrust from the back. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, I, I'm crying to myself, but I don't want him to see me cry. So I just let him finish so I can go, go. I wanted to go. So after that, um, after he was done and he finished and he completed the submission with ejaculating inside of me, he um, started to proceed to get up to the door and to go. And I told him, I still want to leave. I don't feel welcome here. I don't think anyone likes me. And he interrupts me and says, shut up. You're my bitch. You're my property. You're not going anywhere. You're not going nowhere. That's the exact words. So mm -hmm. after, go ahead. Did he call you his property earlier in that encounter in the room? No, not, he would say, I'm his, like you know you're mine. During the time when he was trying to seduce me and arouse me, he would say, you know you're mine, you know you don't want to be me. And did you want to, have sex with Luigi Bishop that night? No. I felt like I was convinced to have sex with him and I was manipulated to have sex. Did you feel like you were going to be able to leave that room without saying okay? No. I, I don't even, after he closed the door, there was no going back unless you give him what he wants. And after you give him what he wants, maybe, you get what you want, but no, he always gets what he wants. And how many times do you think you told him no before you said okay? Like you just had to. I don't. So many times I couldn't count how many. I couldn't even count if I told you. Powerful, powerful you testimony. Feel like if you were to call out for help in that house that evening, that you, someone would have come and assisted you? Absolutely not. No. No.
How did you eventually leave? After he was done and he's holding me on his puppy in his ditch and I'm not going anywhere, I hang it on. I was scared because of the sternness, the sternness in his voice. So I had to plot in my mind to leave. So I told him, I'm gonna have to take a shower. And he said, okay, and he left the room and I was able to pick out some clothing, go to the, sh the bathroom. But I contacted Kelly, one of my friends, and told her, cause she was, at this point, I'm looking at my phone and she was messaging me and calling me back to back and I didn't get to see it. So I told her, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to sneak out. And um, I went to the bathroom and I told her to contact my mother, but, told, but don't tell my mother to, to call me. Don't, don't call me because I don't want any evidence of me trying to escape. Why were you concerned about evidence of you trying to escape? Because if they saw that, I don't know what would happen. I thought I was going to get hit or scolded, shunned more, talk bad on something. I, I, I just didn't want them to find out I was trying to leave. Okay, so you're communicating with Kelly that evening, is that right? Yes. And did you eventually formulate a plan or? Yes. Um, what I was told that? Her, I told her I was going to leave when everyone was asleep. And I told her I'm, I'm going to try to wake up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the a.m. and leave that night. And I'm gonna set an alarm. I thought I told myself I was gonna set an alarm. Um, and yeah, that's what, that's what I remember. Were you ultimately able to do that? Um, set an alarm. Leave that next morning. Uh, I was able to get up and go leave the next rising because I I set up for three to four a.m. But I overslept and it was nine a.m. at this time and everyone was sleeping and. Uh, I basically the night before I made it seem like I was okay with everything and you know smiling people's faces and but I was definitely packing one bag at least one bag not two but one um, just to leave and um, I grabbed that big suitcase and I tiptoed I tiptoed down the stairs but before I did that I I went around and looked if everyone was asleep only one person was up and it was Zoka she was in the shower, in the shower. So I took the wrong the, the house to see if everyone was asleep and they were and I went down the stairs with my big suitcase and I told and I went outside and I rushed to the Uber and I told the Uber priorly to please be quick. And were you able to leave in the Uber? Yes, I was able to leave in the Uber. And where did you go? Uh, the Uber took me to a, um, he was really kind. He took me to a, um, a, 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 a Waffle House, about 20 minutes away. Um, and um, after I ate, because I was very hungry, I didn't eat that night at all, um, I went to the studio where Kelly was. Did you immediately report anything via being assaulted or false imprisonment or anything like that to the authorities? No, I did not. Why not? And we was always told by a media bishop that the government was the devil and the police was not going to help us in any way and we never really got to go to the government for anything. Um, and I thought that this was hell. So I didn't really trust many people. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Jen, Mr. Ducker. I, I you have? Okay. Already, just All right, thank you. Go ahead, Ben. Okay. <laughs> I'm showing you several documents. They're Mark State's Exhibit 1 and the page numbers. Do you recognize what those are? Yes. These are the messages I sent to Kelly the night that I escaped. Okay. 
And so do those span from the evening of March 24th into the next day? Yes, I see you. So far, she sounds believable. She sounds like she is. If anybody needs to get closer to see um, a couple at a time, can, or you can. Uh, Come on, we can see the screen now. Lean forward, whatever you need to. I just want to make sure everybody can see it. Especially the, um, the juror with the eye issues. Oh my God. Sorry? Are the, can't, the televisions in the Yeah, they're not listening. We should be able to see the evidence. There are messages Hello. on the left side and the right side. Um, are yours the ones on the left? Are those the ones you're sending? Yes. Okay. Any other courtroom will show like the exhibits without showing the other parties. Like, why are we not able to see the messages? you to reach out to Kelly? I was hit and abused and I want to be Sure, I'm sorry. I, that was a very broad question. Why did you choose Kelly as the person that you wrote, reached out to? Um, uh, I didn't think to call my immediate family. Um, there was a law against that in Carbonation, so I felt sick. I felt a loyalty to that for some reason, or I just didn't know who else to contact. She was the first thing I seen. And you, I don't know what just happened. Yeah, Hold on. Now I'm getting irritated because we should be able to see the evidence now. Come on now. I understand not seeing her, but we should be able to see the evidence. Carbonation is the group and the cult that I was involved in with Amelia Bishop and the others. Janae, if you look at the, the TV screen, is this what are you and Kelly discussing at this point in the conversation? It should be on the screen in front of you as well. Yes. Janae, turn around. Huh? There's a screen in front of you. That might be easier for you to see. Sorry. That's fine. We're, we're discussing um, how to Google Live, how to uh, cut uh, the spot that I told you about. you say twice I'm sorry what's happening on your end at this point at this point um
Yeah. You, when you're changing yeah. pages, just let them know which one you're going to. And I mean, what is? Ha do you remember what was happening? Yes. Here, um, when I said, "Okay, I'll be there in two minutes because my ride just got here," that's when my Uber pulled up, and when the next line, when I said, "I'm sorry" to her, that's after I was assaulted. Miss that Uber left at some point during that, right? Yes. Switch to page seven. Is she just reading all these texts? What, or are you asking her questions about them? No, I, I, there's only a few that I actually have questions okay. about. I think I'm just entering them into evidence and was okay. playing through them just in case the jury okay. wanted to read all them. Right. Unless the court wants me to read them out loud. But I mean, this is fine. I just wasn't sure what we were doing. Yes, Your Honor. activity going on in the cult and tribe, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't looked at as too on my phone to where it looked like I'm trying to escape or plan something. So I had to tell her, uh, I have to go soon, so don't text me that basically. I'm going to delete all my messages. And shower or what's going on at that point? You texting her in the shower. Why are you texting her in the shower? Like, I was afraid sometimes people just walk in the, the bathroom because we don't lock doors. So I just wanted to make sure I had that privacy inside the shower and hiding it. still that same evening or was that when was that when did that happen it happened while I was in the shower okay sort of the cutoff between the night before and the next morning? Yes. Okay. <coughs> after you left the group, a couple of days after you left the group, did you become confused by messages you received? What do you mean? Did you get messages from folks online that made you confused? Yeah, I, um, I was, so basically I went on uh, YouTube and saw certain things on that people were saying that I may have not left because about a week and a half, I would say probably 
week later. Um, people were still talking about how I may have been still at the tribe because um, so some stuff. So I text my um, friend and she let me know that it was porn based on my Okay. And did you figure out where that was? Yes, it was on Twitter. And were you familiar with the account that posted it? Yes, it was a Video Vicious account. And did you consent to those videos being posted on Twitter? No. Did you know those videos existed? Yes. And did you consent to there being f the filming of them originally? Originally, yes. How did it make you feel to know that those videos were out there? Humiliated. All right, all right. So the court has muted the the audio. Um, so just uh just quick housekeeping for some of you guys that are just now coming in. The judge sent out a notice to to media who has access to the stream that number one, we cannot show the victim. They cannot show the victim. We cannot mention names of victims or things that they don't mention here. So I'm following the court rules. They're not showing anything. You can't find another angle. Contents of this disc the other day. Yes. Make sure you speak in your microphone, please. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. It's my fault as well. Um, does it contain contain a fair and accurate depiction of the videos that were posted of you? Yes. Can I attend your states too? Any objection? No objection. Judge. All right. So she, she identified the video. So. Okay. She she said she saw it before, and that was accurate. Yeah, that's accurate. All right, stage two is admitted. Permission to publish. Um, yes, and if we just want to Just instruct folks, um, this is the... All right, so I just emailed one of the correspondents the email that I that um, is sending me access, and I just basically asked if there was a way for us to at least be able to see the evidence. Now, I know that people want to see more. They want to see angles, want to see all this. I have no control over that. Um, we just have to go with the court's ruling on what they allow, what they show, and go from there. Um, we're not able to identify certain victims. So even though I know who the 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 witness is on the stand, like I'm not going to be posting her pictures on here. If you follow the case, then you know who it is. I'm not going to do any of those things like that. I'm not going to do the research for you. We're just watching the um stream as it plays out. Basically what happened was they had a brief intermission. So they put this up when it's off the record, like when they are probably like doing like a sidebar or, you know, something like that that's like off the record. Then they put this up right here. So right now it's kind of like a brief intermission. So that's what happened right now. So that's why I'm talking. Um, but my cash app is Nika Night 12. Um, 
why are you asking me, should you watch me or somebody else? Now I'm about to put you on timeout for 24 hours because now you're being a troll. Watch who you want to watch. Why, why are you asking me who to watch? <laughs> Whoever you said is live, they're not going to show you nothing different than what I'm showing you. There's not going to be no different angle. Only thing that will be different is the commentary. But watch who you want to watch. Like, why Why are you asking me, should you watch me or somebody else? Who to Watch who you want to watch. I don't even know who that is. Like, weird. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so shout out to all of you guys. Let me see if the people backstage have anything to say. Because um, as soon as they start back up, we'll start back up. Let me put the link in the chat. As soon as I hear that they speaking, then, you know, we're going to get right back on to the court stream. But right now, they are off stream, so. Somebody is streaming my live. Um, oh, okay, I don't know. Um, I don't know about what, what y'all talking about. But anyways, uh, this is the link right here. They're streaming my live or they're streaming the sh the direct stream. I don't know which I don't know which one y'all saying. But anyways, um Tanel, it says your device is not connected. So you have to uh click off and come back in. It says your your device is not connected. But what I will say so far is um you know, the juries at all of the cases that I've set in and I've listened to when the testimony of the victim sounds very strong, concise. It sounds like they're really reliving it while they're telling the story. Those types of testimonies have a lot of weight. Now, the defense attorney can come through and he can completely obliterate her in cross. But so far, she sounds like she's reliving it. And as she tells her story, she's you can like kind of feel like you're almost there. You know, she's giving you a visual of her leaving out, getting hit, coming back in. She's giving you like a visual of her standing in the hallway, him in the room, her laying down like she's so descriptive, so detailed, so concise, so on point that I believe her testimony is going to weigh very, very heavily with the jury, especially being that there was a lot of people who were a victim of S.A. or had people around them that were a victim of S.A. And even though they say that, you know, oh, this won't, you know, hinder my ability to be fair and objective, people are human, and humans have biases. And with your bias, you have certain biases based on your experiences. And so... Being that she was so descriptive of, you know, how she felt and how everything played out and leading up to it, there are women who have been in those situations and can just put themselves in her shoes. And even though they're not supposed to make it about themselves or make it, you know, the rules say not to make it, you know, personal, but you're human. And when you are human, you have biases. You have things that you, you know, make you think objectively. And I think that her testimony will resonate with a lot of women who are on that jury. Now, when she did her interview, there was a lot of contradictory things that she said. And so we'll see how Call that me. plays yeah. out. No. They're back. I'm going to get to y'all in a second, but they just came back. So just stay there. Don't click off. Did you, what did you do in response to learning that those videos had been shared? Like, 
Did you call the police? Did you? Yes. Uh, what did you okay. I called. I called the police, uh, and then I had to go to the station to file the report. And when you met with the police officer to file the report, um, I guess what did you report had happened? I reported that a boyfriend, because that's what I called him at the time. I didn't know what else to call, how I was to describe what we were to outsiders or whatever. Um, I said my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend, uh, was a word for me. Okay. And at some point, did you participate in an interview online? Yes. And who was that interview with? It was with Chantel Coleman, her name was The T. Um, what is The T, for those of us that aren't familiar with that? She documents <coughs> the whole, basically, bringing awareness to it. Okay. What was her name? Chantel Coleman. The T, basically, is on YouTube, The T. The T, as in the letter T? As in T E A T. Okay. And about how long after you left the group was your interview with the T? I would say a week and some days, possibly, um, because I went to a spa after the after this art studio I went to a spa, twenty four hour spa. Was. Was it before or after you filed the report about the revenge porn with the police? Uh, it was after. Okay. Um, and when you were talking to the T, how long did that interview last? Six hours. And was it just you and the T, or were there other people involved in the discussion? It was other people involved in the discussion. And did that, okay. At some point during the course of the interview, did you provide a description of your last night with the group? I did. And how did you describe what happened in that interview? I called it, whatever he did to me, I called it making love. And why did you use like those that word or those words to describe what had happened? In the cult, there's a lingo that we go by, and he switches words around. Um, like, go into the bathroom, we would say, go into empty my cup, or go into pot. So I remember one day, and this was actually caught on film, after I referred to intercourse as the F word, he instructed us to call intercourse making love from that point on. And after that, I, that's all I did. And do you feel like the way that you describe what happened to you to the T accurately reflected what happened that night? No. Why not? I felt like I was still under the influence of Olivia Bishop in the tribe. I felt like I had some kind of subconscious loyalty to them, and I felt like I wasn't describing it to its fullest capacity. Were you, did you feel like you were still trying to process what had happened yourself? Yes, I didn't know what to do. I was very confused around that time. I was very confused about where I was going to go, what happened to me, why it happened, why that was happening to me, where am I, am I in hell, I'm in heaven, where am I, who am I? Without the tribe, I didn't know where I was. Without the tribe, I didn't know where I would be. So I didn't know what to do but to just speak the truth like everyone else did. During your time in the group or in the tribe, did you participate in videos or social media postings or lives on several occasions? During the 
course of some of those videos, did you say, I guess, feel and say things that were very positive about the defendant in this case? I don't remember. Would you say that there were things about the tribe and the group that were good sometimes? Yes. have one more question. Sure. You know, do you see the person who did this to you in court today? Yes. If you would please identify him uh, by pointing at an article of clothing. Instead of pointing, can you just describe what the individual is wearing? He's wearing a blue party jacket. We ask the record to reflect the witness has identified the defendant. Any objection, Mr. Booker? No objection. All right, the record will so reflect. So other questions I have for the witness at this time? All right. Before we do cross, anybody need a break? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, ten minutes. My promise will only be ten minutes. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, thank you so much for those of you who have sent in cash apps. I appreciate you guys so, 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 so much. Um, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? They, we got a 10-minute break. So for 10 minutes, I'm going to allow you guys on stream. 10-minute um, break, 10-minute break. Uh, Sandra Faye, hey, how you doing? Hopefully you're there. Hey, I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> um, thank you for letting me on. Um, one, one thing that I just wanted to say, and it was kind of disgusting to read some of these comments in your chat, if someone is physically restraining you at any point during your interaction with them, um, and then they ask you for consent and you say, okay, that is not consent because that is coercion. Even if they say, oh, I'm not going to do this, but they've already put forth a physical presence against you, um, already put forth a threatening environment, then there is no way for you to consent because that is duress. They, they say the same thing when it comes to signing prenups and you're, um, you know, under a situation where it's like you're being forced to do it. They would say you that that prenup doesn't hold up in court because of duress. The same thing is with her saying, OK, when she was in a physically threatening environment, um, such as what she described. So I just wanted to say that that the, the people in the comments saying that that's not great because um, because um, she said, okay, you need to understand if you're in a threatening, hostile environment, there's no way for you to consent because you know, you're, you're thinking fight or flight. Okay. And in a situation like that, it's, it, it is dangerous to say, no, it's dangerous to fight back because if she tried to fight back and he physically assaulted her even further, then that's even bigger problem. So, you know, sometimes our brains just rationalize, let me just try to get this over with so I can get out of the situation quicker. And it's still not consensual at that point. All right, uh, stay there, stay there. Concerned citizen is going to disagree. So <laughs> go ahead. You already know I was here to disagree. Um, I the reason know. I disagree is because when I was coming up, I always was told if a person says no, it means no. So how do you say no? I mean, how do you say yes or okay? And it means no. That's very confusing. So so I'm, I only think I'm gonna let <clears throat> I, I I I agree to disagree because I don't want to argue, but I'm just trying to understand like when do women stop putting up a fight against something that they don't really want? Like, if you don't really want something, you say, no, no, stop touching me. No, don't do that. No. 
So you so, didn't hear her I'm, explain like the presence of fear was within was, was I've been listening. I've been here the whole time. I I but I there are videos where Janae was there and she beat up other women. She agreed, she participated in all the stunts. So I'm not just sitting here being biased just because I'm a male you know, because sometimes females will feel for other females and they feel their pain, but I'm just looking at it like, okay, she still could have said no. That's all. I, I didn't hear that. I heard her say, I agreed in the moment because I was under duress, but it did. It wasn't like he punched her or any of that. During her story, she did say originally she said no. When he was pulling her to the room, she said no. She said no repeatedly as per her, as per her story. Um, to further go into detail about what you're saying, um, just because someone is not punching you in the face doesn't mean that they're not presenting a physical threat, okay? If you're restraining me from leaving, if you've already put me in this position where I'm on my back, you're holding me down, you've already created a hostile environment where I am in fear. So, you know, I, I can't speak on any of the things that happened prior to this or videos of her participating in certain behaviors or whatever. I can't speak on that. But from the story that she said, that is, and even if, even if those things that you're saying are true and they probably are, I don't know. Um, that situation, that isolated situation is still an assault regardless of what happened previously. That's like, you know, a cop, you know, shooting a black person or whoever person, it doesn't matter because it happened to white people too, but shooting someone. And then the reason why they shot them in that moment <laughs> had nothing to do with their priors or any other thing that they, you know, did in the past. Uh, and then bringing that up like, oh, well, they did this, they did this. Well, that has something to do with this isolated situation where they did, they weren't doing anything wrong. So. For her, um, for her situation, if she's being held down, if she's already said no, and you know he's already created this environment where she is afraid, there is no way to consent if you're afraid. And I agree with you, no means no. So he should have understood that that no in the beginning was a no. But clearly that's not what happened based on her story. Now, I wasn't there, so I can't say what facts are true and what facts are not true. Um, but based on the story that was painted, the story she painted was great. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Um, uh, Tanil? Uh, yes, I'm here. Wait, and before you go... Um, someone uh just notified me that somebody's begging for cash apps in the chat. Only person that should be yeah. asking for anything is the person that's sitting up here. Okay, me. Um, if any of the moderators see anybody uh soliciting their cash apps or anything like that, please get them out the chat. I didn't witness it, but I'm being told. Um, so definitely uh get them up out of there. All right, uh, go ahead, Tanel. Tanel. I'm here. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I, I was having a little technical difficulty, so if someone already said this, please forgive me. But someone in the chat made a good point. The same way you can't sign a contract under duress, it doesn't count. It's nullified. You can't give up your body under duress. Like, if she didn't feel safe, if she didn't feel like she could say no, that agreement, it was under duress. So I don't know whose body is less important than a piece of paper, than a contractual agreement, but that will be thrown out if it's found that you signed that under duress. So I don't want to take someone else's point, but I thought that was just spot on. I also just want to uh, really quickly say, um, to the point of the cults, I want a real cult leader to, to when, when that person is on the stand, I hope we as a black community sit up and listen to that, because I feel like we're all speaking from a place of, we've been in a cult. We don't understand what abuse is. We don't understand that sometimes you go along to get along because it's easier than to not have your face beat in. And because you think that that's just the way it is, that's what everybody has to do, then it is what it is. And if you're not strong enough to take it, then that's on you. And then we preach that to other people. We act like they're supposed to believe that and ascribe to that. And if they don't, then they're liars. Oh, now they're crying on the stand. There's um, several people in the chat 
masquerading as women. I really just can't believe that they're women. But if they are, one, I will pray for you. Um, two, I hope your conceptualization of what it is to be R-worded, R-worded I hope that that forever remains theoretical for you. Um, there's a lot of what you would have done, what you could have done, what you should have done. And I hope for always, for anyone who's saying that, I hope that it forever remains theoretical for you. However, if it's not theoretical for you, and you're listening to this and you're like, this some bull, it's because it is some bull. It's because it's what we've been accustomed to believe about ourselves, about our bodies, and no one is owed our body. And if it was good, it was good, it was good, and then it's not, and you say no, that's no. The same way if someone breaks into your house, it's self-defense if they're coming at you. But if they get scared and decide, uh-uh, I don't want no parts of this, and they run, you cannot shoot them in the back and then say it's self-defense. All right, all right, that. all right. Thank you, Tanel, so much. Um, as soon as court stops, I don't want you guys to leave backstage. I mean, as soon as court starts back, I don't want you guys to leave here because I want you guys to, you know, stay here so that when we go on a break or whatever, I can pull you guys up. But as soon as it starts, I have to drop everybody down. Just letting you, putting that out there right there. Oh, oh, I just read something neat. I'm so sorry. Can go I ahead. just say this? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Somebody just said, okay, first of all, I'm not sure if you're um, accustomed uh, with the phrase, your body betrays you. Um, physical imperatives are not the same as psychological imperatives. What your body is designed to do physically, your body can betray you. Even if you are raped, your body can betray you. So people who are saying, oh, she had this, or oh, she did, I mean, oh my gosh, I hope forever you guys can keep talking about it in these theoretical ways. Because, mm, I'm gonna stop that statement. All I'm going to say is, is that that woman is telling you her experience. Whether or not you believe that experience to be true, so many people sat up and watched it and they saw it and then other people can come on the same side because they have this lens of, if a black woman says it, it must be wrong. And I just wanna say one last thing because from something I said earlier, black women, go find whoever loves you. When I said the thing about, I think black men are kings, I think black women are queens, I think people are king and queens. I think the fact that on this big old rock, we just spinning around and nothing, I think that's pretty dope. But if you find somebody who loves you for you, that's the best love for you. Don't all right, worry about all right, what I got to pause you to know. It's a lot of people on here, and we only got like probably like one minute. All right. Okay, so, so I'm going to be done. All right, done. all right. Stay on, though. Stay on. But uh, yeah. All right. Timo? Tim Timo? Unmute. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, make it quick. We only got like okay. a minute or okay. so. Go ahead. Okay. But I just, I'm sorry. I was so triggered by this when first time calling. I just had to say, first of all, as somebody who has experienced the R word from somebody I just really checked out, honestly. That's not me consenting. That was me, I'm gonna either choose to survive. Do I want do I want to die in this situation? Or should I just mm. like say get this over with? It wasn't like, oh, okay, I said yes, dude. Like, mm. I mean, <laughs> you know, no didn't mean no. Mm. I, I said no, but he didn't, he obviously didn't take no. And he's bigger than me. He's holding me down. He's choking me. What am I supposed to do? You feel me? And as someone who also has experienced m marital R word, because <laughs> that, that is a thing. I'm not sure if you know that, sir, but is. that is also a thing. <laughs> you know, it's, but he, just let him get, just let him do his thing and get it over with. That does, I, that's not a consent either, you know? So I just think that's very insensitive to say that because women do take a lot of things. We're not enjoying that. All right. <laughs> you know let, what I'm saying? Let them respond like, really that's... quickly and then you'll just hop right in and when, like, go like that. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I just had to say quick, that just uh, to speak for concern... so many people who had to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't speak on that a lot. All right. Concern, uh, speak really, really briefly and then uh, let her rebuttal back. Yeah, Neek, I just come from a different generation. And I'm from the, the same generation. generation. I... Oh. I'm from the same generation. <laughs> The generation I came from, people were a little bit more mature, and the law was written explicitly for them. It said two consenting adults. So, but there has been when, cults from the test of time. Like, there's... Oh, wait, wait, we're back. We're back. We'll continue this. Okay. Same, the same generation were molesting the women oh, like us. No, they don't have the stream up yet. 
But yeah, so um, they don't have to stream up yet. But so what I was about to say was people have been falling victims to cults forever. Like there has been like so many cults from your generation, my generation and so on and so forth. From the test of time, people have been falling into these religious groups. So what do you say about that? Because this has happened, not just our this generation. This is didn't start with Nature Boy. I mean, a trend is like a cult. Um listening to songs that you don't really like is like a cult. So we're all part of a cult in some way, whether you like it or not. But even like a religion, any religion, because you do these various different things to please your God. So all I'm saying is I'm looking at it from a logical perspective. And maybe I think a little bit differently because I'm actually someone who writes programming code so i look at logic from a computer perspective but i'm looking i'm applying that well you have like to look law. at this from a human perspective well, no, I'm, <laughs> let me finish. i'm a nurse like and i law. look at things from a human perspective what same. i'm saying like the that's law, not logic that you're using the sir. law applies it the same way it's written a certain kind of way that's why there's legal definitions to these things that they're saying so if you don't follow that logic from the law, that's how can you follow thing. any logic? And that's what we're arguing about, is no. that is her, her, her logic about what she perceived to be. And I think we subbed out, there was a broken chair at the end for one of the yards, so we got a new one. Good afternoon, Miss Newell. My name is Robert Book. I represent Mr. Bishop. I just have a few questions for you, okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are still on the oath from earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Make, all right, hold on. Make sure you answer yes or no instead of mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, you're Miss Newell. Um, as of today, I think you indicated you're 29 years old? Yes. Okay. And you have a seven month old child? Yes. Okay. Boy or girl? Girl. Girl. Okay. Well, congratulations. Girls are pretty awesome there. Um, what was the, who was the father of that seven month old child? Courtney P. Townsend. Is that the same Courtney P. Townsend that you mentioned a few times named Solar? Yes. Okay. The person that was in the group? Yes. Okay. And so you said the baby is seven months old? Yes. Okay. Tomorrow she'll be eight months old. She'll be eight months old? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's fair to say just based on science, that baby was probably conceived about 17 months ago, right? Nine months uh, to carry a child and eight month old? Yeah. Nine, month, nine plus eight? Sure. Lawyers can do some math. So about 17 months ago? Yeah. Okay. And the date that is at issue in this case is what date? Excuse me? What's the date at issue in this case that we've been talking about? The date of issue? Mm -hmm. It's March. March of 2022, right? Yeah. Okay. You know how many months ago that was? How many months ago? Mm -hmm. March of 2022 it was? Yes, ma'am. You asking me a math question? Can we... I'll move on. Can we assume that it's one month shy of two years? It's 23 months, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Judge. You're a better mathematician than we are. All right. Um, now, in the scenario here how at the time when you first came across Mr. Bishop and uh, these other folks online how old were you at that time I think you said you were 23 years old mm, yes yes okay and did you grow up here in Atlanta mm, yes yeah majority yes oh, were you born here in Atlanta no where were you born at New York in New York how long had you lived here in Atlanta um I was here since I was like 13 years old 13 uh, Yes. Okay. Did you go to high school here in Atlanta? Yes. Okay. Where'd you go to high school at? Well, I went to high school in Conyers, Georgia. In Conyers? Yeah. Okay. Rockdale County? Yeah. Uh, not Rockdale. I went to Salem High School. Salem High School. Did you graduate? Yes. Okay. How were your, where was your GPA? Is that actually relevant? What's relevant? Well, she's, she's talked about her, she used the word um, brainwashed. So obviously her intelligence and whether or not she graduated high school and those things, I think I'm able to answer this question, Judge. I'll allow it. I don't, all right, I'll allow it. Thank you, Judge. Uh, did you 
graduate high school? Yes. Okay. What was your GPA in high school? I do not recall. You don't recall. Mm -hmm. So you don't know if it, is it fair to say it was a 3.8? I don't remember. Don't remember. Mm -hmm. So it could be a 3.9. It could be a, I don't remember. You don't I remember your GPA in high school? I'm sorry. I just need the board to I'm sorry. So I have to allow you to answer. <laughs> and so I will try my, I'm going to pause after you answer so the court reporter doesn't kill me. Um, so it could be a 3.8 or 3.9 GPA. She said she doesn't remember. Okay. I'm to remember really, I'm trying to remember my GPA. Okay. How were you 18 when you graduated? Yes. Okay. So were you taking regular classes? Yes. Did you take algebra? Yes. Calculus? No. Did you take any AP or honor classes? In middle school, but not in high school. Okay. So in middle school, you took AP or honor classes? Yes. Okay. All right. And you graduated on time. Did you Did you do any college after that? Yes. Okay. Where did you go to college at? I went to Lawrence State University, and also I went to uh, Georgia, Georgia State, not Georgia State, uh, Georgia Career Institute. Okay. And Valdosta State, uh, do you remember what your GPA was there? Uh, 2.9, actually flunked. Okay, 2.9 is a flunking GPA. I did. Okay, all right. And you said, what was the other school you went to? I went to um, uh, Georgia Career Institute. Okay, and what did you study there? Aesthetics. Aesthetics? Yes, skincare. Okay. All right, and when did you go there? When? Mm-hmm. 2016 or 2015. Okay. And do you remember your GPA there? Excuse me? Do you remember your GPA at that school? No. Did you complete that school? Yes. Did you get a degree from there? I got a, a license. A license. Aesthetics. Okay. Did you ever practice in that field? Do I ever practice in that field? Did you ever practice in that field? Okay. Did you ever have a job in that field? Yeah. Okay. All right. And at Valdosta State, did you get an associate's degree from there? No. My, I, my financial aid was dropped because I wasn't able to obtain a good GPA or good grades. Okay. All right. So at the time you met Mr. Bishop Fitness Group, you were 23 years old. And when you ultimately left, it was you were 26 maybe? You were around for about three years? Mm -hmm. That's not right? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. And I think you indicated to Mr. Carvini on... Uh, direct examination that you were on a spiritual journey, <coughs> right? Yes. Okay. And were your mom and dad here in Atlanta area? My dad, I don't know where he, you know, I don't know where he goes. Mm -hmm. My mom was in um, Atlanta and then she moved to Jamaica. Okay. So mom moved to Jamaica. Yes. And that was that the entire time that you were around the, um, the group with Mr. Bishop? Was she gone in Jamaica the entire time? About, then she came to, then she went to uh, North Carolina. Okay. Is that where she moved to live? Yes. Okay. So was that sometime around 2022? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so you're online. This is around 2020. You're, you're staying at home by yourself at that time? Around 2020. I was with my grandmother. Grandmother. Where does grandmother live at? Right through here, Georgia. Okay. All right. And in 2022, was grandmother still living in Lithonia? Yes. Okay. So for 2020, 2021, and 2022, you had your grandmother here in Metro Atlanta, right? No. Um, I moved around a lot uh, after I left the cold. Um, so I wouldn't say I was staying with my grandmother. That's not what I asked, ma'am. Uh, what was the question? I just asked, was your grandmother here in Metro Atlanta? Yes. Okay. Where was your dad? I don't know, ma'am. When he, how long has he been moving around? Moving around, uh, basically, like, since I was 14, but I haven't been okay. around in a few years. Okay. Okay. So, you knew where your grandmother lived? Yes. Okay. And you knew her phone number? Uh, yes. Okay. And your mom, you knew she was in Jamaica, obviously. It's kind of difficult to read, but you knew her phone number also, right? Yes. Did you have any aunts or uncles here in the metro Atlanta area? No. Any cousins? Any other blood family in metro Atlanta? Yes. Who else? 
I have family in my brother, um, my stepmother, and my half siblings. So stepmom and some half siblings. Yes. Okay. All right. So 2020, you go and you join. I think according to your testimony, for the first time, uh, the group, right? Yes. Okay. And based on your testimony, you're there for about three to five months, is what you testified to. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so at some point, your um, you're voted out, right? Yes, that took place in California after we were deported out of Hawaii. Okay, but what I'm asking you about is being voted out. You were voted out, right? Yes. Okay, and so you testified that you made arrangements to leave, go home to Atlanta, and you did for 10 to 11 months, right? Yes. But you continue to communicate with Solar, right? On and off, and yes, he would communicate with me by okay. trying to, yes. And this was the guy that you wanted to have a relationship with, right? Yes. That you ultimately had a have a child with. Yes. Okay. Um, and so Solar invited you to come back. Yes, he always would say come back home. Yes. Okay. And, and um, actually, Alivio Bishop is the one who invited me back as well. Okay. Yeah, you said that earlier. Yeah. So they both invited you back, and so you got a flight to Puerto Rico for the yes. second time. Yes, right. Bishop brought me back, yes. Okay. And so at that point, you stayed for one month. Yes. Okay. And you testified earlier that you witnessed some acts of violence while you were there, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you left again. Yes. Okay. And so during the time that you left for the second time, after this first month, um, where'd you go then? After I left uh, Puerto Rico, I went to Florida for a day. And then I went to Dallas, Texas. Okay, you went to Florida for one day? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, What? who do you know in Florida? No one. Okay. Uh, I was just, I guess it was just a uh, uh, connected flight out there. I, okay. Uh, uh, they would just fly out there. Uh, okay. And then you went to Dallas, Texas, right? After that, yes. Who lives in Dallas, Texas? Well, it was a supporter of mine who uh, watched me for years. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, no one would take me in. Okay, so the person in Dallas, Texas was a supporter of yours? Yes. Is that supporting like your online presence? Yes. Okay, a financial supporter? No, I, she wasn't financially supporting me, but she just reached out to my mother and was like, I'll take her in. She reached out to your mother? Yes. Okay, what was her name? Uh, Eva. Ava. Okay, is it Ava Wilson? So okay. I don't really recall her last name. Okay. And she told your mother that she would take you in. Yes. Okay. And you went to go stay with her for a while, right? Yes. And you also messaged with her as well, right? And I also what? Messaged with her on your phone? Um, yes. Okay. And when you messaged with her on your phone, this was after the you left Puerto Rico, right? Yes. Okay. And you stayed with her again at a later time as well, right? Uh, what was the question? You stayed with her again at a later time as well, right? What do you mean by that? After 2022. In 2022, did you stay with her? No, the only time I stayed with her is that time in, when I went to Dallas, Texas. Okay, and you, you've never lived at her house at any other time? Yes. Yes, yes you... I have been lived at her house at any other time. Okay. Other than that one time she invited me. And what, me. what year was that? I believe it was 2022, 2021, 2022, around those times. Which time did you go to Dallas, Texas? Um, I don't recall, honestly. Um, 2000, and the last time I, the last time I left. So I mean, the, the third, the second time I left, I was in uh, Dallas, Texas. So 2021. Yes. Okay. So your, your testimony here today is yes. that you haven't been around Eva Wilson and said, tell, since 2021. Yes. Okay. So in 2022, you never stayed at her house? No, I don't recall. I don't have, only stayed at her house that time I went to Dallas, Texas. Okay. 
And you never messaged her about anything happening to you in 2022 either, right? No. Okay. And you never communicated with her and your mom simultaneously in 2022 about anything happening to you either, right? I don't recall any of that happening. Okay. So that wouldn't exist in your mom? I don't believe so. All right, and just addressing your phone real quick, the messages that you were shown, those messages were actually from your phone, right? No, it was from Kelly's phone. Okay, those are not messages. So did you allow police to look through your phone? No. Okay, you never shared your phone messages or anything like that with the police? Well, I did send them, like, show them, like, the, the, the videos of the porn, but other than that, I didn't really, I don't think I shared anything. Okay. All right. So the state has behind you a big board with people's names, different names on it. And your name um, is Nateri. And it has you listed as what's a former member. Based on your testimony earlier, though, that name was not given to you by Mr. Bishop or anyone in the group. That name you gave yourself before you ever met those people. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That was a name that you gave yourself when you were younger or when did you give yourself that name? I gave myself, myself that name um, when I was following the carbonation crew and everybody was renaming themselves mm -hmm. and I said to myself well I just got out of a relationship I'm going to rebrand myself as Materi and really take the knowledge seriously. Okay so 2020 2019 you're following the group you rename yourself as Nateri and you go and you join the group right? Yes. Okay. Uh, and so when you get there, uh, I think from what you testified to earlier that you were witnessing what you believe to be a lot of violence, right? People getting beat up and punched, right? Not when I initially went there, no. Okay. So you, you went there in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. You agree with me about that? Yes. 2022, it ended, right? 2022, yes. March 24th, 2022. Yes. You left that day, right? March 25th, the next day? I, I left. Yes, okay, and then go back again, right? No. Okay, so it's fair to say roughly two years thereabout, you were around these folks, right? Okay, yes. You witnessed a lot of acts of violence based on your testimony, yes. right? Yes. There were people getting beat with belts 50 to 100 times based on your testimony, right? Yes. Okay, there were people getting slapped in the face based on your testimony, yes. right? Women running out the door naked, right? Well, she didn't get to, go to, get to the door because he tackled her. Getting tackled to the door, even worse than yeah. getting tackled at the door naked. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all types of violence, right? Yes. yes. And each time you went back to the house, though, right? I went back to the club, yes. You went back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. What, and, and you stayed there. Yes. Okay. Now, you testified earlier that women couldn't talk to you and that people were slept. They slept separately or together, and that Mr. Bishop had a set of women that were with him. So where where did all that stuff happen at? Was that in Puerto Rico? Was that in Atlanta? Where did that happen at? I stated earlier that the women wasn't allowed to talk to the men, not to, not to talk to me. I did not say uh, they're not allowed to talk to me. So the women were able to talk to you? Yes, that's actually how... Um, the third time, actually, I got there as well because he sent one of the women to talk to me. Okay, who was that that he sent to talk to you? Efferu, which was uh, Kayla Buckner. Kayla Buckner came to talk to you. He, she messaged me on, on Instagram and we FaceTimed. Okay. Um, and she said she wanted me back at the, the tribe. She misses me and she wanted me there. And I said, I will come and visit. Mm -hmm. That's what I And he, she told you that he told her to call you? She actually told me that um, she did it herself. Um, however, um, Kendra Carter had said to one, um, one time that if he wants women, he's going to send the women to catch them, especially Ethel, who is Caleb Butler. So I felt like I was preyed upon. So even though she told you that she decided to do it herself, it's your so even though she told you that she decided to do it herself, it's your belief that he instructed her to do it. Yes. But you don't have any evidence other than your belief that he instructed her to do it. No. Okay. All right. 
So you indicated that there were lots of rules uh, and the rules were no one could say no, right? Right. And so the outside world was considered Babylon, yes. right? Yes. But even though you're a person who went to college, you, you had gone to college at that time, right? Yes. You had gotten a, a good enough college entry exam, ACT, SAT, or whatever, to get in college that you believed the outside world was, quote, Babylon. Yes. Okay. Uh, that you were told that the defendant was the Christ, yes. right? And you believe that? Yes. Okay. Even though you're a person who went to college and had an education? Yes. Okay. All right. And you indicated that it was dissuaded to have communication with family, friends, and other people outside the group, right? Let me repeat that question. It was, dis it was discouraged that yes. you should have communication with family, friends, and others outside the group. Yes. Okay. So during that time frame, you didn't talk to your mother, right? Um, I would break the rule. I would uh, try to at least get a contact with my mom sometimes. Um, but not all the time. Not okay. Normally, how, how so, much I would. So your phone would reflect communication with your mother, right? Yes. Okay. So that meant that you were communicating with family and people outside the group, right? Yes. Okay. And the person who was your supporter, Miss Wilson, you were communicating with her, right? No. Well, she she invited you. You said she was your biggest supporter. That's what she said. Oh, she told you she was your biggest supporter. Yes. Okay. Well, how did you even know her? Um, actually, I did some readings for her, um, and I remember, because uh, I do readings, and she uh, got some readings with me, and I would continue to do readings with her. And uh, What's a reading? A reading, a tarot reading, is basically... Don't know what that is. What is that? A psychic reading. Okay, so you do psychic readings? Yes. Okay, so how, how would a lady in Dallas, Texas know that a young lady in Georgia, or Puerto Rico, or wherever you may have been, was doing psychic readings? online. I basically put my life online so anyone can see what I was doing. Okay. So and you you the journey. I'm I'm talking over you, I'm trying not to. So you you posted online that you were doing psychic readings on YouTube? No, on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And this was during the time that you were in Puerto Rico or around the group, right? Uh before that time as well. Okay. But this was during the time that you were in Puerto Rico and around the group as well, right? Well, I, when I was in the group, I stopped doing readings and okay. doing those things online. But you, so for that two years that you were in the group, you didn't do readings online? Um, I did them donation-based, but hardly, no, hardly. Donation-based, what does that mean? Did they pay you, you did it? Because, well, I used to get paid for them, but it was my business. I was an entrepreneur. Um, however, when you're in the group, you don't do anything for money. Okay. That was the rule of coordination. You don't do anything for money. So if people wanted to send donations, cool, but we did it for free. If they wanted to send a donation, that's up to you. Okay. So you stay posted online and people would donate and they would donate to the group? Basically, because I would have to send that to the group. Okay. All right. So you would be uh, an intermediary for the group. You would get money and would go to the group, right? Yes. Okay. So you did tarot cards or whatever you just said for her through during that time frame in 2020, 2021, right? No, no I did it before, um, before as well. Okay. So this was a supporter that had known me, you know, before I got into coordination from other things. Well, you just said she knew you from tarot cards, though. Yes, from other, other than the coordination, I'm, I'm assuming that you thought that she only knew me while I was in coordination, but she knew me before then. How did she know you before then? Because I was online. Doing tarot cards? Yes. Okay. This was when you were in college? No. It was after you were in college? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, now, jumping forward, uh, just a couple things. I want to get to the 24th. The statement you made earlier about Malia, you said that she was screaming and she was um, hurt and other things. Uh, she would obviously testify to the same thing, right? Excuse me? She would obviously testify that those things happened to her, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And there were other people that witnessed that as well, correct? Yes. And they would give similar statements? Yes. That would support what she said? 
Yes. Okay, so looking at the board there, which which of those people were present when that happened? Outside of yourself? Um I would say I'm not sure if they heard um that what was going on, but I would say Sheba and True could have been there as well, but this happened late at night when everybody was asleep, so I'm not sure if they were of the kind of happened. Okay, where was this, where did this happen at? This happened in Puerto Rico, um, in the, their location in Puerto Rico. What are you describing again? The, the time when she was screaming from the top of her lungs. Okay. And he was beating her. In the room with, with the door closed? Yeah, the, yeah, the upstairs. Um, okay. We were all downstairs in our tents. Okay. And uh, that's obviously the time that I tell you I heard that happen. Okay, you heard it happen. Yeah. You didn't actually witness anything though? No. Okay. You didn't see anybody hurt? No. Okay. All right. Now, you also mentioned that there was a lady that was beat with a belt. Yes. Who was that? Malia. Malia. Did, did you actually witness that? As, yes. Okay. And where did that happen at? That happened in the master bedroom. In what city? In Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And she would obviously be willing and able to testify that those things happened to her, right? Yes. Okay. Who else was present for that? Sheba, Aya, Zoka, but she's not there. Sheba, Aya, and Zoka, but, but she's not, Zoka's not on the list? Yeah, she's not. Okay. Do you know Zoka's real name? Uh, Jayon Marie. Jayon Marie? Yes. Okay. But she would have been present as well? Yes. Okay. She was actually hit with a belt too. While, while this all was going on? Yes. Same thing. Okay. Yes. All right. So... Um, you indicated that um, your sexual relationship began with Mr. Bishop. You were not actually interested in him, correct? Yes. Yes, you were or no, you were not? I was not interested in him. Okay. You were interested in so far. Yes. Right? And so, um, but you went and you went and hugged him good night the first time. Yes. And he told you, hmm. Maybe you can have sex with me at some point. Something along those lines, right? That didn't happen that night. Like I said prior, um, that happened sometime before when he said, when he told me you're ready to have sex with me soon, mm -hmm. that happened before that night. It was before that night. Before you hugged him the first time? Yeah. Okay. No, I actually I hugged him, and that's when he said, you allow me ready to have sex with me. Then the next night, I hugged him good night. So this is two hugs. Uh -huh. I hugged him good night, and that's when he kept me in his room. Okay. So the first time you hugged him, he said, "Hey, you hugged me. I think you're ready to have sex with me." Basically, yes. Okay. And then the next night, you go and do the exact same thing again. Um, the exact same thing though. It wasn't at night. The, the first time I hugged him, it was in midday. Okay. The second time, I just hugged him to say good night. Okay, so the first time during the midday, according to your testimony, he's aroused by you, and he says, well, we should have sex. This is the middle of the day, right? Yes. But the next time you go, you go to hug him again, this time at night. Yes. And in his room. Yes. And you go to tell him good night. Yes. Okay, and at this point, that's when the first time you guys had sex, correct? Yes. Okay, and where, where was that at? That was in Atlanta, Georgia. In Atlanta. What year was that? Uh, that was around COVID time, so I believe around 2020. 2020. Yeah. Okay. So, when you first went to meet with the group, you met them in Atlanta? Yes. Okay. And then after going from Atlanta, that's when you went to Puerto Rico? After some time, I left and then I went back to, yes, it was in Puerto Rico the okay. second time. Yes. All right. Okay. So you indicated that you, to the state, that uh, you originally didn't want a um, sexual relationship with him, but you ultimately did have a sexual relationship with him, right? Yes. Okay. To the point where you tattooed your name on his, or his name, on your body, right? He said it was for the mission. Putting your name on his, uh, his name on your bottom was for the mission. Yes. Okay. All right. And you also created 
uh, some sexual videos, right? Yes. Uh, several of them. Yes. Okay, and according to your original testimony, uh, early on the stage direct, you said that you there was an agreement to do whatever he wanted on those videos. Do you disagree that you said that? Say that again. That you originally told the state that there was an agreement to do whatever he wanted on those videos. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. And that you consented to the videos being posted at that time. Yes. And that was in 2020 or 2021? That was in 2000. Um, what was your next year? 2022. 2022. Early 2022? Yes. Okay. Because I told him prior, because he's never put in any like porn about of me at all. I told him that I wasn't com uncomfortable with that. Okay. So he, you know, you know, he hasn't pissed it up, but the more he was able to manipulate me and control me, that's when he saw that I was able to be more submissive to him. So he started to post it up, and because he saw, he saw I was um, okay with it, saying okay, because it was for the, the bigger purpose, was for sexual education. Okay, so you testified earlier, you consented to it, and you said you were okay with it, right? Yeah. And that's the same videos that are there that have been entered in the evidence in States Exhibit 2. Is that correct? Here's the thing. I would say I was okay with it, but deep inside, I never really wanted to do it. Okay, did, you ever, did you ever tell him not to do it? Ba let, let me ask you a better question. Yes. Do you disagree that you've already testified that you agree for him to post videos? No, I don't disagree. Okay, do you, do you disagree that you indicated you consented, was your exact words, you consented to them being posted? Yes. Do you disagree that the videos that we're talking about right now are the exact same videos that the state has in counts three, four, and five that are in state's exhibit two? Yes, those are the same ones. Same ones. Um, That's a yes or no question. Yes. Okay. Now. Wait, hold, wait, hold on. You were cutting her off a little bit. You have a right. She's to fine answer. You have a right to explain your answer. I just want to make sure you understand that. So go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was going to say that there was um, some that I wasn't really familiar with when I saw the when he saw, I saw them the other day, mm -hmm. but um, that there was one, one of them I definitely recognized that he posted on Twitter before it was taken down. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was going to say. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, were there videos and content recorded for the purpose of? Um, entertainment by the group. Uh, by the group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he would say that um, it would be spiritual improv, uh, but it wasn't spiritual improv. It was our whole life that he was displaying online and torturing us. Okay, so your your whole life was essentially being recorded, right? Yes. Everything that was being done. When whenever he wanted to record, he would press record and he would record us all, go live and torture us. Okay, and this was, was it ever done for, um, for content purposes for, I guess, essentially to, for the wow factor? Was for that him, for him, of course, yes. For us, it was just living our lives. Okay. And how was his playthings? How many people outside of you were in the house, Phil? Um, around that time, I would say well over probably 15 people. 15 people. Okay. And these all 15 people were characters or characters within the live video shoots, right? We weren't characters. We were ourselves. Okay. And then you were yourselves. 15 other people outside of Mr. Bishop, correct? Yes. Okay. And you guys had an online presence, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, was there a video that was recorded where people were smacked or hit uh, during that time frame that you guys indicated online was for purposes of wow factor? No, it was never for wow factor. He tortured us and manipulated us and humiliated us. Okay, so it, it was, was never acting. It was never stated to on the videos that this was for purposes of a wow factor. It doesn't matter if it was stated on the video for wow factor. It was never for wow factor. He got pleasure from torturing us. 
So my question goes back to, was it ever stated on video that it was a wild bag? Uh, not from me. Not from you. Yes. So, so if there's a video that exists where people on there are saying that, then you would say you wouldn't be on that video, and if you were, it wouldn't be true. I would say, I would say that the police would come in and they Ma'am, that's not the court. I would ask the court to strike that uh, answer. I'm explaining my well, answer. Well, hold on. You have to answer the question first. Okay. Then you have a right to explain your answer. So repeat the question, please. Okay. My question was, was there a video that existed that people were on there that the discussion was that this was for a wow factor, and if you were on there, are you saying that that's not accurate what you were saying? Yes. I'm saying if there is a video out there, and if I was on there, mm -hmm. and he was saying to the police or any other person that it was just for content and for a movie or theaters or for Netflix, mm -hmm. and I was in an agreement, it wasn't that. Okay. All right. How long do you think over that two-year time frame did you spend with the group? Out of 24, 26 months. 20 months, I more or less? So. Okay. All right. Now, jumping back to Miss Eva Wilson, at any time when you went to Dallas, Texas, how long do you think you stayed there with her? I do not recall the number of times. Give me an estimate. Estimate, maybe two months. Two months? Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you were there in Dallas, Texas, were, did you go anywhere with her? Did you have a job or anything like that? I had a job, yes. Okay, what were you doing? I was waitressing okay. at a Jamaican restaurant. Okay. Why did you ultimately leave her house? Um, we had a falling out, I believe. Um, and then she wanted to have her room back. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to leave her house. Okay. All right, after March 24th, 2022, um, you, did you communicate with her again? Uh, I probably had a few conversations or text messages, but I don't recall them, honestly. I kind of don't, met, I don't want to, I'm not associated with her anymore. Okay. Was there a disagreement between you and her? Um, there was, but we met on good terms because we was able to forgive one another and I just decided that I didn't want to, like, you know, associate with her moving forward. Okay. All right. So let's look at the, the 24th of March. So based on your testimony earlier, on the 24th of March, there's a, there's a party. Is it, I guess it's the night of the 23rd going into the 24th? It's the 24th. So on the night of the 24th, it's a party? Mm -hmm. I see you looking down at that, that message there. Jess, can I retrieve your message from up there? Sure. Text messages. All right, so March 24th, is that the, the date? Uh, yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, and you were you have been staying there for a while, right? Yes. Okay, and can you guys kind of describe for the jury, this is a two-story house? Yes, oh, we had an attic as well, so two no one went into the attic. Okay, so a two-story house with an attic that nobody went into. Um, and about what square footage do you think it was? I don't know. Okay, would you consider a large house? Yes. Did it have a three-car garage or a two-car garage? A two-car. Two-car garage, okay. And was it a, a detached house or were, were there other houses connected directly to it? It was just a standalone house or okay. other houses. All right, with a front yard and a fence in the backyard? Yes. Okay, all right. And how many bedrooms was it? Three bedrooms. Three-bedroom house. A three-bedroom house? Yes. Okay. And how many bedrooms were on the main floor? None. None. So all three bedrooms were on the second floor? Yes. Okay. And so the master bedroom was on the second floor? Yes. Okay. And two additional bedrooms? Yes. Where were those bedrooms in relation to the master bedroom? Across the hall? Down the hall? It was across and down the hall. Okay. So if you came out of the master bedroom, the door to the other bedrooms, can you see them? Yes. Okay, all right. Who stayed in the other two bedrooms? The master bedroom belonged to the king, or to the Indian bishop. Mm -hmm. um, um, the other two would fluctuate sometimes, okay. um, depending if the men was there or not. Okay. Um, but I know that uh, they made the second bedroom, um, 
it was a couple's room, then it became a studio room, and then other things. But then the girls' room was across the hall. Okay, I'm talking about March 2022. Whose rooms were those in March of 2022? The girls' room was across the hall, okay. and the I'll call it the studio slash men's room was mm -hmm. next to. But the men were not there, right? The men were there. I thought you testified earlier that they were in another state. I testified that um, they were in another state before they came back. They He allowed the men to come back, so the men mm -hmm. were at the house as well. For the party? Excuse me? For the party on the 23rd? Oh, yes. Okay. The men and women were at the house. Okay. Yes. So the party on the 23rd, everybody on that, that board over there was present, correct? No. Okay. Who was not present? Velvet Marquez, um, that's it, okay, and so Brianna Jacobs. Velvet Marquez and Brianna Jacobs were not present? No. Okay, how many people do you think were at the party? It was a whole tribe plus one, which was um, Fauna, so probably 16, 17. 16 to 17 people? Yes. Okay, all right. and. One of the people that were there based on your testimony, obviously, was somebody named Zoka, right? Yes. Okay. I don't see a Zoka on the board. Oh, there they Z O C A, Jayon Hamilton, yes. right? Yes. Okay. And that's a female? Yes. Okay. Female named Jayon. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, you testified earlier that Mr. Bishop, according to your testimony, had never been violent with you, right? Do you agree that you testified to that? Yes. Okay. Now, um, And that everything that Mr. Bishop told everybody to do, everybody did, right? Yes. Even the men? Even the men. Okay. Now, party on the 23rd, there's a, a new person that shows up um, that someone named Fauna? Fauna. Fauna. Is Fauna on the board? No. Okay. Uh, is it typical for the group, for people that are not familiar with the group to come by the house? Well... Traditionally, no, but he started to invite people to his home. Okay, so Mr. Bishop invited Fana to the home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and there was a, a party happening with music and drinking and things like that? Yes. Okay. And dancing. And dancing, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, yes. And this is at night? Yes. Okay, and so ultimately uh, the party's happening on the first floor of the house? Yes. Okay, so you described the second floor of the house. What does the first floor of the house look like? It has a kitchen, a living room, a dining room, a, a, another area where we have meetings. Okay. And then, yeah. Okay, and were these, was it kind of an open floor plan or were there doors to the rooms? It was open floor, open. Open, open floor plan? Mm -hmm. So now, now were doors isolated off? No. Okay, all right. And so at some point on the, 30, the 23rd to the 24th, you, Mr. Bishop says you're, according to your testimony, a leech, right? Yes. He says it out in the party in front of everybody. Yes. Loud enough over the music to where you can hear everybody else, right? Yeah, well, at that time, he gathered, like I said, he gathered everyone in that room. Okay. And uh, he just had a meeting about how I was a leech and training and, uh, yeah. So the music's turned down. Yes. And 15 or 16 people are in a room. Yes. With you? Yes. And you're in the middle? Yes. No, yeah. I'm not in the middle. I'm on the side. On the side? Yes. Okay. And these are males and females? Males and females. Okay. And so this is when Zoka, who is Jayon Hamilton, hits you in the back of the head? Yes. Okay. Uh, and your your testimony on that rent was you didn't really know what that was about, and she hit you in the back of the head again, right? Yes. I spoke something else, and she hit me back in the head again, yes. You spill something else? I said something else. You said something else. I spoke else. something else. That's what I meant. Okay. All right. And who did you speak it to? Um, I, I just explained it to her, or I explained it out loud that I wasn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. And she hits me again. Okay. And this would have been on the night of the 23rd going into the 24th, right? Of March. July 24th, the night of the 24th. The night of the 24th going into the 25th. 25th. Right. Okay. So, and you think it was past midnight or around midnight? I would say it was probably like uh, nine, eight, nine, possibly. Eight to nine p.m.? 
Yeah. Okay. So eight to nine p.m. You get slapped in the back of the head. At this point, you've had enough. You're about to leave, right? Yes, because I was about to get shot by the women. Yes. Okay. So you go upstairs and you start packing this up, right? Yes. After he came in and told me to go. Yes. Okay. And this was in the extra bedroom that would have been the girls' bedroom, right? Yes. The okay. Girls bedroom. Okay. So you went in and start packing your stuff. Yes. You got your luggage out of storage from somewhere, right? The men did, yes. The men got your luggage out of storage. Yes. Nobody at this point has told you anything about you cannot leave. They actually told you to get out, right? Uh, actually, uh, as I was packing my things, the women was trying to tell me that they were saying all these things. And also, when I got my things packed, that's when I went downstairs and they were telling me not to go, basically. Who was they? Uh, Alivia Bishop and the tribe basically saying, oh, just do the work, shut up, do the work. Uh, you, sh you know, you shouldn't leave. It it's hell out there. You're just going to come back anyway. Mm -hmm. All those things, yes. Okay. But nobody's grabbed you by your arm and pulled you back in and forced you not to leave, right? Incorrect. Okay. Um, well, tell us that. Well, I'll tell, I, t I took the fact earlier that Alivia Bishop pulled me to the other room when he assaulted me. Yeah, I'm not talking about that time. We we're going to get there. I'm talking about at this time when you've packed your bags, bless you, we packed your bags and you're getting ready to leave, right? Yes. Okay, you've called an Uber. Yes. Okay, the Uber is outside according to your testimony. Uh, yes, they okay. came outside after a while, yes. Who came outside after a while? The Uber. Okay, the Uber's outside the house. Yes. Okay, are you speaking with Kelly at this time? At this time? Of course, because we was able to book the Uber together. Okay, Kelly books, books you an Uber. Uh, you've been talking with her, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and you've seen all sorts of violence, right? The violence was done on me, yes. You've seen it. You, yes. You've been a victim of it, yes. right? Yes, uh, You've been hit in the back of the head twice. And also in the front, in my, in my, in my face. In your twice. face. So four times I was hit that night. All by Miss Zoka, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And you, you've been threatened. On his orders. On his orders, right? Yes. You've been threatened about all this, right? Yes. Okay. And so you're outside. As a matter of fact, I think you testified earlier you have two bags outside, right? It's not, yeah, yes. It's outside the house. Yes. Okay. And you're outside barefooted. Yes. Right? Yes. You've called Kelly and said, Kelly, this is just a bad situation for me, right? I text her. I'm trying to get out of here, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And so, but for some reason, you're outside, and from according to your testimony, I'm almost in the Uber, about to get in the Uber, right? Yes. yes. The door is open to it. Yes. They're sitting right there. Yes. You're outside the house. Yes. But you go all the way back inside. Yes. Leave your bags outside. Yes. You go all the way back up, not to the first floor, but you go back up to the second floor. Yes. And when you go back up, your goal is to say, to hug Mr. Bishop again. Yes, and the, to say goodbye and rush out, yes. To say goodbye to him. Yes. After you, based on your testimony earlier, the prior hugs led to sex. Well, That's what you testified to, right? Yes, but not every hug leads to sex. Okay, but you go back inside knowing that when you hugged him before, it led to sex. Now you're going inside and you're hugging him again at night after you witness all this violence, right? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, and you and you go into his bedroom. No, I don't go into his bedroom. Where do you go to? I was in front of his bedroom. Well, at the at the end of the stairs, at the top of the stairs, is that's his bedroom door. Okay. And that's where I was, at the top of the stairs. Okay. And was he standing there when you got there? Yes. Okay. And so that's when you and he go into your to his room, correct? To whose room? To Mr. Bishop's room. No. What room did you go into? He pulled me into the room across the hall, which was the girls' room. The girls' bedroom? Yes. So not not his, but the girls' bedroom. Yes. There were no other girls in that bedroom at that time? No. Okay. So just you and him? Yes. Okay. And you and he have sexual intercourse? Correct? He assaulted me, yes. Okay. He assaulted you? Yes. Okay. He pulled you in and told you, I, I think according to your testimony on direct, that you went in and you um, had your legs around him, for instance. I think that's how you testified, right? He placed my legs around him, yes. He placed your legs around him? Yes. So he... Was this in a standing position or a seated position? Sitting position. So he's sitting down on the ground and you're straddled over him on the ground. It's uh, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like 
he grabbed my legs around and then I was hitting them. Okay, so you're face to face? Yes. Okay, and how are you dressed at this time? I don't remember how I was dressed. I honestly don't remember how I was dressed. Well, can you take a second and try? I had pants on, I believe. You had pants on? Yes. Okay, were they button pants? They weren't jeans. Um, like slacks? They were like, I guess, pantaloons. I don't remember. Okay, but you didn't have shoes on based on your testimony, right? Yes. Okay. And you had a shirt on, right? Yes. Okay, and underwear, correct? No. No underwear? No. We okay. didn't. Well, the we trial was against underwear. We didn't wear underwear. Okay. So, Fruit Loom gets no business. All right. So, you had your phone, though? I, my phone was somewhere else, I think. Where I was it? I think it, I don't remember where my phone was um, at the time. It was probably somewhere around, but like where? Um, possibly on the floor somewhere. Okay, on probably the floor. He had me in his arms. Okay. Was crying. Okay. In in that house, how many bedrooms are? I mean, there's three bedrooms, right? Yes. How many bathrooms? Three bathrooms. Three bathrooms? Yes. Wow, that's a lot of bathrooms for that house. How, which floors are the bathrooms on? There's two on the first floor, one in the master bedroom, one in the uh, one that's connected to the second bedroom, and a half bathroom downstairs. Okay, so so it's two and a half baths. Yeah. Okay, half bathroom downstairs, yes. one in the master bedroom, yes. and one connected to which room? Uh, the second bedroom. The second And the third bedroom, actually. They, there was two doors, so yes, the second and third bedroom was connected to that one bathroom. So a Jack and Jill kind of bath bedroom, mm -hmm. or, or bathroom between two bedrooms, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're in there. Uh, you're dressed, right? Yes. Okay. He's dressed. Yes. Okay. And ultimately, you guys have sexual intercourse in that bedroom, right? Yes. Okay. Now. He doesn't force your clothes off or anything like that, right? Uh, he helped to take off my pants, yes. He helped to take them off? Yes. As, as in he assisted in doing that? Yes. Okay. Um, and he didn't cut you, scratch you, or harm you any way physically in doing that, did he? No, not physically, but mentally and emotionally, yes. He mentally and emotionally made you come back to him, right? And this emotionally hurt me, yes. And okay. abused me, yes. Okay. Do, do you disagree that, let's, I guess, just address that at this point. Um, you told the state that you told them no, no, no a bunch of times, yes. right? And then eventually you just said, well, I said okay, uh, I'm going to do it with you one last time. Right. Yes, I said, I said that, but I never told him I'm going to do it with him one last time. I told him okay. You just told him okay. Yeah. Okay. And when you when you were verb when you were saying no no no, were you saying it in your head or were you saying it out loud? Out loud. Okay. No no no, as in I don't want to do it. No no no, or I don't want to be here. No no no. I don't want to do it. No no no. I don't want to be here. No no no. I want to go. No no no. My Uber's outside. No no no. Okay. And again, this was after you have come back inside the house and gone all the way back up to the second floor of the house. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. So um, you tell him you'll do it one last time. He says, okay. Um, you said earlier after some time of him getting his pleasure, you pushed him off. Yes. Okay. But I did not tell him I would do it with him one last, last, one last time. I keep telling him, I tell him, okay. Oh, you said he it was, anyway. He was the one who said, just do it one last time. Okay. Yes. And you said okay to that. Okay. And after a lot of resisting mm -hmm. and a lot of manipulation, I said okay. Okay. So he's asked you a bunch of times, have sex with me, have sex with me. And your response is nope. No, no, no. Nope. Yes. And then eventually he says it just one more time and you say okay. No. He, after he said, I'm not going to rape you. Which means he's not going to he's not going to force you, right? I didn't know that. So your response was okay, right? I was scared. 
I just used the word right. You were so scared that you left the Uber outside and came back inside the house and went to the second floor. I don't know how to explain to you. Okay. Um, All right. My mental process in that moment. I was confused. I was vulnerable. And I was being manipulated. Okay. And I was being convinced that having sex with him for that last time would be a good thing. Okay. So I said, okay. Because okay. I wanted to con- I wanted to continuously be good with the kink. I yeah. didn't want to be a troll. Okay. You wanted to continue a good relationship with him? Yes. Okay. Um, I was convinced that it would be a good thing. Okay. All right. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Um, you end up leaving. Uh, you're communicating with Kelly about leaving, right? After the sex, yes. Yeah, there's there's text messages here where you communicate with Kelly. Before, yes. Right? Okay. Yes. All right. And so is it, it two Ubers that are called, right? Two separate Ubers, right? Yes. One the next day? Yes. Okay. All right, so after the sex, you indicated earlier that you took a shower, right? Yes, after okay. the sex, I took a shower. Okay, he leaves you by, you're staying, uh, you're taking a shower, right? Yes. You're, you're texting with Kelly. Yes. Okay, then, and this is midnight time? Yes. Okay, and so you said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave because I'm, I'm afraid, right? Yes. Okay, at this point, is the door locked to keep you in the room? When? The bedroom that you're in. It was it locked, you said? Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure. Well, did you try to open it? He, no, I went to the, the bathroom door after he left out the, the front door. So that meant you could leave the room? No. Okay, well, you went to another room. I went to the bathroom after the sex, after the sex, yes. Okay, did you ever try to leave the room? Well, yeah, I tried to push him off and tell him, no, I don't want to do it anymore. Like I said before, he had his arms around me and his mm-hmm. legs around me. Oh, he had his legs around you. No, I had my legs around him. So you have your legs around him in a posture, and I, I can't do the genie, but like this, right? Yes. Okay, both legs wrapped around him, yes. around his body. Correct? This position there, yes. Okay. But you couldn't get up from that position. I felt like I was powerless in that moment. Okay. All right. So you go to the bathroom, you call Kelly, and your intent is, I'm really afraid. I'm going to leave. Yes, I was afraid because after I told him I still wanted to go, Mm -hmm. after the assault, he told me to shut up really loudly Okay. and told me that I was his bitch. And his property, and I'm not going nowhere. That scared me. Scared you? Okay. All right. So at this point, you're afraid. You're taking a shower. You're calling Kelly, right? Well, I'm texting her. Yes. Texting her. Okay. And you're you're intending to leave, right? Yes. Okay. But you don't. I I had to sneak out because there's people everywhere. You can't just get up and just go. Right. Party still happening downstairs. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. And so you just can't leave. My, they, like everyone just walking around. No right. one had to plan their escape. Okay. So you stay in that bedroom upstairs. Yes. Okay. And then people come in and they go to sleep. Yes. Okay. And your intent is to leave. Yes. But nine hours later, after you wake up, you decide you're going to leave then. I overslept. You overslept. Yes. So you were able, being deadly fearful, you fell asleep in the house. It was hard, but I had to, to get some rest, yes, mentally to recover and do what I had to do, uh-huh. yes. Okay. And so, nine hours later, you wake up. Yes. Okay. And I had my something and woke up. Okay. And that's early to you guys to get up at 9 o'clock now. Uh, it, doesn't, it depends. Sometimes it depends. Okay. And I think you testified earlier that you had to sneak around to see if others were up. Right? Yes. So being that there were 15 or 16 people in the house, Mr. Bishop was in a room that was the master bedroom. Yes. How many people were in there with him? Well, he slept in threes, apparently, because he was the three god. That's one of the names that I forgot to mention other than nature, but earlier. Mm -hmm. So he took us persona as three god. Okay. And we had to sleep in three. So three women slept with him, 
I slept with two other women in their room, and the men slept in threes downstairs everywhere, scattered everywhere, in the, in the dining room, in the meeting room, mm -hmm. in the living room, in the garage. They were everywhere. They were everywhere. Yes. Okay, so based on your testimony earlier, you left the bedroom that you were in with the two other women, and you snuck around to see if others were up, right? Uh, Sheba was the only one sleeping in that room. I said earlier, Zoka was the one that was up and in the shower. Okay, so Zoka's in the shower. Yes. You don't come across her. Well, no, I didn't. I just opened the door to see if she was in the shower and she was. I took my ring and I left. You took your ring out of the back. This is yes. the same person that's hit you in the back and in front of your head. Yes. Okay, and you know that that person's in the shower. Yes. But you go in there and get your ring out. Yes. Before you leave. Told, yes. Okay, she never says anything to you though. No, she didn't even know I was in there. Okay. I, and I, so I did that quietly. Did it quietly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you got your bags and you ended up leaving. Right? Um, yes, I took them, um, tiptoed down the stairs and left. Yes. Okay. So after that, um, you indicated that, I, I, as I understand it correctly, you go to a 24 hour spot. Uh, right? After that, I went to. Uh, the studio Kelly told me I could stay mm -hmm. for about three days then I went to a 24 hour day spa okay so is that a spa where you go for full like treatment all the hair and the yes, massage um, and all that stuff I didn't get out of those I didn't have the money for that I just slept there just slept at a 24 hour day spa yeah okay were you sleeping there by permission or without permission what do you mean did the business owner allow you to stay there I paid for it you paid for it yeah. Where did you get money to pay for it from? Um, I also had another supporter who sent me $50 and I know her. Her name was Miss Anita. Mm -hmm. um, all I had to just do was say hi and she sent me $50. She sent you $50. So the only $50 you had in the world after you were raped and leaving a what you call a cult, you go to a 24-hour spot. Yes, and um, also I... What did I get to put on there? I don't remember where else I got the other money, but I, I think I was going to get more money. You get the more money? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, do you recall, as the state has already asked you, um, afterwards you went and you gave, did, did you have your own YouTube presence yourself? Uh, I basically had an online presence. I wouldn't say just YouTube. I wouldn't say YouTube per se because I wasn't really on YouTube like that. Okay. I had an online presence on, well, yeah, YouTube because people documented me a lot. So yeah, yeah, I had an online presence. Right, people knew who you were. Yes. They knew when you left this group, right? Yes, because he stated when I left. Okay, so he stated when you left. Yes, okay. I didn't go online and okay. say anything after that. I deleted my number and I deactivated yeah, my Instagram right after I left the home. Okay, all right. And so you end up leaving, you're out, and you stay in a 24 hour a day spa. And you, where do you live after that? Where are you going to stay at? After that, I went to my uh, brother in law's home. Brother in law's home, and he lives in Lithuania, I'm assuming. He lives in Lithuania. He lived in Fayetteville. Fayetteville. So I thought you said your family was in Lithuania. They, they were, but I never said my brother-in-law was oh. in Lithuania. Okay, so brother-in-law and your sister then? My sister came and moved in afterwards, yes. Your sister-in-law moved in with her husband after you moved there? My, my twin sister moved in after I was with my, my brother-in-law, brother yes. My glasses are right. Okay, um, so... You go and stay with your brother-in-law. This is for the week or so afterwards, mm -hmm. right? Um, sorry, Judge. Yes. Yes. Okay. And this is when you give an interview to a online YouTuber uh, called The T, right? I went ahead and did the interview while I was at the spa. This was probably like five days in the day I was at the spa. Since it was 24 hours, I took my time to be there. I didn't know where else I was going to go, honestly. Okay. And based on your testimony, you gave a six-hour online YouTube interview with the, the T, right? Yes. The yes. T is in T-H-E-T-E-A, the T, yes. right? Yes. And that is ran by Chantel Coleman. Yes. Right? And so you're at a 24-hour-a-day spa, mm -hmm. and you give a six-hour long interview about your time with Mr. Bishop, yes. right? Okay. 
And during that time frame, I think you interviewed what you told the state uh, earlier was that you called the time that you were with Mr. Bishop making love in that interview. Do you disagree that you said that? I don't disagree. Okay. Do you disagree that Chantel Coleman is a person that doesn't particularly like Mr. Bishop? Um, I asked for an answer. I believe that she just wanted to document the cult, yes, and okay. I don't think she favors him, yes. Okay. And you, you told her during the interview that you and Mr. Bishop were making love on that night. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And that you, in fact, believed that Mr. Bishop was faking, right? Yes. That you didn't believe he was being authentic with you. Yeah. Right? So you did not only use the word that we we're making love, but you said this guy who's having sexual intercourse with me, he's he's not being authentic with me. He's making it up, right? Yes, that's what I said. And, and, and that was all recorded in a six hour interview, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now you after that you went and uh, tried to get a warrant for Mr. Bishop's arrest, right? Yes. Okay, and in order to do that, you went. And, did you do a warrant application? I um, I just recorded the revenge porn. Okay, you recorded it. I and wasn't familiar with the government or the laws or anything, but okay. I just went ahead and reported him so I could take my life back. Okay, and you didn't say anything in that report about rape, did you? No. You didn't think, say anything about that in that report to police about anything about hey, by the way, these folks kept me here against my will. No, I didn't understand what happened to me. You didn't understand what happened to you? No. Okay, so then you give an interview to law enforcement once they come out and talk to you, right? Yes. Okay, and do you disagree in your interview with law enforcement that you told law enforcement in your interview that you and Mr. Bishop were making love? Yes, and again, I would also let you know that making love is a term that he told us to say. He told us to say making love as a term for sex, sexual assault, whatever you have, sodomy, whatever you have it. He will let us know that making love is all those things. Okay, so you would agree with me that in your interview, which was over half an hour long, that at the 5 minute 18 seconds mark, you indicated that without question from law enforcement that you and Mr. Bishop were making love. Yeah, they're going to ask and answer yeah. how many times you brought up. Okay, I'll hey, follow hey, up with a separate hey, version of that question. Hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Sustain the objection, let's move on. Okay, do you disagree that later in that interview that you told law enforcement and to their response that you couldn't, you were not sure how to explain if it was consensual or not? Yes, because like I said before, I can't tell them no. I feel as if I was manipulated to doing it. So, so I didn't real I didn't know whether it was consensual or not because I didn't initially want it to do it in the first place. So okay, so you told law enforcement when you were you were asked that you didn't know if it was consensual or not. Right? Yes. Okay. Mr. Bishop didn't tell you how to explain that part though, did he? No. Okay. That was an answer that you gave law enforcement, right? Yes. Correct. Now, I want to run through, and I won't be much longer. Can I get your uh, text message with you, please? Yes. Judge, if I could show her uh, state's exhibit one. Yes. Are you trying to put it up on the screen? I think the state's going to help me with that. Okay, let me. States Exhibit 1. These are text messages uh, according to you. Uh, they were taken, they were not taken from your phone, they were taken from Kelly's phone, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and so looking at these messages, looking at the first one, it March 24, 1258 a.m. Hi Kelly, are you up? Right? Yes. And she responds, yes I am, love, everything okay. Right? Yes. And you ask her, hey, can I come to your house or to your studio? Right? Yes. Okay. Now. Can you, hold on a second. Can you see or do you need to get up and 
get closer. So I get closer. Okay. And so she tells you that she is, she can stay at her studio. You stayed at her studio before, right? No. You never stayed at her studio before. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who who is Kelly to you? Kelly's a friend. Okay. I've always known Kelly. Been just someone I knew and associated on social media with. Okay. And had you you've never stayed with her before? No. Just randomly picked a person out on social media. Yes. Okay. How did you know she had a place, a, a house here locally? I don't know. I just I was reaching out for anything. I was just reaching okay. out to her. All right. In hopes that she has somewhere to stay for me. Okay. All right. And so this is after uh, you and Mr. Bishop have had sex. This right here was before. This was before. Okay. So this is when you're getting ready. Uh, this is 1258 a.m. on March 24th. Do you see the time at the top? Yes. That's where you text her, right? Yes. And this, would these be the only text messages that you had that you had in your phone with her? The only text messages? Yeah. Would there be other messages before this? No, I don't believe so. Okay. How did you get her number to text her then? Um, like I said, we've been contact and communication. She's also someone who has purchased a tarot reading from me years ago, and ever since then, we've been really cool. So okay, but how did you get her number this day? Um, this, this social media, I guess. I say no, um, I don't think we had prior messages because I probably deleted the thread because we weren't allowed to get contact with any outsiders. Okay, all right. So looking at the next message, I just showed you States Exhibit 1, which was page 1. Uh, States Exhibit 1, page 3 is on the screen now. You, the can, get, you can get everything you see. The message from Perth, it says, are you in Atlanta? And your response is, I'm trying to get a ride as well. I don't have enough for an Uber. Can you help me with that? Right? Yes. This is, this is before you had sex with Mr. Bishop, right? Yes. This is after you've been slapped by Zoka in the, in the front of your head and the back of your head, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and she says to you, can you wait till tomorrow evening? We can ride Marta. Where are you now? Can I call you? Your response is yes, right? Yes. And you say, okay. She says, okay, where is your address? Only you are coming, correct? And she says, I'll, well, you say, I'll see where I am. Is yes. that your response? Yes. That's okay. my response. The, the house that you were at, how did you get there initially? Um, the, when I got there December 26th, uh, I was taken there by a friend. Mm -hmm. um, they gave me the address. Who um, did? Well, I believe it was Efru. Okay. And um, I showed up. Okay. Now, I think you testified earlier that they didn't like people knowing the address, correct? Of course, but I was an exception because he wanted me. Okay. But didn't you testify that people would just randomly come to to visit and be part of it? I testified that he started doing that. It wasn't an initial thing. It wasn't an initial thing. He started to do that after a while. Okay. So let's go to the next message then. He started to do that after a while. In your next message, which this is still Stacey Exhibit 1, page 3, if you look down almost at the bottom of the page, it says, nah, I don't want to give away the address because they aren't comfortable with that. So how how do you justify what you just said with that message that you wrote there? Basically, I felt like I still, even being after being abused, after being humiliated, I still had a loyalty to the group in some type of way, shape, or form. So I said that I didn't want to give out the address However, um, to any outsiders, however, I didn't really remember at that time that he was giving out his address like that. It doesn't occur to me. But don't you agree with me based on what you testified to, that you've been beat up and called a leech and had a bunch of people surround you? Yes. That you're in a hurry to leave this place? Yes. That you're scared? Yes. That you witnessed a bunch of acts of violence? Yes. But you don't want to get the, the a, a person the address to come find you to get out? Yes. Okay, you don't want to just walk away. No. You can't just walk away. No. Okay, you need somebody to drive and pick you up. Yes. But you'll have to wait for them to come get you. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, continuing with Space Exhibit 1, um, I think we're on page 3. Moving to page 4, which is on the screen. This one, you give her an address. Thank you. I'm going to get the address to the CVS 
quote, right? Yes. And you give her an address to a CVS. Yes. And she says, how close are you to the CVS? Yes. Right? And you say, two minutes, I'll see how much an Uber to the CVS is. Right? Yes. She's calling the Uber. Uh, only you are welcome is here, right? Yes. And you say, of course, thank you. Uber to the CVS? Right? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, okay, I'll let you know when I'm there. And she's telling you seven minutes, ten minutes away. That's for the Uber to get there, right? Yes. Okay. And then it says ten minutes. On the, this, I'm sorry, on page five of State's Exhibit 1, we see a what looks like a ten-minute uh, Uber Roderick with 7,000 trips there coming to pick you up, right? Yes. Okay. Now, at the top of this message here, it says, okay, they won't take me, so I'll have to figure out how I'm going to get there. Who is uh, they? Can I, can I, can I interrupt? Uh, may I ask you a question? Well, answer the question first, then you may. Thank you. Okay. Who is they in that text message? They as in um, the call members. So these people that have beat you up, you... Well, that was, that was my question, right? Let's let her finish. Sure, sure. I just asked that she not be allowed to talk to you. No, she's going to go right into the jury room there. The other jury room, not here. Okay. Do y'all need to take a break while we're doing this? Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Those of you guys who are in the chat, um, we're on a brief break. And she's going to use the bathroom, so we're going to refer back to the StreamYard link. Concerned Citizen, Sandra Fay, Tam, are you guys still here? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah, All I'm still right. here. Wow. What do you guys think of the testimony? I'm starting to get a headache out of nowhere. Ooh. But uh, what do y'all think about the testimony? I probably didn't eat enough. <laughs> But well, I there was something um, that I wanted to kind of circle back to as far as uh, what concerned citizen has said. He said he's looking at it from the perspective of like a programmer. Um, <laughs> what's funny is that my fiance is a software engineer, a security expert, and he was listening to what concerned citizen was saying. And he said that based on what he's saying, it's not logical, even if you put it into the framework of someone working with software <laughs> so um i i have a suspicion you know I, I don't have any quantification for this suspicion but concerned citizen might just be a script kitty and not a real software engineer like that because the way my fiance described it uh there's <laughs> the logic doesn't even hold up when you put it in the frame of working with code um, and if he is unsure, you know, my fiance is readily available and he can explain how even when you put it in the framework. All right, of put, code, him, put him on, put him on, sense. put him on, uh, baby. Concerned citizen, are you still there? I'm still here. All right. What was the programming reference? I missed that part. Here you go, baby. If you hear me. Yes. Okay, yeah. His reference was he said uh he was looking at it from a, a logical point. He said that it's uh it's it's not her her explanation was not logical. And if you look at it from a programmer's perspective, the way I put it was if you if 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 you making if you making requests to a server and the server rejects your request for any reason, you know, it could be if you're trying to if you try, I guess the best way to put it is if you're trying to get into someone's account, like on YouTube or any or any or any service, if you make too many requests that aren't um, that aren't valid, meaning you don't have the password, you don't know the password, what's going to happen is you're going to eventually the server is going to say, okay, we're going to have to stop you, and we're going to have to verify or confirm with the person as well. We have your phone number, your email address, we're to send them an email or, or a text message to, to confirm if they are who they said they are. And if you, now, if you have a more high level access, meaning you have an admin tool, something that the server 
is more inclined to trust. If you send that, if you send, you can send as many requests as you want. This is an admin tool. I mean, if you can get access to the company's uh, tools or tool set, you can send as many requests as you want. So if you send in uh, a, a guess to a server and it turns back, okay, it doesn't mean you were authorized to use that person's account just because the server gave you access to it. Um, that's, that's, that's considered an exploit. So if you exploit it, if you exploit those tools to get access to anybody's information, personal information or personal data, then that's an exploit. And so if you're looking at it from that point of view, um, I didn't really hear the, I didn't really hear the young lady's, uh, testimony. So I didn't hear her 100%, but it was explained to me. So if she says, I'm going to leave and then someone who's trustworthy would mean it like an, an, an administrative tool can say, Hey, come back and let's, you know, let's, uh, let's say goodbye. Let's, you know, let's, I'm just say goodbye. That person has that trust. They're more inclined to trust this individual because they know this individual. So if you, um, so if you have that trust there, yeah, you're more inclined to put yourself in, in a position you may not deem as dangerous. Can I respond to what you're saying, brother? Yeah, you can respond, yeah. Okay, so you you must know something about IT because you tied into the ideology. But what I was getting at is basically things are made to be exploited. This is how the law works. This is the same reason Donald Trump said, uh, somebody said, he doesn't pay taxes. That's what Hillary Clinton said that. And he said, that makes me smart. So hold on. Well, I'm not that's nothing to do with I'm, I... not, hold up, hold up. I'm not advocating for the way that Nature Boy behaves. I'm advocating for what's right. And all I'm saying is it's not right to take away someone's life or put them on trial for something that seems to be made up. Just like uh, it, you have to be clear in this world. No means no. That's where I come from. When I was a kid and we was learning about sex, they always told us, if a girl tells you no, that means no. Even though every guy knows that there's plenty of women who said no, but it was really yes. And they had they didn't file rape charges on our generation of men. So all I'm saying is maybe my thought process is different, but I have the right to think. I have the right to exist with you guys, to coexist and to have a different opinion. Absolutely. All right. So let me ask you this question there. If you were to look at a child and the child tells you that they were molested, would you say this child consented? I got to step away. I'll be right back. Would you say that though? I mean, <laughs> Wait, why, why, why are you going to step away right when it go and get good? It sounded like it was children in the background though. That's no, I, I actually have someone trying to buy a car from me. So <laughs> I have to get to that because we all need money. But okay, well, just fine. answer, just answer that real quick. Okay, what's the what's the question? It's only gonna take a few few seconds. I just gotta give them the key. Gotcha. I was just asking you if uh, if a child was molested, would you say that that child consented to it? No, because... we're not talking about children, bro. Right. We're talking but, about but, but, but there's a reason I why. Wanna, I don't even want to go down the on. hypothetical road. I'm a foster but, parent, but there's so a I would, reason I, why. I protect children. I protect children. Okay, but you can't right. keep, keep treating grown folks like children. But there's a That's reason why. Saying. There's a reason why right you cannot say that, though. All right, so we're going to go to Bug or Tam. Uh, you can go to Tam. I just want to say first, thank you for streaming this live. Um, I've been watching Nature Boy and all this for a while. I'm really um, interested in how Booker is going to come. He's, I feel like he's coming at her so hard that she's getting that defensive. She gets defensive. Mm -hmm. And I hope she's able to stay soft. And when they start talking about this, she gets back into the emotion of it. Because I don't know. I'm nervous about all of the stuff coming out about her being in other cults because it'll just start to make it seem like that's her desire is to kind of be in that kind of cult life or cult mentality. I'm not talking about the assault is the assault. I don't want to go back and forth about that. Like, but in regards to her 
proving this case, that's what I'm concerned about is the other cult life and stuff that she's been involved in. I also felt like the defense attorney, like he was going too fast. Like he's trying to prove his point so much. He won't slow down. Like how he was like talking over her and yeah. stuff like that. I'm like, slow down. Like I'm not even on his side and I'm still like, like slow down. Like he's trying so hard to, you know, get her that he's like rushing. Yeah, and then I felt like, trip her up. exactly. But he's trying too hard. And then I also felt like I, I do know, like I said earlier, he's, he, he just has to do his job as a defense attorney, but he doesn't have to be nasty with it. And I thought the um, fruit of the loom um, reference, I thought like that joke, I didn't think that was an appropriate time to make yeah, a joke. I, I thought agree. that was very distasteful. And I, if I was in the jury, I would think he was a clown. Like he's very immature to me as a, as a, as a lawyer. All right. Um. Let's see who else. Uh. Quiz. Uh. Quit. Quit. Quitzel. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hey. What's up, everybody? Yeah. I just wanted to. I've been watching the trial. Um. And I just wanted to give my perspective on it. So I used to go by Rambo. I was in carbonation for about two years. Um. And though I wasn't there when Janae was there. Um. Yeah, I think I have a little bit of insight into the workings of how that situation works. And, you know, I think it did get in more intense as after I left. But, yeah, I just think in this situation, it's uh, unfortunate. Are you event. able to come on camera? Sure. Hey, Rambo. Hold on. Let me put you uh -huh. on, the, on the screen. Those of us who have been oh, following. I remember you. you look good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, thank you. All right, let me put let me put him on the screen. Hold on, let me take this stuff off. All right. As soon as they start talking though, Rambo, I'm gonna take you down, but do not yeah, yeah, exit. No worries. All right, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, so uh like this really sounds to me like it's just I mean, I think we a lot of us have been in relationships where things are tumultuous. Um and I think that my my perspective is like everybody's guilty uh everybody's guilty of something and um i think nature boy is guilty of a lot of things um he definitely took the power that right, he had pause pause and... rambo pause do not leave do not leave do okay, okay. who's your next how long is your next witness going to be we have two relatives. use your mic we have two short witnesses great okay Well, we'll probably do the two shorter witnesses and maybe start the longer witness tomorrow. Please. <laughs> All right, very good. Bring the stars out. Wait, they're already done with Janae. We'll 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 come back to you, um, Rambo, but don't don't leave. Okay. They turn the sound off. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm eating a pop tart. <laughs> I'm trying to eat a little more, but they just turn the sound off. It's not me. They do that. It looks like the lawyer is at the um, judge's bench. So they're on sidebar right now. So whenever they go on sidebar, they kind of turn off the uh, mic. I can see the top of the lawyer's head. So I know he's at the bench right now. All right, they... They're, they're on a break still. Okay, so let me bring back Rambo. Okay, go ahead, Rambo. Okay. Um, yeah, so I go by Quetzal now, but it's all good. I know a lot of people know me as Rambo from back when I was part of the group. Um, so, yeah, uh, as I was saying, um, 
my perspective on this whole situation is like I, like I said, uh, I think Nature Boy is is uh, he's responsible for all this that's happening in many ways because he kind of orchestrated all this. Uh, I just don't see that it's just like him, you know. And all right, and all right, wait, point. wait. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, is it back? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay, so 
you're asking her to get you uh, Uber on the next day. Um, an Uber for um, the rent stay, yes. Okay, so you're not in a hurry to leave. No, just been around the time I had to devise a plan to leave out in at five o'clock and arriving in the okay. evening. Okay, and you you text for say okay shh going now. Were were there noises happening between the messages while you were saying shh and she was saying be quiet? Uh, I was telling her to shh to be quiet and not text me back because I would be around people at that time and I didn't want them to see that I was texting someone around that time. So I told her to be quiet basically and do not text me back because I am trying to devise this plan to escape. I don't need any faulty things in my plan. Okay, okay. So, but you continue to text her right after that. What? The very, oh, I'm sorry. The very next screen, which would be slide 11 of State's Exhibit 1, be quiet, cash app is the question she asked. And she says, this is the one, right? I don't see myself texting her, that's her okay. texting me. I'll show you then. On the next one, which would be State's Exhibit 12, or I'm sorry, State's Exhibit 1, page 12. Uh, yes, thank you. Is that you texting her? Yes. Are you calling an Uber, she says, and you said, yeah, when I get up. Yes. So you're not in a hurry to leave, right? At this point, I'm not in a hurry to leave. Okay. Uh, and she, she says to you, tomorrow morning? Right? Do you disagree with that? No, I see it right there. Okay, and your response is in the writing, right? Yes. Okay, now earlier you testified that you were in the shower though when you were texting, right? Yes. So how would people hear you talking to her in the shower? Uh, why would you be concerned about it? Because like I stated before, we, come, we don't have locked doors in the cold. So people come in and come out of the bathroom, meaning the women. So the women, if they saw that I was texting someone else or trying to leave, they would report it to a Leaky official and I would go in trouble. Okay. All right. Now, you text her some more, which would be the last page, which is State's Exhibit 13. It says 14, but I think the last one is blank, I guess. Um, yeah, the last one is blank. All right. So State's Exhibit 13, and I'm holding here, or let me rephrase that. State's Exhibit 1, page 13. Uh, indicates that she, you say tomorrow morning, or she says tomorrow morning, you say in the rising, she says, okay, keep me posted. And then you send her a message to tell your mom uh, to stop messaging you, correct? Yeah, I told her don't let my mom message me, but let her know that I'm okay. Okay. So my so, mom did not message me. Well, it, do you disagree with me? Do you see the number where it says 347? Yes. You see the last sentence in that little blurb up above that? Yes. Are you telling this person not to message you or your mom not to message you? I'm telling Kelly to tell my mom not to message me. To tell her that I'm okay. So I gave Kelly my mom's number. To tell Kelly to tell my mom everything that I told her and what's going on. But do not contact me. Do not message me. For your mom not to message you. Right. Okay. All right. Um, and then later at 9.41 a.m., you tell her, hey, basically, I didn't wake up in time, uh, now I'm ready to go, right? Right. Was that the last message that you had with her? Is there more to this message chain than that? It possibly could be. Okay. Do you know where that's at? Do did, I know where it's at? Was that, did you, did you give, you never gave your phone to the police, correct? No. Just a few more questions and I'll sit down. Now, the, after you, so after you left on the 25th of March, that morning, right? You did a, yes. okay. After you left on the 25th, thank you, Corporal Porter, sorry. Um, you um, had a lot of different family members you talked to, right? Yes. Your brother-in-law? Yes. Your twin sister? Yes. Your mother? Well, not um, 
right after that, you know, after that I um, just was talking to Kelly and my mom and my twin sister. Um, but now I've been here. Now I'm not living alone until some time after. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. But you were staying with him though. Yeah, I stayed with him after a week and a half, I guess. Okay. After leaving. All right. The folks from the twenty four hour spot. Right, you 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 were a lot of different places, right? Yes. And so, and you you uh, undid or however you on social media, you didn't have a, a Twitter or Instagram account anymore. Yeah, I deleted my Instagram. Okay. Yes. All right. I barely went on Twitter. And you barely went on Twitter. Yes. But you still had some social media presence, right? Yes. Because again, you gave a six-hour-long interview to someone called the T, right? Yes. All right, and. People still knew you were online because of that, right? Yes. Okay. Now, do you recall that you um, did you go on YouTube after uh, and start your any of videos of your own that were not the T? Not after that, no. Okay. You never did any video. I'm not even sure how to describe it, but a YouTube video where you started it yourself and posted it yourself. I started that possibly last year, okay. but not uh, right directly after I left the cult, no. Okay. Did you ever do any, I guess it would be called Facebook Live, or any other type of recorded audio uh, afterwards? After, um, not directly after, okay. like I said, but after I started to come out and deactivated my Instagram, yes. Okay. Do you ever recall making a, uh, doing an interview where you told a person that you were not happy that Malia was the queen? No. Do you ever recall doing an interview where you told someone that you would prefer to be the queen rather than Malia? No. So that conversation, you've never stated that before, correct? I don't recall that, no. You don't recall that? And she did say that. From my memory, from my memory. And I'll, I'll ask you something for that. Um, the phone, so after you come back inside the house from the Uber, your, your bag that you've taken out to the Uber, you come back up inside with your phone and you go upstairs. Correct? Yes. Okay, and you have your phone with you? Yes. And that's when you and Mr. Mr. Bishop are together, correct? Um, yes. Okay. And that's in a, in a room that's not his room, but another separate room. Yes, it's a girl room. It's a girl room. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Relapse. I'm surprised he's not impeaching her. That's weird. Uh, do you disagree that you said earlier that you consented to those videos being posted? I basically said that he does whatever he wants to do, just so that I'm clean. So I don't think she's like that. Okay. okay. Do you disagree that you said that you consented to that? I don't disagree. Okay. And it's the same videos that were posted at a prior time when you were in the group, correct? Yes.
She can just step out of the door. She can just sign later. Okay. Normally, normally they impeach the witness when they say like a lie. Like why did why isn't he impeaching her? That's weird. When she said that um, she didn't say that she wanted to be queen, that that's that wasn't that wasn't uh, according to my recollection, that wasn't true. You swear upon the testimony to the court to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. State and spell your name for the court. You can look it up. Uh, my name is Kelly Johnson. All right. And do you know Janae Newell? I do. How do you know her? Um, we are in the same community here in Atlanta uh, that are very spiritual, like to do yoga, eat clean, meditation. I'm an artist, and she's also an artist, so that's how we connected. And about how long ago did y'all first meet? Mm, we met 2016, 17. And did, so did you know her before she joined the Legio Bishop group? Yes. Yeah. And um, were you aware when she went and joined that group? I was. And were you able to maintain communication with her when she was in the group? Mm, no. Not at all or not as much as before? Um, I didn't speak to her. Um, at all? I think he was asking, he asked if at all or not as much. And do you recall? Uh, I don't remember speaking to her, no. Did you receive messages from her on March 22nd of 24th, excuse me, of 2022? Uh, this was when she was uh, doing her escape. Yeah, she was trying to leave. How long had it been since you'd heard from Janae before that? Mm. It's been a while. It's been a while. Wow, like, I, I know it's been a couple years, but like, like days, weeks, months, years. Since we'd like spoken or I seen her in person? No, like spoken, texted, talked online, uh, saw in person, anything. Yeah, maybe, maybe six months. Okay. Six or seven months. When you, what time of day was it when you first showed from Nateria at that point? It was late. And what were you doing at that time? I was uh, with a friend. And did anything about the conversation concern you? Uh, yeah, she was. She stated that she was in the shower, and she was afraid, and she was trying to leave. And did, what did you do in response to that? Uh, I was trying to call her an Uber so that she could get out, come to me, come to my, my art studio at that time. Anything, was there anything unusual about that? About? Just about the process of ordering the Uber. Yeah, she wasn't able. Um, the communication with her while I was talking to her was very sporadic. It wasn't like I was communicating with her consistently. I would hear from her for about maybe like a minute or so, and then she would come back to me 10 minutes later like, hey, I'm trying to leave, hey, I'm sorry, I can't, or like they're not letting me leave, or I'm trying to leave, and then it was just a lot of back and forth. And ultimately, did the, the Uber make it there? The Uber
Uber made it to the CVS, uh, and I was on the phone with the Uber during that time, like, hey, can you please stay there? My friend is trying to make it there, and he was very gracious. He tried. I was on the phone with him probably for like 30 minutes. And was he able to pick up the charity that night? No. Stressed, stressed, ha happy to be out of that situation, but she looked stressed. So this, this is what I remember. Um, I believe her possibly asking me for them to like screenshot and text them, or she sent them. I can't remember. Okay, so she may have sent the messages to the police. Right? That's right. From your phone. Uh, well, they're my, they're mine then. Yeah, they're okay. my messages. Were you interviewed by the police? During what time? Back in two thousand. Was I interviewed by the police? No. In 2020? Yes, ma'am. No. About those text messages? No. Okay. All right. A um, couple questions. So you indicated that she stayed at your, um, what's the fancy art word? It's like the studio. Studio. She stayed at your studio, right? That's right. Okay. Was this an art studio? Yes, it was. Okay. And did anybody else stay there? Uh, no, sir. Okay. All right, and you think she stayed here for a few days? Yes. Okay, and this would have been somewhere around the end of March 2022? That's right. Right, okay. Um, now, you said on direct testimony that it was six months before that since you had last spoken to her, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the answer, the answer yes or no? Yes. It is. Okay, so the six months you had spoken to her before that, was that by text message as well? Um. If, yeah, it could have it could have been text message or Instagram. Okay, had you seen her in person before she went to Carbon Nation? Or in the six months you had, had you seen her? Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. Did you know she was here in Atlanta? 
Mm, yes, I do. How did you know that? Um, through posts, like her sister would post when she was in town, things like that. Her sister would post when Janae was in town? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. And so based on her sister's post that she was in town, then you were able to determine that she was in town, right? Well, that's right. Okay. Now, you, based on the testimony you just gave, you knew her as your peer, right? Yes. And when you met her in 2016, 2017, you knew her as that name at that time, correct? Yes. Okay. So in 2016, 2017, which is before 2022, Materia was the name that she was going by with you at that time as well, correct? Yes. And that's when you met her at an art show? Yes. Okay. And she told you her name was Matiri? Yes. And she lived here in Atlanta at the time? That's right. Okay. Now, the state just asked you, they gave you a message, which we have in front of you today, looking at them. Uh, they asked you if, the, or you said the message between you and her was correct, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, everybody does it. It's just the court reporter needs to make sure you get a, a, a full word. That's all. Okay. Um, in the messages that you have between her, is there a large gap? Those messages, would you agree with me, they don't have times on them? Yes. They don't, right? Yes. Okay. So being that they don't have times on them, how were you able to determine that there was a large gap in time? Because I remember speaking with her and then she wasn't replying to me and I was talking to the Uber about him being able to stay. Okay. So um, I know that it was some time period before then for like me to speak to her and then to the Uber telling them to stay. So Okay. And you said you spoke with her, was that only by text message or verbally as well? It was text. No no verbal calls. No verbal calls. Yes, I want to see what this prosecutor does. Testimony to the court to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. And yes, yes, sir. State and state name for the court, please. Come on, man. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Officer Hugh, H U I, badge 3614. <clears throat> and Officer Hugh, how are you currently employed? Uh, with the DeKalb County Police Department. How long have you been with the DeKalb County Police Department? Um, over three years going on four. And what are your current duties with DKPD? Uh, I'm a uniform officer. I right, patrol. And back on March 30th, 2022, what was your title or your role? Oh, uh, officer. And you said that you generally patrol, so do you respond to calls for help or calls for service? Yes. And back on March 30th, 2022, did you have occasion to speak with a Danae Newell? Uh, yes, I did. And can you tell the jury about your contact with her? Yes, on that day, I respond to 4451. Lawrenceville Highway is a Tucker precinct. Um, I went there to respond to a domestic call that occurred at 2993 Armour Chase. All right, and let me pause you there. You said you went to Tucker precinct. Is that yes. the DeKalb County Police Department headquarters? Yes. And how were you dispatched to that location? Um, 911 dispatch. Okay, so a 911 call comes in, it goes to you, and then you go to headquarters. Yes. And when you got to headquarters, do you remember about what time you got there? Around like 10.50. 
Oh, at 10.58 a.m. And were you in your marks so far in uniform? Oh, uh, yes. And the call that came out was some sort of domestic? Yes. And so what happened when you got to headquarters? Um, when I spoke to Mrs. Noel, she advised that she had joined a sex cult, um, and her boyfriend was the leader, Mr. Um, Mr. Bishop. She advised that he had posted like ex sexually explicit videos with her without her consent, and had posted four videos of her. And, and when you took that statement from Ms. Noel, were you guys inside in the room, were you outside or something else? I believe we were outside in front of the precinct. Okay. Um, do you remember if there were any other folks making reports at that time or um, in the parking lot? Mm, no. Okay. So y'all have this conversation and she says that her ex-boyfriend has posted some sexually explicit videos of her. Yes. Um, and after you get that information from her, what do you do? Um, I just, based based on her statements, I typed the report and then I gave her a domestic victim contact form because she wanted to prosecute. And when she initially made that report that her ex-boyfriend had posted four sexually explicit videos, did she report that rape that occurred? Um, at that time, no, not that I understand, no. Do you remember how long that interaction was that you had with Ms. Noel outside in the parking lot? Probably 20 minutes. Okay, so very brief? Yes. And I believe you said that you gave her a case number? Yes, that's fair. And you also indicated that there was an address associated with where she um, believed that the posting of the videos happened. And what was that address? It was off 2993 Arbor's Chase. And is that address located here in DeKalb County? Yes, that was on the center side. Okay. And after uh, you spoke with Ms. Noel and, and gave her that case number, do you do any additional investigation? Uh, no. Would that be the responsibility of an investigator or a detective? Yes. And Officer G, does that conclude your involvement in this case? Yes, ma'am. All right, Your Honor, may I have just one moment? Yeah. That's all I have for today. All right, Cross? Good, sir. All right. My name is Robert Walker. Just a really quick uh, few questions for you. So you get a 911 call on March 30th, 2023. And yes. Is that your self-description? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that typical, a 911 call to go to the police station? Yes. That's how it's done? Yes, sir. Okay. So someone calls 911 and says, I'm standing outside the police station? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that will be recorded when they, when they call, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And that will be kept in the record, the 911 call? Yes. And whatever they would have said then? Yes, sir. Okay. And so the 911 caller operator calls you and say, hey, we have a domestic outside. Yes. Right? And so you get there as quick as you can, and you interview a young lady. Her name is Renee Weevil? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Sure. All right. And did you have your body cam running at the time? Yes. Okay. You recorded your interview with her? Yes. Okay. And you returned it over to the district attorney's office? Yes. Okay. And so in your interview with her, uh, you asked her, you know, she, 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 she willingly told you, what she wanted you there for, right? Yes. And what she told you that she wanted you there for, for was that um, there were four videos that had been posted of her online and she wanted them taken down, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Um, yes, I believe so, yes. Well, do you, do you disagree with that? Or that no, 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 no. That's what she said. That's what she said. Right? right? She wanted those videos taken mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let me answer. Do you need more time to answer? Okay. Just, just, yeah, just, just one. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Judge. I'm trying. Okay, I All right. All right. <laughs> so the court reporter said, you know, what we're saying, so we have to articulate. So, mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. say yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so you have a conversation with her for about 20 minutes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. How long at that time has you been a police officer? Oh, I, don't, I believe like a year. A year? Yes, sir. Okay. And so you're pretty experienced. You, you went through the academy and all that, right? Yes, sir. Okay, were you in the military before? Yeah, no, sir. This is your first, first police job? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you, you had received training in writing reports? Yes, sir. You knew how to write reports? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and there was no pressure or coercion uh, with Ms. Uh, Newell regarding her statement to you, right? Yes. 
That what? There's no pressure. Okay. Well, she, you, you didn't interrogate her. You just asked her, hey, what do you need, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and all she told you was that there were four videos of her online. Yes. Okay. And did you, did you recall asking her if she asked the person to take the videos down? You don't think you have to? Okay. All right. Do you recall her saying anything to you about the person taking the videos down? No. All right. And so you typed up a report, uh, and the state just asked you, just, I'm going to ask you because they asked you, she didn't say anything to you about a rape or a sexual assault at all, did she? Not to my knowledge. Because you, if she would have, you would have wrote it in the report, right? If she had said something about a rape, or a sexual assault, mm -hmm. you, an experienced officer, would have wrote it in your report that she said that, right? That's correct. Your body cam would have captured it if she said that, yes. right? Okay. If she said something to you about a false imprisonment, you you would have wrote that in your report, right? Yes. You would it would have been captured on your body cam, right? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, and so, a twenty minute time frame at least goes by that you're there with her. That's correct. And she also told you that at that time that Mr. Bishop was her boyfriend, was the word that you used? Yes. Her boyfriend? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Were you ready? Just briefly, Judge. Okay. <laughs> um, officer, do all 911 calls require you to go to headquarters to take the report? No. And in this case, did you go to headquarters because that's where Ms. Newell was located? Yes, that was correct. And sometimes when 911 calls come in, you go to the actual scene where the call is made? Yes. All right. Thank you. That's all I have, Judge. All right, they cut the feed. We'll be back at 9.30 tomorrow, but let me go back to StreamYard. Hopefully, Quiz Tell is still here. Did I say it right, Quiz, Quiz, Quiz Tell? Are you there? Unmute, unmute, unmute. Are y'all there? Are y'all there? I'm still here. I'm here. Uh, yes, here. Uh, Quiz, Quiz tell, are you there? Ketza? Or Ketza? How do you say Yeah, that? I'm here. Oh, okay, hey. Okay, so we wanted to hear from you. Um, court is over for the day, so let me click off of that. All right, so um, can you come back on camera, or are you busy? Okay. All right, sorry I kept cutting you off, but, you know, we're we here for the trial. <laughs> no, that's all good. Um, yeah, it was. it's interesting. Oh, hold on. My camera went off. Okay, something is blocking it. Um, give me a sec. All right, so we'll spend a little time with you, then we'll be out. I have been on this stream for seven hours. Child, this is, this is a long stream. <laughs> but I want to hear from you since you are here, so... And those of you who are enjoying the stream, it seems Thank like you, I was the only one that was streaming after a while. So if y'all could support your girl, because, you know, I was in the trenches trying to make sure I had the links, make sure I had direct access. You know what I'm saying? Tussling with the court. All of those things to make sure I could present it to you guys. So if you guys appreciate the coverage, definitely, definitely, definitely show your girl some love via Cash App. Okay, period. And um, via my website, if you prefer that way, too. Okay, period. Um... All right, there okay. we go. All right, so you were cut off before. So what were you saying as far as um, you being there and your thoughts about everything? You were kind of cut off. Yeah, yeah. So I was just saying that, uh, like, my perspective on the whole situation is, like, I think everybody's guilty of something to some degree. I don't think it's like the situation where 
he was just the uh, villain and and nobody else is responsible you know i think that that there's a that that this situation was some something akin to like a toxic relationship that kind of um got out of hand and became something that was you know what, what we're experiencing now seeing um but it's just like th that that's my perspective on it um i think that nature boy is he he orchestrated everything but but i think what he ultimately did is he just put pressure on people like and people made decisions out of their own volition um from my experience when i was there um yeah he never physically forced anyone to do anything he did uh you try to utilize logic and long conversations long meetings for many many hours to try to convince people otherwise but nobody was ever held against their will when i was there there was no physical violence that i ever saw when i was there like i said i think um things... when you were sorry to cut you off um wasn't uh velvet at the time that you were there wasn't she getting like you know flicked up um well i never saw nothing is what i'm saying like i never saw nothing myself but i just my observation of that relationship was it was really tumultuous on both sides it wasn't just like him being aggressive like she was really antagonizing and really uh she had that same similar energy um so that's why like i don't think about it in terms of like a helpless person more in terms of like somebody who chose to participate in something time and time again that you know that they felt that out of their own will that they wanted to participate in so i think these situations are tricky because it's like it's easy in retrospect to make kind of accusations um be and then it's like when it gets tied up with feelings about that person or you're hurt you you're liable to say things that you know was isn't reflective of the actual experience that happened now and, and, you know and obviously the case is on folding and we're hearing both sides so it's like it's important to stay impartial until you hear all the evidence and stuff but that's just like my outside observation based off of like knowing nature boy knowing the situation and the kind of kinds of people that went there a lot of people especially like the women that wanted to be with him they really liked the limelight you know they liked the limelight they liked the drama they liked um that whole situation and it gave them an outlet for them to kind of be seen and to experience something that they probably never experienced in their life so is kind of like there's a lot of that intertwined with with the story that's not really being spoken about. Okay, so what drew you to the group? Did you like the limelight, or or what was your inspiration to go and join? I was really inspired by what Nature Boy was saying at the time. He was speaking very passionately on YouTube and just the topics and the things he was talking about. I was really resonant to, and I just really resonated with whatever he was talking about, and he moved me and compelled me to want to live in the tropics and want to do something different and so when the opportunity opened up he needed a translator um, because the old translator had left and i said i spoke spanish so i was like oh this might be an opportunity maybe i can actually offer something to the group and that'll uh, give me a reason to actually go there all right and so while you were there you were paired with the, uh i remember she had an afro i can't remember her name what was your, your wife at the time was she your, is are you guys still together yeah, Grace, uh, she went by many names. I think Fury at the time, uh, Nature Girl Fury, and then Willow. Okay, and then you guys had um, two kids together, or? No, we have one, what? Zen. He's he's five. Okay, and you guys are still together now? Yeah. Okay, and so when you were there, from my understanding, was Nature, Nature Boy was trying to make her one of his wives as well, correct? No, she was one of his wives, but when he when she got with me, they never went back and forth. Like there was no back and forth. Um, it was just at some point he she was with him, and then when I was with her, there that was it. There was no back and forth. We were on and off in the group, but he he uh, he was never back with her after that. Okay, so him um, being with her or the back and forth stopping did that have anything to do with you leaving? Nah, nah. I mean, the th what, what made me leave was basically uh, I just started to realize uh, I started to vo voice my opinion about things that I wasn't in agreement to. And the more I did that, the more that kind of brought tension between me and Nature Boy. And he felt like he couldn't be himself because I was saying, like, you're going live too much. Like, like we like, you know, like 
you're expecting me to up, like i was a tech guy so i was uploading all the videos and i was just saying like you you're just doing too much basically like what why are we going live all day long and doing all this and um yeah and then he started to like kind of want to accommodate me but then he kind of couldn't you know at some point he was on oh, my camera went out um he he uh you know at some point he was like nah fuck that i'm not going to change for anybody um and i'm going to keep being who i am and so i just kept voicing my opinions and the more i did that i just think it caused tension to the point where i um we were part of the go out crew uh it was flow vibes me and uh grace sometimes would go with us except when she got pregnant um she didn't go sometimes but um yo so we started kind of like plotting outside of the camp because that gave us space for us to kind of share our own thoughts and ideas that we didn't really want to share in the group because it was kind of taboo to talk about anything that was other than the group and the movement and what we were doing and so uh, during those go out times we started to share thoughts and ideas and that started to cultivate like this desire to want to leave and then with mama dia passed that was kind of an awakening for me i started asking myself like do i really want to die here basically do i want to spend the rest of my life here do i want is this really what i want for my life um but the, the, the thing that made it challenging i think i'll say is is that when you try to leave there was a it was a process it wasn't just like it wasn't a physical holding you down but it was this process of interrogation of long very drawn out meetings that were trying to get you to see that this is the right place for you or you might be in the right you're making the wrong decision there's nothing else out there and so you kind of just talk in circles for hours and days even and so that's why people left during the night because they wanted to avoid that process it wasn't because there was like physical force but they just wanted to avoid the process of having to sit down and have these conversations so yeah, Wouldn't that's, you that's classify that as like a form of manipulation that some members are manipulated to stay in a situation where there is high tension? You explained that a part of the reason why you wanted to leave was because you having your own thoughts caused you to um, have like a little back and forth. So wouldn't that be like a form of manipulation? No, for sure. Yeah, it, it definitely was manipulation. Um, I just don't. I don't think that's illegal. Like, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things that Nature Boy did that aren't illegal, but that are like frowned upon or people might say are negative. But, you know, you using words to try to manipulate someone, you know, outside of the court of law and stuff, um, you know, a lot of these things that people are accusing them, like they're true, but they're just like not really no bounds for it in the court of law. I mean, uh, and it's like for me, it's like at what point do you draw the line between being manipulated and then being a sovereign uh, human being because it's like we absolve people the responsibility to think for themselves and then we blame it all on him, which he has part to do. But I think that there is other the other people participated as well out of their own volition. And then they go in retrospect to try to protect their decisions. They want to say that they were manipulated. So it's like a really fine line. Like I could say that, um, I, that he put pressure on me, but now looking back at at, at that experience, uh, I acknowledge that I didn't speak up a lot of times when I should have spoke up. I did do things that maybe I wasn't in agreement to, but I was just socially going along with the group. Like a lot of us go along with a lot of shit, right? Um, but I definitely, there was a limit for me. So it's like when Nature Boy wanted to be with all the women, I said, I don't believe in this. I don't agree with this. If you're going to do this, this is your world. I came into it, but I'm about to dip because I, I don't agree with this. And that was my line. And then when he saw that, he was like, oh, no, I ain't even trying to be with your wife. I was just talking about the other women. But for me, it was more of a matter of principle. Like, right now, you might not want to be with her. But if I did was with a woman that you did want to be with, you would take her and you would think that that was OK. So I wasn't in agreement to that. But I wasn't trying to change the situation because at some level, I did feel like I came into it as an outsider into his world. So who am I to try to change how he's living his life, you know, I'd rather just leave. All right, all right, all right. That's good insight, and I understand your perspective. There are people in the chat who are sounding off. So I want some of you guys to be able to ask. Um, Ketzel. I don't want to mess it up. Ketzel. Ketzel, like pretzel. Okay, Ketzel, Ketzel. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. if you want to ask Ketzel a, um, a question, then put Q before the question and... Um, then you proceed. Are you, you guys went to, where did you go to Hawaii? I think you went to like Hawaii or somewhere. 
Yeah, yeah, we 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 came to Hawaii, Big Island. We still live here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, people in the chat saying Serenity wanted to be queen back when. Um, let's see. They said, "Did you get help mentally when you left?" <laughs> like by a psychiatrist or like somebody like a professional? Is that what they're asking? Yes. No. Oh, okay. Um, somebody asked kind of like a silly question. They said, did you have to rub his feet? <laughs> nah, nah. All right. Um, so another person says, all right, uh, what happened to Mama D? Dear. Yeah, I mean, we told that story many times. I think people don't believe what we share, but, uh, yeah, the truth is that she had, um, health issues for a long time and, one day she just didn't wake up, didn't get out of her tent, and we went to check on her and we observed that she had passed. And so we did what we had to do to take care of the body in a foreign country and, and do the autopsy and all of that. Um, but yeah, that, that's what happened with Mama Dia. Um, she was she was really cool. Like I she made good food and you know, it was just kind of inspiring to see like an older person actually wanting to live life on their terms and, and going outside of the constraints of what they were born into. But yeah, fortunately, she had like long time health complications and, you know, um, she passed. OK, another person says, um, do you still follow the teachings of Nature Boy? Yeah, so a lot of the process after leaving was kind of sorting that out, like what do I still believe in and what don't I believe in? And so um, there's some things that still kind of overlap. I mean, we still sleep in the tent. We like to sleep outside close to the elements. Um, I still wear my sarongs and I, and I like to dress a certain way. Um, you know, there's certain things and, and we, the principle of like kind of knowing yourself, but these are things that predate carbonation. Carbonation just took a lot of concepts from a lot of different things or nature boy, I should say. But, um, so yeah, there's definitely things that I still feel alignment to. And then there's also things that I've let go of since then that I feel like I don't, uh, I'm not in alignment to anymore. Okay. All right. All right. Good question. I mean, good answer. Um, all right. So someone says, where were you and your wife originally before you moved into the cult slash Hawaii? Um, oh, no, that wasn't in Hawaii. We, we went to Costa Rica. Um, before that, I was living in California. She was living in Atlanta, I think. Okay. And do you feel like you guys made a bond from having similar experience in this um, cult? Or do you consider it a cult? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it definitely was like something that was very mind altering. You know, it was something that immersive. It wasn't just like hanging out with a group of people and then you go to your house. It was like you were living with people. You were in like this very intimate situation that really was your world at that time. So if that's what people mean by a cult, then yes. Um, but yeah, so I mean, with with me and Grace, like we obviously have a child together and that experience really was deep and impactful for both of us. And so we were bonded by those things. And I mean, we obviously care for each other and have developed our relationship throughout the years. But it was really, uh, you know, it was really a culmination of that situation. And, and you know, that is a big part of, I think, what, what glues us together, because it was just something that many people don't experience in their lifetime. And you know, it's like we we also share similar values and perspectives on the situation, leaving it. So that has helped us to really transform ourselves and and ask ourselves, like, what kind of life do we want to live? And then be not able to go out there and, and live it. All right. And to be more specific, as far as cult, do you agree that it was a sex cult specifically? Nah, nah, I, I don't think so. Um, as far as when I was there, um I mean, the teachings evolve, things change over time, but uh, I mean, the message was always about getting back to nature, knowing yourself. We have certain dietary practices. Uh, for me, looking at it back at it now and like kind of what I study now is it was kind of like the social dynamics of what it means to be part of a tribe. Like there's tribes in the Amazon and different parts of the world that live very intimately like that. That's how it felt. It felt like a like we were alone in the world and it was just us and we were living very communally and together. And obviously there was things that were, we didn't like, and but there was also great moments that we had. It was just a full spectrum experience that was really intense because of who Nature Boy is. He's just an intense dude. Like he's he's just really intense. You know, that's all I could say. 
And so I think that that's, that's really what makes it def so def definitive or defined is that it wasn't just a mundane experience. Like there was always something going on, whether it was drama or, you know, some shit online or fun that we're having. There was always, there was never a dull moment, basically. All right. All right. All right. And let me know when you're tired of answering. Um, uh, but <laughs> um, uh, someone says, why did you let your wife and child get near death before you left? Um, if you could leave at any time? Well, I, I think with Grace, I mean, she lost a lot of weight. Um, and I don't know if that was part of the diet um, that we had at the time. And it was just like, it, it was kind of, um, looking back at it now, it was, it was kind of, she didn't get the care that she needed, not only from like Nature Boy and what he allowed, but also from the other members and the women, like the nurturing that I think a woman should have during pregnancy. Um, a lot of that thing wasn't accommodated for. So the cravings that she would have and stuff like that, it wasn't really accommodated. So I think that she started to lose weight because she wasn't able to fulfill on a lot of things that she wanted because we had a certain specific way of eating and everything else was kind of frowned upon and taboo. So I was in that mindset too, kind of like that discipline, like this is how we eat. This is how we move. Like we shouldn't go against that because these are our beliefs and we should honor them and live in alignment to them. You know, but now looking retrospectively and knowing what I know now, um, I would, you know, I don't agree that how we were moving was the most optimal in terms of like diet and the things that Grace needed at the time during her pregnancy. So it wasn't like this intentional thing that I felt like they were sick. I just wasn't really able to see. I wasn't really cognizant of what was actually happening to her health at the time. Uh, I was, I was, I was kind of like, I don't know if I was in denial. I just didn't, I didn't see it. Like it was just like, oh yes, yeah, you're skinny, but you. I don't know. Maybe that's just a part of there was the a health policy. element that people were alleging also about her as well. Wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah. People had said that she, um, there was rumors of like AIDS or something. I think the controversy was there. Like, I think just nature boy conflated autoimmune disease uh, with AIDS. So if you, uh, the acronym, if you make it an acronym, autoimmune disease is aid. You, so you could kind of make that. I don't know if he made that jump intentionally or that was just like a slip up from him but he started saying that she had aids but uh whatever and then people ran with that but that that's not the case oh, okay so she did not have aids no oh, okay because i i remember back when young Farrell, like that was like one of his main um points that he was trying to expose nature boy by saying like she had it and nature boy had it and you know everything yeah like that. yeah um, no, that, that wasn't true Okay, someone says, how long were you there? I was there for about two years, um, from like 2017 to 2019. Okay, I'm just scrolling through different uh, questions. You guys got to put Q in front. Oh, uh, 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 let's see if I'm missing any. Is there anything that you want to volunteer while I look through? Oh, did Grace oh. give birth to a healthy child regardless of not receiving proper prenatal. I think her kids were healthy, but you can answer that with your kid. Um, I, I mean, I think he, um, Zen was probably, you know, undernourished in terms of calories and stuff. I think she oh, wasn't okay. eating as well as she wanted to. I mean, he's, he's really healthy now, like he's fine now, but I just think at the time, um, yeah, I think there was definitely room for a better improvement on that. Um, it's just, it, it was a tough situation. I mean, I, I, I think that's a story Grace could tell and share her own personal experience on that in terms of, you know, not having the pregnancy that she, experience that she wanted. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just like a militant situation. So even through pregnancy, she was expected to stand up straight and be at attention and stuff like that, which, you know, as a pregnant person, woman, like you, that, that can be very uncomfortable. Okay. Um, someone says, did Nature Boy make them say bisexuality is natural? I don't, I don't know if I was there at that time. Yeah, when they started uh, kind of moving into that space. Uh, well, were we, um, shit, I feel like I'm on trial now. I was just coming from <laughs> my perspective. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you don't want to answer questions, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. I'm just, you know, people got a lot of questions, so. No, I, you, I know, I didn't want to make like, this about me, because yeah. I just wanted to share, like, um, um, you know, my perspective on the whole situation. Yeah, if you um, feel uncomfortable at any time, then you can stop the, the questions. 
Um, but yeah, I think um, yeah, I think he had mentioned that that bisexuality uh, in nature. He he has, I think he has said like he wished he was bisexual because then he would have um, um, men and women with him. I think he made a statement like that at some point. Oh, okay, you could continue with your perspective that you wanted to add. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with me, you know, and I think I look at life differently. And obviously, I was there, so I have a different perspective i mean i see a lot of people online that you know give their perspective from never being there and i understand they're just interested in the situation and they think that you know nature boy is evil and and he did everything that everybody has ever accused him of but i just don't think it's that black and white i think that in order for people to move forward from that situation one of the greatest things that helped me was to take accountability and ownership for the role that i played in that situation otherwise you'll just find yourself in another similar situation because you're not really fixing or addressing the things within yourself. So I think for me, that's the kind of the point that I wanted to share that, you know, everybody that went there, went there for a reason. They, they had a desire, they had an affinity to whatever it is that he was talking about. And um, even though they kind of just want to cast all the blame on him, there's a lot of accountability that's missing from the conversation on both sides. Even I think even with Nature Boy, like he doesn't want to admit that he had a certain level of power that he allowed to go to his head, that he allowed to take advantage of these people and, and manipulate and use them towards a non-righteous means. You know, I think that's why I said like, is is everybody's guilty? You know, and, and there's no innocent people. Like, oh, I didn't know. Like. People, people knew, and it's just like you're just trying to protect. A lot of people are trying to protect their decisions that they made, uh, rather than just being straight up and being like, "Yeah, I did that. That is me. That is part of who I've been. That it has been my actions." You know, um, so that's kind of my perspective on the whole thing. So you feel like people, instead of taking accountability, it's easier to just blame somebody else for what they, what role they played in it, like so that well, they don't honey, look, so that they don't look bad, I guess, and we could just. Right, right. It's like, um, like he uploaded those videos. Yeah, but you, that's that's how you move. Like you, you made those videos. Like you agreed at some point. Like it's not like just so black and white. Like he filmed things in privacy and like leaked out your innocence into the world. Like you have to un like at some point be real with like who you are and your character and how it manifests in that situation. Because that situation is just like a mirror to show yourself he's going to put all the pressure he can on you to expose you to yourself and you could choose to vilify him for doing that or you could choose that as an opportunity to actually look at yourself and be like damn you're right i do do that i do never uh take accountability for my actions i do try to run away when people have um try to call me out on something things like that of that nature that was a really real phenomenon but i think he just took it too far with um forcing people or 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 just um What's this? What's what he did? Um, he kind of instructing people to hit. Other, like I wasn't there when that happened. I wouldn't have tolerated that. But like the whole physical aggression and violence, like that, that that's not cool. Like if people didn't agree with it, just leave them, make them leave. You know, kick them out. But yeah. So so that's my perspective. Like, uh, where's the accountability on it uh, on the other side? And um, I think on both sides. You know, Nature Boy needs to take accountability for for what he did and everybody that was there also should just take accountability for their role in it. Right. I understand what you're saying right there. Um, did you continue to view the uh, videos, the live videos? Um, no, nah, I mean, I, I did my best to try to like disconnect from that for a while and um, not, not really follow along. You know, I, I mean, I would peer in every now and again to see, you know, what's going on, like when they got locked up and stuff, but I wasn't really tuning into the lives anymore or just giving my energy to, to um, what he was teaching. Oh, okay. So you didn't like watch the progression of like the violence escalate? Nah, nah, but I do recognize that, you know, it did change from when we were there. And I asked myself sometimes, was that a consequence of us leaving? Because a lot of us that left, like Grace, me, Flo, um, and vibes like we we were more vocal um, and we were also older so we were like more mature so we were the ones that vocalized contrary opinions when he wanted to do something sometimes Flo would be like I don't know that's not a good idea or I would be like nah I don't believe in that or Grace would be like no we need to get some sleep the reason that you know like we're having trouble waking up because we had a situation where it was like a kind of an emergency and nobody woke up because everybody was so tired um, so we're, she was like we need to 
get sleep because you know everybody's so tired and he didn't like that but then like a day later he came back he's like you right now we got to get to sleep we got to get our rest so it was things like that where i think that um the more mature of, of us like we kind of kept things in balance and order and it seems like when we left everybody else that was left was just like yes men like people that weren't going to vocalize any contrary opinion no matter what and so i think that my theory is like that's kind of what escalated things oh, okay i understand what you're saying um what was the i just had another question i was going to ask you um so uh, watching the trial watching the testimony what do you think as far as like being able to know like you well you know what it's like to be there f pre all of the escalation of the violence and everything like that. But as an outsider looking in, viewing the testimony from both sides, the cross-examination from the defense, the direct examination from the prosecution, just from today's testimony and the testimony that's to come, like, what do you think the outcome will be? Just, just an educated guess. I don't know. It's tough. Like, really, like, hearing it, it's, it's tough because I don't know what the jury is going to make of all this information um, because, you know, like she, she expresses a lot of emotion in her statements and um, you know, just re her retelling the story. Uh, but then again, there's also like small inconsistencies um, where it's just kind of like, it's kind of vague, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a thin line between what one would call, you know, sexual assault and just like, a tumultuous relationship, you know, where like people go back and forth and then they break up and then they're mad at each other. And then they, you know, like there's some people who really live in that space. And so I could see it also as that being one of these instances where, you know, there's, there's tension between them and they're kind of mixing that in with like this sexual experience and then her leaving and retelling that as something different because of her negative emotions that she asked him that could be a scenario i'm not saying that's what it is but that could be one scenario the other scenario could be like this should actually happen but i just i don't lean to that because he has like he has women right now outside of jail that have been waiting for him for a year multiple women wives who are waiting on him and he didn't he did i don't see like why he had a need to like forcibly force himself on that and that's not really how he moved um, when I was there, you know, like he wanted the women to be with him, but I never saw him um, explicitly force himself onto women. The women chose and wanted to be with him. So it was like more on their own volition. Like they liked that position and a lot of them wanted to compete for to be the queen, you know. And so like that's just how he, how women responded to him. So I just don't see that being as plausible, um, you know, him having to take that course of action. Oh, OK, I understand. But you also got to keep in mind that things did escalate from the nature boy that you saw versus how he would, you know, want to have mind control over them and keep them close, but let them go. But keep them, you know, still um, close. Did he ever try to get you guys to come back? Yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he always wanted everybody back like he I mean, we've talked to him since we talked to him since he's in jail. Like we've had conversations with him just to like settle the dust and 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 um get things off our chest and just you know confront him in a way because um like i mean for me and grace i think what nature boy represents is like is, is like confronting confronting yourself and confronting him and, and just the, the thing that's you have a fear of or it's challenging and it's because he's really he's he's an assertive energy you know so for you to be able to confront him is it, it's, it's a challenge. You really have to stand on what you're talking about. And so, yeah, um, we've talked to him since. And Were you kind of, like, nervous to have that conversation with him even while he was behind bars? No, nah, I mean, I think at some point, like, he lost the, the kind of grip that he had on me. Like, I didn't see him as a threat anymore because I just understood the game that he was playing. And I just saw how he manipulated things, how he would try to – you know, basically put you in, in a position and say things that, you know, he, he understood your weaknesses and he was just playing chess with you. And so it, it, I just didn't take him seriously like that at, at some point. So when I was able to talk to him, I, I told him, I said, like, look, you, you're going to be in jail until you um, until you acknowledge the, the things that you've done. Like, like the reason you're still in there is because you're not owning up to 
the things that you've done. And, you know, until you do that, like you're going to be in the situation, you know, and I still believe that. I think that if he were to like, just, I just don't know if he, he, you know, because of the way his character set up and the way his personality is, you know, he's just always going to think of himself in a certain way. And so uh, that's what I had told him, you know, when we were on the phone and, so we've we've talked to him and confronted him since then and uh, you know he always he's always going to view us like his his uh like we're part of him in a way so you know i think with him to some degree you do got to keep certain distance cuz if you give him any type of energy he's going to think he's going to try to corral you back in you know like that's just how he thinks and so knowing that you either have to treat him with a long stick or just completely um you know leave him alone and and don't give him any energy all right all right all right and how did he receive what you said yeah he definitely wasn't happy about it i mean i think he's still trying to 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 proclaim his innocence but for me it's like I, the way i look at things like spiritually and like karmically it's like you might not be in there for the thing that you're being accused of but you're in there for a reason like you're in there because you've done things that have led to this outcome you know so that's how i look at it and so my thing with telling him that was like become own up to the things that you've done so that you can be liberated from the things that you haven't done um and so that that will bring clarity to the situation but yeah he did, definitely didn't receive it oh okay okay well i don't want to hold you i've been here for all day and i gotta i'm gonna be back tomorrow will you be back on the stream tomorrow uh you're gonna are you gonna stream it on your channel yeah, I'll stream tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm keeping up. I'm I'm curious. I'm interested in seeing how things are going to pan out and play out. Okay. I know there's a lot of people who have a lot of questions, but yeah, I got to get off this stream. <laughs> yeah, I feel <laughs> you. you. I, so I got things to do, for, too. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming on. You riled up the chat. You know, you gave it a little razzle-dazzle. There was people who said they understand, people who did not like your take. But, you know, that's life. It is what it is um yeah thank you so much for coming up i appreciate hearing your um perspective because it is interesting to hear the perspective of someone who lived it understands nature boy met him personally went through it went through the process of leaving and all of those things like that so i'm interested to hear from grace as well if she is available at a later date I definitely would love to hear. Uh, then, then they're really gonna be blowing up the chat if she comes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we gotta make it happen, Kevin. No, <laughs> but yeah, so thank you for coming on. Um, hopefully that uh, maybe you guys come on together at a later time, um, when we're streaming again. And so good talking to you. Thank all you. right, yeah, thank you. All right, all right, guys, that's all for this stream, y'all. I am. I can't do no more of the stream. I know there's people backstage who wanted to give a recap. Tomorrow, I'll probably start a little bit before the, um, it depends. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe start a little bit before the trial starts because she says she wants them there at 930. Maybe close to like 930, I'll like start. And then anybody who wanted to speak about the end of testimony that did not get to speak then um, well, we could do that at that time. But thank you guys all for coming through. If you guys like the coverage, y'all know how to support above. And I'll see.